Hi guys, and welcome to my long-awaited video of how to make something in Blender. <laughs> okay, um, for some of you, you're, uh, well, the reason why it took me so long to make this video was because I didn't know exactly what I wanted in the video, number one, so the video is more about helping you than helping myself, obviously, so, um, because I want to help people learn how to use Blender in the first place rather than showing off my skills and trying to make an art work of art in Blender. So this is just basically going to be an overview and hopefully I'll get to a point to where I have something that I like and that you like and we're both satisfied with. So um, first of all, this is Blender. When you first start it up, um, you'll get this cube here. So um, if you're into box modeling, you can do that. There's also modeling where you're basically making, you're starting out with like a, a vertex and what vertexes are are these uh, these little points on the, this box here, those each are a vertex so each point is, that's what's referred to as a vertex point and um, you just say vertex, you don't have to say vertex point really vertex is a point <laughs> and then edges are these these guys right here and these are your mode changes down here so you can select faces this way and you're using your right mouse button I'm putting the what I'm you know clicking on the screen there hopefully for you guys to see so you can see what I'm doing and um, yeah so let's go into let's get started alright now you're probably wondering what the heck do I do with this cube on my screen right <laughs> alright so uh, we're gonna do a thing called box modeling which I think is the easiest way to model um, for people out there just starting out, so yeah, let's get started. Um, let's. I, I don't like this grid floor, so I'm gonna remove that. Um, there's lots of other ways to model um, besides box modeling. So um, you know, people like to have control over their um, modeling. Uh, so they do a thing called uh, edge modeling, I think, or vert modeling and that gives more control over the edges versus the actual whole form all at once and that allows um, it allows you to know where your um, where your stuff is going to end up ahead of time um, but I like this because it's more visual and I'm more visual I guess a person so you can always retopologize at a later date too. Don't forget that Blender is wonderful at retopologizing, um, but mainly it's it's good to to knock out your 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 basic form, you know, however you see fit. You know, some people just go right into sculpting. You know, I don't do that though. But I guess the ultimate in modeling would be edge modeling, um, because you you know. <laughs> where your stuff is going to go, you know, and trust me, it impacts your your character, you know, if if you want something to learn, look a certain way, you have to have the edge flow going a certain way, um, not completely maybe, but um, most of the time I, I would think so, um, and there's things you want to avoid, um, so anyways, let's, let's get to work here, so we're going to hit our N key, and this is a little tool menu you you would normally use uh, in Blender and uh, let's see here we're going to add a background image so just check that box click that arrow click add image then you'll see this thing come up just click on open and let's go ahead and find that image I went ahead and drew an image you don't have to you're going to hit numpad 3 and numpad 5 it's going to come right up for you love these quick tutorials don't we <laughs> change the size just clicking in that box and typing in a good number and hit Z to make this uh, invisible this little box here and then just uh, we're gonna scale it on the Y axis so SY we're gonna move this I'm half tempted to leave that in the center and move my image around just fit that so we can do that too actually we can do anything in blender <laughs> anything blender can do <laughs> okay so yeah let's let's do that instead it's a little more time consuming I guess than just moving the box but it's nice because you get more of a 
um, you're, you're centered, basically. You know you're on the exact center of the 3D world. You know, your box is right there in the center. Don't have to do this, but I guess it's something I'm going to do here today. Alright, so hit your tab key, that brings you back into edit mode. Oh, I didn't tell you about the modes. You got all these different modes. Don't worry about them yet, but we're just going to work on edit mode and object mode. Maybe sculpt mode in a little bit. Um, okay, so now you got a cube, basically. Well, sort of like a more, less, less like a cube, more elongated cube, whatever you call that. Um, we're just going to select the bottom face by going to face select mode and right clicking on that face there. Um, hit E to extrude that and then select this face and uh, extrude that to right about there. Then we're just going to select the faces and use the R key to rotate them. Really easy like it's not that hard to do stuff in Blender, trust me. Some people complain, they go, oh I can't do Blender. <laughs> trust me, nothing is easier than Blender because Blender started out on the Amiga computer and that was really basic <laughs> back then, you know. So, yeah, Blender is, is pretty user-friendly um, when it comes to ease of use. Alright, so we're just going to get the basic shape here. I don't know how this is going to turn out, guys, but I'm crossing my fingers, so... Alright, okay, I'm going to do it like that, actually. Okay, there we go. Alright, that's a good form to start out with. Now, you go to one. Uh, you can resize. Actually, let's let's move it so it's not going to be in the complete center. But that's okay. Okay, I'm going to move it there. All right. And now I'm going to always make sure you save stuff. I've saved way too many times, as you can see here. But that's not a bad practice to save too many times. Okay, so I'm just going to save it. Alrighty, now that we got that saved, um, we're going to add a mirror mo what's called a mirror modifier to this. So whatever we do on one side of the image uh, will happen to the other side of the um, the 3D model, I mean, not the image. Um, so we're going to go to front view, which is just numpad 1, control R to add that loop cut to the center, and I like to go in vertex mode and just hit A and B for box select and delete those vertices with the delete key. And uh, go to this tool, this little toolbar up here, and select this little wrench. And uh, you can use your scroll mouse to scroll wheel to uh, navigate that back and forth. And just click Add Modifier, click Mirror, and it should come right up. Okay, now I'm half tempted to move these little dealies to the end of the boundaries here. So yeah, why don't we do that? Keep it simple, stupid is my motto. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to move these right where I want them. No question. Just going to do it. And this will help me get the form better later on. Let's see, is that the... that's up there, isn't it? This is more down here. And this needs another loop cut, so I'm going to add a loop cut right here. And then I'm going to grab this loop cut. Whoops. H is hide, by the way. We don't need to learn that right now. <laughs> um, okay, and then I'm going to move this to here. So basically now all we're doing is getting the basic form, the basic shape, um, pinned down here so we know uh, better how it'll look. So... Yeah, because the hardest thing is getting the basic shape, number one. Okay, so we're good there, but I think we need to be better here. So I'm going to move this here. 
Okay, I am going to save this again. Alrighty, so now we're going to see this in 3D. So all we're going to do is uh, go back to this mode here. We're going to hit turn on smooth shading. Um, turn on clipping for the... Yeah, you want to make sure your clipping is on for your mirror modifier because that prevents the vertices from going haywire and running away from the center. So uh, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier and BAM! We have a dolphin head, sort of. <laughs> so yeah, this is pretty easy to do here. We can turn on the um, subdivisions, turn them up, and we can see it's now smoother model. Um, so yeah, now we can actually begin sort of modeling this thing, pushing and pulling the verts, as we like to call them. Vertices, verts, same deal. Alright. Okay. Alright, great, beautiful. I'm going to save this thing. I love it. Love it, love it. Alright, so now we're still pushing and pulling vertices. As you can see, when we go in the front view, it's still kind of, it's not round. So we want that thing to stay round. So we want to make sure we get it uh, that shape. So you might have to do a little pushing and pulling here and there. And some verts don't even show up. You can see this vert I selected, it doesn't even show up. Well, if you click this thing, this little box here, this is a uh, limit selection to visible box. This, when you click it on and off, you can see the verts behind or the verts that are hiding inside your model. So, um, so if you have that on, you can actually see what you're clicking. Um, versus if you have it off and you just sort of randomly click somewhere and there's a vert there and you don't know what vert you've selected. So this is a handy thing to have turned on sometimes, especially when things are hidden under other things. So we're just going to move that out. Uh, we're going to move this back. We're going to... Oh yeah, and G is a uh, grab key to use. Okay, to grab things with. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Actually, the top. If we go to the top, it's not round. So we're going to fix that. Actually, let's see here. We're going to move this back here like that. Okay. Maybe we need more verts or whatever. Actually, that's the vert we want to move. See that? See, now when we move this vert, ta-da! <laughs> everything's perfect. Okay, see that? You want to know what verts you're supposed to be moving so you can make everything look smooth. All right, so that's a perfect, perfect, beautiful start to our dolphin. Okay, so we're going to save this thing. Three. Okay, so now that we got the basic um, shape looking good, um, we're going to add a mouth to this subdivide so the way to get even subdivisions instead of using knife tool you can just select your your edges like I did by holding down the shift key and then hit subdivide and that gives you a smooth kind of a flow there I'm gonna shift this to the front here okay so now we've got a little problem up here but that's okay because we can uh, we can definitely fix that. There we go. And it's nice to select all three at the same time. Sometimes, other times not. There we go. That's looking nice and round up there still. Maybe a little bit too round in some places.
Okay, so we've got to try here. We got to get rid of. So. Actually, I'm going to move this to more of like the center. Move that back. Move that in. There we go. And it's nice when you're keeping it simple like this. Because, uh, you know, it's easy to, to change stuff. Okay, right, so I want to add an edge loop here, I already know. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm just going to move these around just a teensy bit. some more definition up there, so that's good. And one more up here. Kind of just got to round it out at the top there. Oops, wrong word. There we go. Looking better. Definitely looking better. And now the back needs some work. Sometimes you can just sort of select these faces and move them too. Oops. That way it's more proportional when you're moving it. Okay, that's nice. And that's still looking okay, I think. It's nice to get in the habit of always checking your um, shapes. You know, when you're making them, you're always adjusting them. Yeah, if you've got this gray area, then you've got to pull something somewhere because it's not correct. Something's not right if you've got that going on. Okay, right, so the reason I have this thing up here is, is so that um, I can make like an eyebrow. Um, so it kind of isolates that area right there, one, two, three, four, 
and it doesn't bend beyond this this uh, sort of quad here so yeah that's nice to have because if I didn't have that it would it wouldn't make that isolated so that's the reason I want to have that okay So I'm going to subdivide this, and I'm going to connect those right to there. All right, and now I can go ahead and readjust where my mouth is. Save this. All right. Save this for. All right. So now let's see. We're gonna get rid of this menu here. And K. Use K again. And I'm just gonna have this for go to the back. Like so. There we go. Okay, and to sort of make this jawline thing here. Might end up using a try down here. See what happens if we go into wireframe mode. And if we cut this out like that, hmm, I guess it's not too bad. But you know what? I don't want to try down there because I want it sort of defined further. Um, so I think I'm going to go with this. And then as it comes to here, I'll just go straight up probably the best decision. Oops. Try that again. I'm just going to sort of follow this line, John line here. And then I'm just going to go... Oops. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> okay. Follow this jaw line here. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the middle of the verts. So it smooths out up there.
going to make this the underside of the eyes here. Actually, we should just do that. And then we can go ahead and um, move the verts we want down. There we go. And shift them backward. And use a grab tool, move it in. Nice, 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 nice. Actually, no, let's do that with that. Do, do, do. Now you can even rotate faces on the uh, X, Y, and Z axis. So I want to rotate on the X axis, it looks like. So I'm just going to grab these and rotate on the X, or actually the Y, no, the Z axis. No, the X axis, that's right. Hmm. Maybe there's some that you don't want to rotate. Okay, that's good. that's what you want to do. You want to rotate these guys. And then this needs to be resized and perhaps moved up a little bit. There we go. That's looking better. Alright. And then I'll move this out. Okay, and we're looking too much here, so select some verts and move them in. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's looking pretty good actually right there. So yeah, I'm gonna save this. Wireframes looking good too. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. It's a pretty decent uh, topology there. Okay, I'm going to save this. Okay, so what we want to do now, we got a nice looking shape so far. Um, and everything's looking good. Um, we want to make this, um, these, uh, this jawline here more pronounced, because right now you can't really see it. And, uh, while I'm here, I might as well, we can kind of make things a little bit more, uh, symmetrical here, in the front view. There we go. That's good. All right. Okay. So, um, right. So, what we basically need to do is we need to make this jawline. So, all we do is we left we add loop cut. Um, left click and right click and then that gives us an even looking thing so now we gotta actually move what got messed up here 
back in the lines. There we go. It's looking better. And I'm going to fix that in the front of the face later. Maybe I'll do that right now. deeper you go with that, the more pronounced you're going to make that groove. Actually, it goes this way. So to make that little dip in the melon, it's um, easy to do this. can fix that up later or we could just do that for now and that's pretty much in the flow of those lines oops don't really want to touch that one I could touch that one this one I guess I could touch all right okay good so now that we got our jawline all we have to do is apart from me getting distracted, <laughs> um, move that up there. As you can see, it creates a jawline. If you go too far, depends on how much you want. So for me, I'm probably just going to go there, and that'll be good enough. Because if I go a little bit further, it's too pronounced. Now you can go inward, which is actually what I was going to do. Just go in like that. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. this to be a little bit more curvy so I'm just gonna add like a curve to it there we go so it looks a little bit more organic that way See, that looks kind of cool. Okay, so you can move the bottom one in for more of an effect. See, versus that. So whatever looks round to you, that looks more round to me. Um, yeah. Excellent, excellent, very good. Okay, so now we can move this guy back here, and this up here. And this is the top of the, where the mouth is, so we'll move this up here. And move it out a little. Oh, that's a little too far. Maybe we'll move this guy down. Or actually, you know what? I think it would be nice to rotate this. Oops. That is perspective mode. That's camera mode. <laughs> All these modes. 
Okay, I don't know what I did there, but I don't know if that's... Might not be too good. Let's leave it like that. And, uh, do, do work on this. Rotate this some more. We can always rotate these as much as we want. We can turn this off so we can only see the front facing verts. So that way we don't get confused. Now that depends on how much of that we want. Then we can size that down. I'd say overall this is looking pretty nice. Um, I might size it out and push it in. Then again, maybe not. Let's see, I like that one. So basically I just sized it out to get that effect. And I think we have a one, two, three, four, five, uh oh. Uh, to fix that, all you really have to do is subdivide down. And connect those. And you've now solved your problem. That's beautiful. That's, that's good enough topology. Um, Everything's looking good so far. Okay, great. And I got the thing where I wanted it, so jawline. Looking nice. I think I'm happy. Okay, now you might want to move your lines here. So we'll move this back in here, move this up here, and I think, I'm thinking I want to move this inwards, like that, and then just move it down. kind of hard because I want to keep that effect where the um, where it's round you know it's nice and round and it's not nice and round up here so I might have to push and pull some more verts to keep it round here's another trick you can grab verts and just rotate like that but I don't know how nice that's going to turn out you can just grab a section and rotate them or if that doesn't work, um, just grab them and move them. Okay, so we're still within the boundaries here. That's good. For our little drawing. And this eye is the problem, I think. So because this actually should end up right here. Let me turn these on. There we go. So to get this shape I'm wanting, that has to be done. And that's looking better. Looks like this Yeah, that's, that's got to be it. 
Okay, so there we go. Now we get some more uh, volume on that jawline on the on the beak there. Come on, camera mode. Okay. I really don't want this going out all the way out here. Okay, that's looking better. Okay, so now we're going to add more definition to this thing. Um, we're going to add a jawline, uh, so you can actually see the jawline. Right now you can't really see it. So basically all you have to do is add a loop cut here. Um, left click and right click after you hit control R and then uh, shift select the areas that's closest to the you know the uh, the areas following the uh, edges that are following that um, uh, what do you call it uh, jawline there and then just move it closer and what do you know before you know it you have a jawline you can kind of move this one in and uh, there you go. And now let's make sure that's sort of rounded out. That looks good. Actually, it looks really good. Just the way that is. And this is kind of crazy here. I don't know why we had this out. What is that? Oh, that's for the actual jaw. So I think we want that. I think we want to make that more prominent make that more prominent because that's the actual jaw right so it kind of helps when you work on things and you're working on what you what you know you're working on you know um, instead of just working on random stuff I think I like that over my other model in fact I know I do because yeah, you want your jawline to be out there. Otherwise, you look like a kid that's hasn't been fed <laughs> any food. Okay, so do to do. Okay, so now we have an end gone here. What we call this is an end gone. We have one, two, three, four, five. Um, verts or five sides and uh, what we want to do to fix that is simply select two of these and subdivide them and then just uh, join those two together like that and actually um, I think that's the top of that isn't that one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, that actually has to come down here. And these have to be moved. Sorry guys, just refining this just a teensy bit. Alright. Okay, and these this one actually has to be rotated that away. So on the X axis like that. I'd like to say perfect, but I don't say that too often, because you never know. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to move this whole thing to make room for another loop cut. Okay, so I'm just going to move this whole thing over here. Actually, I want something to stay well, the blowhole is good. Well, we don't have to worry about the blowhole for now. Um, it's kind of tricky, actually. Not too tricky. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to do this. And this has to be moved over here. So it gives it more of the effect that we're looking for. And uh, yeah, because um, 
That'll stick out like that. So I have to come out a little bit further. And that can come out with all that. There we go. Okay, good. And we're going to leave that alone. Uh, this one, I don't know what that is. You know, don't touch stuff if you don't know what it's, you know, where it goes. Because that will only lead to further problems here. You know. So that's a good piece of advice there. Just don't touch something if you're not sure. Don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> Do not touch. Don't touch. Okay, like I'm not sure where that goes. Okay, now I'm sure where it goes. And, uh, yeah. Let's see here. This kind of tapers off down here. So I think that's a, a good way to go. Yeah, that's the way I want to go with that. That's right. That is right. Yes. Looking to get around. Look. And it's doing better, but could be doing a lot better. That's doing better. And that was an exception there. <laughs> you know, you, you can touch stuff if you don't know it. If you can see, sometimes you can get away with it. But right now I'm just sort of playing with the shape, so I don't care about where things go for now. Let's see, is that how I want it to look? And you can take this background image off. I think my time's running up here. <laughs> okay, so I'm not trying. I'm trying not to time myself, t but um, it's hard not to, because you want to make it so you can upload the video, and you don't want to bore people. All right, that's looking good. That's looking good. Uh, I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to stick with that. And then I'm just going to move these in more. And I'm going to move this in more. And this in more. That's where I got um, messed up there. Okay, now I want to do this image thing. Okay, that's looking good. Looking nice. Let's rotate this on the X axis. What happened if we rotated that on the x-axis? Versus, uh, where was it? That. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I like this one. Okay. Move this out some more. And subsequently probably have to move that out some more. Um, don't want to get that out too far. I like that. And you gotta kinda un uh, go with what you like. You know, when it comes down to it. When it really comes down to it, go with something you like. Now this I can get away with kinda cheating here. And uh, I 
think I can do it that way. Or maybe not. Maybe not so much. Yeah, no. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it right there. But this I can come in further with right there. But that doesn't look so round now. Why is that not looking round? I'm guessing if I do this... Yes! I think I like that. But at the same time, you know, I don't like that. Uh, am I gonna like that, though? Well, that's kind of nice because it goes around back there. You know, sometimes you just have to sort of push and pull a lot. But not too much because you don't want to mess up your object. You know, your shape is going to get all messed up if you get everything all kinked out of proportion here. And that's probably as much as I want to do that. Um course on my other screen I didn't have it that extreme. <laughs> Actually I had this one right here and this one right here. And then that one just kinda went up there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be good with that. And you might want to add another uh, loop cut so you can further play with stuff. So that's with and that's without the loop cut. With and without. I like without because I like to keep it simple stupid. But at the same time, I like more control. I think I'm going to do go with the loop cut. Um, just because I want that extra control in that specific area. So yeah, if you need more control, you definitely want to use take advantage of your loop cuts there. Now this is kind of racking my brain right here. Okay, make sure you know what you're selecting here. I'm just trying to follow these lines. Okay, that's going to be the top one. Actually, those lines didn't work out in my other model, so I'm not going to follow those too much. The top one being out here somewhere. So those are uh, those are accurate, actually. Oops. Now that I'm not sure of. I think that was a mistake. And that extra loop cut was a mistake, too. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to equalize that. There we go. And make that a little bit more like round like that. And I think I want to pull this out in the middle there. Right, so how does that look from the top? I'm pretty sure we have a winner here. The only thing I would um, scrutinize on would be the uh, this part needs to actually we'll move this in and what we're going to do is add another loop cut here and uh, that will further proportionalize Okay. 
Okay, right. So I'm going to save this model. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to mess with this a little bit more. Never hurts to go in and just move stuff around because you can end up doing some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I'm trying to remember how I did this. Okay, well. Let's see here. There is a way you can make a nice curve under the beak like. I think this is the way here. You put one in and one out. And it doesn't mess with you too much because um, when you're done you're going to have that anyways. So it's not going to mess with your topology. So that's always good. This is nice. I like that. How that kind of comes in, that's cute. That's good. Sorry guys, my mouse wheel is really messed up here. Actually, that's cool. But I think that's a little bit too pronounced there. the way it was before. Now it's pretty much just what you like, you know, how you want it to look. Because I think we pretty much got everything covered. Alrighty. Give that kind of a curved look more. And now Yes, we're going to save. <laughs> okay, so one thing I see that's wrong here, and we might need to fix this, is when you pan out, when you go into object mode, you can see a little bit of a dimple here. So there's like a little wrinkle there. So we want to get rid of that. So the easiest way to do that is just to separate these um, in equal spaces. So just to equal, just to shift them over so everything's equal, that is the easiest way to go about that. And that might be nice to do that too. That gives that more of a curved look there. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so we're just going to make these equal, make this equal, make this equal. Uh, make this equal. It's kind of hard keeping things together sometimes. You want to make it have a nice smooth flow. So everything flows together. Alright, so now you can see we got rid of that. We still have a little bit of it, but that's just because we haven't moved that inside yet. Okay, now we should be much, much, much better. <coughs> and for the heck of it, I'm just going to move this in. Actually not. No, that looked better. Alright. Okay, so, I mean, you can sit here and critique things for years, <laughs> but I think I'm going to save this right over my other file, because I'm pretty confident in what I did here is a good thing, except this. <laughs> okay, resave. 
Like I say, you can be here for a long time critiquing stuff. So... Yeah, that looks decent. Okay, so all we have to do now is make the eyes. So let's go ahead and select the face uh, that the eye is located on. And then we're just gonna hit the I key to inset that face and um, then we're going to rotate that oh I'm sorry before we rotate that we're going to put this in a little bit like so alright that's looking good alright so now let's select all these oops, select all these faces here and then we're going to rotate it on the z-axis forward just a teensy bit and then we're going to take this one and rotate that backward there we go I think that's looking good yep right on okay so now we're going to move this guy back just like that. And there you have it. Before and after. <coughs> and it's looking great. <coughs> so, um, excuse me. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, now that we've got that saved, I'm going to go ahead and change a little bit of stuff here. Okay. All right. Okay. So we want to make sure the shape looks like the shape we want it to look like. And I've actually got two blunders open here, so one's kind of helping me with the other. So I think this is where I want this. So go up here, kind of like that. There we go. I want to move this up, move this down, there we go, move this up, this whole thing actually has to get changed, so it's looking more like it goes back on the lower portion of the beak, and it goes forward on the front portion, so good to get it right like that perfect that gives you the that effect see and that is what we're after <laughs> hooray okay so now kind of want it to go this is kind of hard right here I'm gonna leave it there Hmm, this is a good question right here, what to do. Of course, if we did this, then we could, whoops, we could move this down and we'd be fine. But I'm, I want to keep it simple, so... I'm going to have to put it like that for now, and that'll be fine. Yeah, that'll be just fine. Perfect. 
Okay, so I'm going to save this yet again. And after making further modifications to this thing, <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, saving it as eight. Okay, so now I noticed something we could do a little bit better here. Um, let's move this. I want to make like a little thing in uh, where the beak, uh, the melon comes down to the top of the rostrum. So uh, instead of doing that, I found a better way and actually a more proper way of doing this. Um, let's go ahead and move this here. And then let's add a loop cut here. And then let's right click so that centers that. And now what we want to do is just edge slide, uh, just move that up closer. So we're going to shift E, or actually not shift, uh, control E, and then hit edge slide. And now because you can't, uh, and just move it up here, because you can't just move, I don't think the function exists in Blender yet to move just one vert, um, to, to edge slide a vert, a single vert, you've got to do it this way. So you can see how this is kind of nice, but it's not really staying, uh, con uh, whatever you call that, where it's all even, you know, nice and even. So um, now we get to select this one, shift or er, control E, edge slide, and we do this, and then we just select this one. This is my sort of way around this, and I select these two, control E, edge slide, and then I can move these back to the center and whichever, however close, whatever looks good to you, to the center. Now if you hit the Z key, you can see it's all nice and flowing with your um, your morph here, your morphology, your mesh, whatever you want to call it, your object. Um, so everything's nice and even as it comes inward. So that is what I was looking for, and that actually solved my problem right there. So it's a nice, smooth, inward sort of a flow um, where everything sort of meets at that point, but you don't really see it. Um, of course, you've got a star there, but I'm not going to be animating that too much, I don't think at all, so I'm not going to worry, be worried about that star. Uh, I guess we call these things stars in animation. Um, my friend was in animation, he said, yeah, that's a star right there. So. Basically what that is, is just where you can see all these points converge into this sort of a mess. <laughs> but don't worry about that, because um, like I was saying, or if I haven't said it yet, you can always retopologize if you really wanted to. But since it's for Second Life, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, um, yeah, I've got pretty good topology anyways, I'm thinking. And yeah, so let's go ahead and save this now. So now you know how to do that to make a good um, uh, dimple there, if you want to call it that. Nine. Alrighty, now I'm just going to move a couple more things around here because we got some weird stuff going on here. So this needs to be moved up, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and move that up to right about there and all this mess. We're going to use circle select to select all that. Whenever you got a lot of stuff you're selecting, use circle select. It'll save you time. And let's see here. I like... Ooh, might have to move that out a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to move this like this. Move that like that. Okay.
Okie dokie, do to do. All right, now what? Now the question is, do we like that curve looking thing? Of course, we can always change it later. Well, I guess we can always change it later. More importantly is the mouth. So now I'm going to fix the mouth up. So yeah, we fixed this area up here, this little curve. Um, and I think we fixed the, uh, the face up too, which I really like. Um, it's a little bit, looks like it dips in there, but I don't think there's a way. See, there really isn't a good way to fix that. So it's best to just leave things alone if you can't really fix them that well. Because you're, you're always going to have that little effect going on with the lighting. But that's okay. As long as there's no, like, dips. You know, you could even get more advanced and look in here. and Where, where these um, little gray lines are, these gray areas, it's not um, level. So... Um, and that's the way some of this is supposed to be anyway. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this once again. Whoops. Okay, so now I'm going to try to attempt to fix the mouth here the way I like it. So let's go ahead and start on that. Oh, I see something immediately here I'm going to fix. This little vert here, I'm going to move right up there. Uh, let's see here where it has to go under. Wait, okay. And so I'm going to move this one like right there. Move this one up here. Uh, this one. Uh, let's see here, this one I'm going to move over here, up here. I know this doesn't make too much sense right now, but um, just bear with me. Basically, all you're doing now is adjusting the, the shape. And you can, you know, as you're adjusting, you can pan around and look and see, hmm, do I like that? So that's basically what I did until I found a shape. I'm pretty sure I like this shape. But I'm going to pan around after I'm done with this anyway, because I'm not entirely sure if I like this yet. So yeah, when you're done working on stuff, you always want to double check if you like it or not. I'm not sure about this one. Sort of comes in there. I guess that's alright. Okay, and then there's this one. This is kind of difficult. Okay, and this came in here, and that one, so we have the same amount of verts, it's just kind of difficult. Oh, wait a second, is that one going to the edge of that? Okay, so, let me make sure of something here. Okay, so we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, come on. So this is going nowhere. Ooh, I guess I gotta select those two. I guess I gotta rotate this thing, sucker. Hey. All right, whatever. I'll just move it over. Okay, now this is supposed to go... Oh, because of the rotation on that one, huh? <laughs> okay, and this one I'm just going to put way out here because this is where it is on the other one. It's like way the heck out here. 
And then this one is in here. This is an experiment, so <laughs> hopefully this works. Uh, I'll just move that back there. Actually, better yet, I'm just going to move this one up here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, move that towards that. Zoom in so I can get a better idea. Well, wow, it's kind of pinching that one, huh? It's kind of bad when you're pinching stuff. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. And you see this one is way the heck over here, so... This whole thing has to follow. Follow, follow, follow. Or else we're screwed. Huh. Not sure if I like that. So you just gotta kind of fix stuff as you see it. Needs fixing. Especially when you're getting a new topology going. Okay, where is that one anyway? Okay, those go back. Okay, well this is supposed to go back. Okay, so we'll just have to push this guy in. There we go, make it nice and smooth. Now, let's say I like this here. <laughs> Alright, that's kind of crazy. Not too sure if I like that. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of crazy there. So now we're going to go back to the top and try to resolve some of this stuff here. Okay, so this one had come out here. This one came out here. Sort of. Can't really do much with the other one. Okay, and then this one uh, I'm going to bring out here. Using the arrows, that way it's better. Okay, now you see how I can do that actually. I can bring the whole thing together so it doesn't really pinch so much. It just sort of fades into itself there. So that's kind of cool. I'm not sure if I like it though. wonder if I like that more. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure if I like this whole thing. Because <laughs> if you look at the other end this side right here. Oops. Oh, come on. I want to grab it in the X or the Z position. Mm -hmm. Interesting. that on that Z position. Okay, so these are actually down like here. And then that's where that goes up and that actually goes in. And then uh, it goes like this from there. So that's okay. So we could actually keep that one. But the way this is looking in here Hmm. 
<laughs> I've got to kind of select both of these and move them. And it would have to be moved like that. Uh, I don't know if I like that though. Well, that one kind of moved out to there to in to out across the thing. Ooh, I see what happened. It's going to be hard to uh, figure out. Unless we did something like we came up. Only way I could see we could do that is by coming up. I mean, I think we had it right there. Yes. Yeah, something like that might work. That's about like the sh geometry I had before. Where it kind of came up and it went in, I think. Still don't know if I like that. Those two, um, eh. Too much of a curve there, man. Not that. The other part. Do, 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 no. Yeah, that part. Yep, 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 that part. Okay, so we're going to edge slide these. Nice, 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 nice. So let me see if I like that. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to keep going here. Okay, people. Okay, so there's just a couple spots I see here that are kind of making it not so roundish. So if I move this out, it's going to look more rounder. If I move this in, it's going to look better. More like in the flow of the way it's supposed to go. And then one thing that bothers me is this uh, yeah, that was better. Top of this um, melon is not completely, like, looking round. Um, it's really bothering me, actually. So, I'm going to fiddle with that some more. Do-do-do. Okay, let's save it. Okay guys, so the very first thing that catches my eye is this area, right in where I have my pointer, right in here. I'm going to zoom in on it, right here. That's the very first thing that I see that's out of shape. Now I'm not going to worry about the back of the head because there's a jawline there and it's not too obvious. We can actually correct that um, later, but right now I'm just concerned about right there. So I can see immediately that that's the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and circle select these areas specifically because I know it's going to help out and just move these in and actually look at the other I'm going to look at this side, the left side as I move the right side and see if that's something I want. Okay. That brings the eyes out further and it looks better in my opinion. A um, lot more roundish there, and I think these cheeks are too, you know, it can have some, 
They're just not too much, in my opinion. No. Yeah, I guess that's okay. There we go. That's good. Okay. okay I'm going to save this. Okay, so I figured out how to fix my other problem. Um, all you really have to do is take this vert right here, right there, and move it out. So let's watch as we do that. Let's look at the left side. Ta-da! And we can move this one as well. That's uh, the other side there. And we'll move that one to complement the other one there. And what do you know? You've got something that actually works. Well, all right. Awesome. <laughs> so you can see, you can plainly see there's a jawline back there, but on the top, it does not affect the roundness of that head. And I'm looking very, very close to what I had before now. So I'm very, very happy. Um, it's not as smooth as I want at the back, though, so we'll fix that and save this thing. Alrighty, let's go ahead and fix the back area. So I'm just going to hit C for circle select. Select those verts right there. Zoom in, and voila, what do you know? It is getting more, you know, less like that and more like that. <laughs> so now, oh, what did I do? I'm going to go crazy here. Let's, uh... That looks good. Okay, now don't rotate anything. Just go ahead and use your... Hmm, maybe not so much. Well, I know that if you make it round, it's going to look better. So, I'm at the back view now. All I'm doing is making it look more round. on the back view. Okay. Now back to the top view. We can move these guys in. Make this more round as it comes down. Because we moved that one before. So we're going to go to the next one. You know, all we're doing are moving these things in. Next one. Actually, that's going to follow that other one. We should have moved those together. Yeah, why don't we do that? We'll take these together. Actually, we'll take all three of these together. And we'll move them in. The funny thing is, that's where the roundness... Because that's the middle. My gosh. My gosh. So what we're going to do is... We're just going to undo that. We're going to take the middle one of the three and just move him out a little. Um, and then we're going to move this back. There we go. We might move this out so it's not so evident. And yeah, this can be a pain sometimes. Blendering. Uh, blender, blender, blender. Blender, your love hate relationship. <coughs> okay, I think this is somewhat decent. And I think. Do I like it? What is there not to like? I mean, the top 
it's a little bit crazy right here. Other than that, uh, you cannot win, you know. You know, you cannot win sometimes. I mean, if I did this, it would really screw with it, wouldn't it? Sometimes you just gotta play around in Blender. Now that's kind of what I had before. That's exactly what I don't want. Excuse me. So... Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm gonna end up moving this in here and just saying that's good. Call it a day. See what wireframe tells us. Uh, wireframe seems to think it's okay. I think. All right. Oopsies. What did I do? Go back. Okay. You know, it kind of would help if I had another. See, on my other model, it was simpler. But I had these guys in here differently. <laughs> it was actually more messed up, to be honest. My other model was not a pretty sight, uh, as far as um, topology. Topology was horrible. So, I was going crazy trying to find a better topology, and then finally I think I found a good one. So, yeah. I'm going to leave this, gosh, it's like I want to pull these things out. What do you pull them out? Oh my god, if I pull them out, I can fix stuff. Yes. Yes, I can actually influence if I pull it out a little more. Not like major, but hey better some influence than nothing, you know? That makes it look round. That was what I was wanting. And actually, that's got to be what's going to save me right there. Yes! I don't know what I did just there, but that's awesome. question is, will that look awesome overall? Mm. No, not, it won't look smooth, because it's going to look like it's got a dent in the head right there. Actually, that's what my other model had. It had like a dent right there, I believe. Let me look at my other model. Did it kind of have a dent? No, it had a, a thing that went around. So, that dent was not there. Hmm, I think I'm going to have to settle with this, folks. Because um, I don't see any other solutions here. Yeah, it's not such a bad, crazy problem, you know. Uh, it's just not the same topology that I was having before. Hey! Yes. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> of course, if we move it closer and go in, it can potentially solve the problem. Yeah, and that won't make no crazy dent thing. It just, it sort of makes a dent there, but not really noticeable. Like, you can see it, but it's, you can't no big deal. Okay, I am like 100% satisfied. I have to be. Am I satisfied? Yes, yes, I'm satisfied. Okay, alright, moving on. <laughs> okay, so um, I found another way to make this a little bit more rounder, and that would be to circle select 
seeing her. Circle, select. Actually, I used the box select tool. I think I just box selected these. Nope, that wasn't it. Oh, I know what I did. I box selected the whole nine yards here. And just moved. No, I didn't do that. Where did I go? Must have moved these guys in. Or just moved this guy in. I don't know what I did. If you look, those have got to be like that anyway. Not too much, but yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, so now, 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 I'm going to move one of these verts here. Oh yeah, that's right. I was going to move this vert so it's a little bit more uh, curved at the at that area at the top, at the front there. So that's perfect. I love that. Alright, so, and I could, I just like it coming in and out for, I think, I like the way that looks. Okay, so, leave that like that, and I think this is going to kill myself because I need to stay within these lines here. Don't worry if you're not in the lines all the time. That looks good. Oh, that looks really good, actually. I could move him down. I could move him up. Perfect. I think. Or not. Yeah, I liked it that way better. So I just went into object mode and undid what I did there. Hopefully it didn't undo... No, it didn't. Good. <laughs> Object mode is kind of crazy. I'm just going to leave things alone. You know, that's the best way. If you're not sure, just leave things alone. Um, but yeah, I, I do see a reason for actually box selecting these. Just to kind of... So, there we go. Make it a little bit shorter. There, perfect. Alright, no touchy. Maybe touchy little, but not too much. Okay, so going to save. Come on, 16, not 176. Okay, so we have a slight problem now. Don't worry. Just a little problem. Okay, so you can see it kind of bumps out here. Here, let's get rid of this picture behind here. Okay, now you can kind of see it's not completely. Uh, round like I want it so I'm just gonna kind of sort of click and move verts I have no idea which verts I'm moving um, it looks better so now I'm gonna go to the top view and see okay that doesn't look too bad and the back view looks okay and I think the front view looks okay sometimes you can get lucky like what I just did you know it's very simple and it's easy to get lucky sometimes when you just sort of click and things work. So I don't think I'm going to make it any better than that. I mean, the only way I could make it better is by expanding that. But if I expand that, you can see when I go to the number one, it puts that thing on the front. See, it makes it more like square. I don't want that. So I, I'm going to make an exception here for the top not being completely rounded which probably could be fixed if I did that 
Yeah, see, that doesn't work, though. So my exception is going to be um, that right there. It's not the best looking at the top of the head. Could be a little bit more rounder, but I mean, I don't have that many verts to play around with here, so I'm going to leave it at that, so to speak. There we go. Oh, that made it even more apparent. But actually, that's what I need. I need that rounded off there. You might be able to just come in and select these and go, gee, whoops, get rid of that one. Use your grab key. Use your G key, I mean, on your keyboard. And sort of move things. Move the upper level. Oops. And then move this level like that. Hey, look at that. That looks great. So yeah, when in doubt, use the G key and the circle select tool. So I think, well, obviously, that is better. So, I mean, jawline might... Oh, you can still see the jawline. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Only thing I don't like is that one. We can move that one in. There we go. Better. Much, much better. Yeah, that didn't... Uh, didn't mess things up. Okay, save the thing. 17. Okay, so um, I see another thing I want to fix here. Um, this isn't completely rounded off here, so we'll just kind of round that front air melon off. So it's more of a uh, curve. And then this is kind of cool, I guess. That's better, maybe. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay, so save it again. Right, so now I'm going to fix one more little thing here. I'm going to turn on this image. Oops, background image. And I'm going to see how this is gray right here. That's bad. That means it's overlapping, so we need to fix that so it's not overlapping. So we're going to move that there, and we don't want it overlapping the other way either. And uh, I'm going to move this down here. Actually, I'm going to come back to a... can't come back. I'm already in the right view. Okay, actually, that's... Yeah, that's good. I'm going to redo... That's good. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Save it, save it, save it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut the mouth out. So we're just going to go ahead and select these verts here. And hopefully this will turn out pretty well here. Actually, I'm going to move this one up just a teensy bit. And that looks close to what I had. Alright, so before we do that, we're just going to sort of pan around, make sure we can see. Is it what we like? Yes, it is. Okay. So select these. Hit V for reverse vert rip. And um, actually, let's select all these. Hit V. Left click, right click. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to unselect that one. And I'm going to move it down just a tad. Then I'm going to unselect everything. Circle select that one. Uh, Alt M to merge those two at center. Okay. Now, uh, let's go ahead and save this 20. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make the inside of the mouth and the throat and everything. Um, but first we're just going to make the inside of the mouth. So let's go ahead and use the circle select tool. We're going to select all these verts right here and including this one up here that we merged earlier. Um, okay, now we're just going to go to numpad 7 Z to get out a wireframe view and we're just going to extrude with the E key and basically what we're making right now is the inner um, lip of the um, where the the jawline <coughs> basically starts so let's just go ahead and uh, make that first inner jawline right there alright now we're making we're gonna hit E again and we're making uh, we're gonna extrude to where the teeth are so I'm going to extrude to right about there. Now I'm going to hit E again and extrude to where the outer jawline is going to be. So we'll just play it safe. We'll say right about... Um, I think that would be good. Okay, so that's um, inner jawline, the teeth ridge line, the outer uh, jawline. And now we're going to... Um, uh, extrude the uh, the mouth wall. So we're just gonna hit E again, and we're gonna go all the way to the center like that. And let's go a little bit back like there. And there we go. Okay, so now easy as pie. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna select this vert right here. Hit the H key to hide that vert. We're gonna select these verts up here and it's very easy now we're just going to use the G key to grab this and move it up and then R to rotate it and that's all we're doing we're just grabbing and rotating and uh, right to about there or actually you know what, wherever is good Actually, that's that should be okay. This is kind of okay. Let me go back a few steps here. Okay, let's grab it, rotate it, grab it. We'll stop right there. Now I'm gonna move this back move this back so it's underneath the eye socket. Oops, got the eye socket there. Okay, now we're going to select this and grab that, move that down, R to rotate it. There we go. And then we're going to Alt H to unhide that one vert we had there. Move it back. Oops. We're going to grab that. Okay, there we go. <coughs> okay, so that's pretty good. That's awesome. So what we're going to do now is... Um, first of all, I think I'm going to save this. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we're going to move on to making the rest of the mouth here. So what we're going to do to do that is, first of all, we're going to um, make the teeth uh, area where the teeth go into. So let's see here. That would be the second extrusion. So we're looking for the second extrusion here. One, two... Okay, so we're going to hide this one right here. Actually, this one right here. So we're going to hide that vert right up there, and then we're going to select the top um, loop cut. And we're basically, let's get rid of this image here. Okay, now we're basically just going to move it up a little bit, and let's enable wireframe so we can see what we're doing here. 
So I think that's a good way to put it. In fact, we could even go here and figure out how many numbers we're dealing with. Uh, 1.5 1.82 So if we do subtract 10 from that, that's what we get. Okay, so let's subtract 10 from the bottom one. So we just basically select the bottom uh, loop cut and move it down by adding 10 and that should give us a good uh, let's go inside and check it out Uh, I'd say that's decent. Looking all right. Okay, yeah, well that's pretty good. Um, and then if we go in, we can see it's nice and smooth in here. You know, it's probably a little too high. Maybe, I'm guessing. Maybe not. I don't know. If we do an edge loop here, oops, wrong place. If we do an edge loop here, we could actually move this out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. There we go. That's better. Okay, great. Beautiful. I don't know if we want to move this down. I think that's okay. Well, anyway, if we have a problem with it later, we can fix it, I'm sure. So, let's see here. So let's go ahead and actually fix this. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's save that. Actually, you know what? Let's... Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's save that. Alright, so let's try and make the blowhole now. So I'm going to hide this menu, go to the top view here, and let's see what we got to work with here. Actually, let's go to side view. Okay, so we have, okay, so if we want to put the blowhole right there, um, let's see here. First of all, let me make this a little bit more. We got to kind of have a flat area, so I'm just going to flatten this out. kind of evening this out. Expand that out down there because that's where the neck will be going, the human neck. Okay, so do, do, do let's see here. 
So let's go ahead and actually now that we got this, let me save this. Okay, so now we're going to make the blowhole. So let's go ahead and find the verts we're going to use here. Actually, let's make it so the thing is, uh, the line's pretty much straight. Straight line right up there. That's a good foundation. Um, okay, so now we're going to make this here. So we're just going to use our knife tool, our dreaded knife tool. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna cut this in a straight line like, there we go, okay, now I'm gonna add, um, Okay, so what I'm going to do here is turn off clipping, move this out, and let's see here, I'm going to cut these two um, subdivide, and I'm going to connect those to the corners. And then uh, extrude. Oops. First of all, I got to turn on clipping. Extrude to the center. Actually, let's do E and then X. There we go. E X. Okay. Oh yeah. Then I got to get rid of this. So I'm going to dissolve this edge, or actually delete this edge. Delete this edge. One, two, three, four, fill. Oops. One, two, three, four. Actually, one, two, three, four, fill. One, two, three, four, fill. And one, two, three, four, five, fill. Okay, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to join these. So that has one, two, three, four sides on it, four sides on that one. And there's, should be four sides on both of these. Hmm. Oh, you know what? This actually has to be a cut here to make up for the four sides. So I'm going to hold down my control key. Oops. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Try that again. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to move these down. Smooth this out. There we go. Actually, that has to stay up there, I think. Yep. Okay, so I'm going <sighs> to... Let's see, I'm going to move this whole thing out. Along with that one.
might need to move it up a little. Same with this one. There we go. Okay, that's nice and smooth. So now we're going to select these, hit E for extrude, maybe come down just a little bit, see how that looks. That's looking good. And then we can extrude the rest. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so now that we got that um, looking good, let's take another look at it here. It's looking a little off, not too round, I don't think, so we're going to round this thing up here. We're going to turn this thing on so we can see that. We're going to unselect everything. We're going to select these verts, move that in, select these verts, move that back, select these verts and push this in. And actually, wonder if that's good or if it should be maybe more like that. That's better, I think. And now we look at the front. You can't really see it. That's good. Look at the side. You can kind of see it. That's okay. Um, but we can kind of fix that should be able to fix that. Let's see if we select this loop and go up a little. Definitely helps. It's not as smooth. Well, it's it's smooth enough, I think. It's it's good enough. It's good. But yeah, to get that any sm um, more like a curve, you'd have to like do something like that. And then of course it looks weird here. Yeah, I like I like before. <laughs> so yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to excuse me. We're going to uh, do, 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 we're going to do this. Let's see here. We're going to move this some more here, some more here. Maybe move this these down. That's a good idea. That's a brilliant idea, actually. So yeah, let's do that. Let's move these down. So I'm going to select the whole thing here. There we go better. Looks a lot better. Perfect. Yeah, I like that up there, I like that. That's good. 
<clears throat> that's really good actually. Perfect. And you can make the blowhole bigger or smaller, <clears throat> depending on what you're wanting. Excuse me. Now let's select this face and let's go ahead and delete uh, or dissolve faces. Or sorry, only faces. Delete only face. No, not delete. We want to dissolve. Oh, edge loop. That's it. And then um, you can just extrude it down again with E and Z. And that will give you, um, that'll fix that problem. Whereas before we had, uh, it was a little too wide in there. But now, um, it's basically straight down, so it's better. Okay, so now we can move to making the throat, connecting the throat. And I'm going to save this. Okay, so now we're going to make the throat. So let's go ahead and go back to Blender here. Let's turn on cage editing so we can see what's going on here. We're going to rotate this a little bit. Um, actually, you know what? Let's not rotate it. Let's just extrude down and see where that'll end up. Okay, that'll end up right there. That's right about where the throat is anyway. So I'm going to say that's good. So yeah, I'm just going to extrude down again. Just straight down. We're going to do four here, four extrusions. One, two... Actually, you know what? This one we're going to put a little bit lower. Actually, you know what? In the throat area, we need more. So we're going to do... Let's see, we're going to have the throat open up right around here. There, it's going to go right there. And then one more extrusion here. And of course, that doesn't need to connect anywhere. But we can, uh, so before we do that, we'll rotate this and then extrude. There we go. And we can rotate that back like that. And if it did continue, that's where it would go. Because that's basically the neck right there. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save what we did. Oops, 26. Hello! Okay, so now we're going to make the throat. So basically, all we have to do is go inside the head here, select this vertice right here do a V to vert rip it and move it up move this one down and actually let's turn on oh it is turned on huh. okay so we're gonna move this further in like this we're gonna select the whole thing hopefully there we go I think we got it now move the whole thing back so it's nice and smooth like that move this more in actually that's too far move it right about like that, that's good that's pretty good I think okay so then we're gonna fill those two actually I have to move this whole thing back just a tad there we go Okay, we're going to connect those, and then we're going to connect those. Actually, you know what? That didn't connect right. Let's try that. Oh, you know what? We got to delete these. So let's delete this face, just like that. And now we can connect them. So one, two, three, four. Fill that. Okay. Okay, now we're going to connect the bottom. So, let's see here. That's a little bit too. There we go. You 
know what? I think that's okay. Let's see here. I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Connect that. Okay, then we're going to connect these. Just like that. Okay, then we're going to add a loop cut in the middle here. Because we only got three, now we got four. One, two, three, four. And fill that. And that will make a nice throat. Right. So now we go inside the throat. Select faces. Go to face select mode. Actually get rid of this thing. Select these faces. Size it on the z-axis down a little bit. And we got a nice looking throat. Might want to make it... Actually we could size the whole thing out then. If we wanted to. There you go. So we got that versus that. I think I'm going to go with the larger throat. And then of course you could select these and see what that does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I kind of liked it like that, actually. That's kind of good. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that, and I am going to call this good so far. So I'm going to save this thing. Okay, right, so now we got the throat finished, so now we're going to add a tongue, and we can always change the throat later if we need to. Um, so basically now, oh, we got some verts hidden there, so just Alt-H to unhide those verts. And, uh, yeah, so now we can add a throat here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new layer, and uh, I'm just going to add a, let's see here, add a cube. Get out of this perspective mode. Great. Okay, so we got our cube here. Now we're just basically going to make a, what looks like a tongue from this cube. We're going to add a modifier, subdivision surface. Um, and this is basically just like we modeled the head, only we're modeling a tongue. <laughs> so it's not that difficult. So let's see here. Turn on our. Let's go ahead and smooth this. Where is this? Smooth. No, let's subdivide. No, let's not subdivide. Let's add a loop cut in the center. Actually, you know what? Let's not add a loop cut in the center. We'll need a loop cut in the center. But let's go ahead and. Uh, where's the smooth function? There we go. Smooth shading. There we go. Now it looks more like a ball. Let's turn on this. Oops, wrong object. Okay, so now I'm just going to S, Y, and S, Z. Make it more like that, fl flatten it out, basically. Uh, we can also flatten it out this way, which is kind of easier, I think. And now, let's go ahead and move that into the mouth. Now's where the fun part <laughs> happens. You know, you can actually play around with stuff some more. So, let's see here. You know, it would really help if we could open this mouth. But I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Okay. Excuse me. Um, where am I?
am I? Okay, there I am. Okay, right, so we're just going to make this tongue here. Size this thing down. Move it to the end here. And I'd like to center this thing so that we could center it later. Um, I'm going to add another loop cut to this. Oh, come on. No, I'm not in edit mode. That's why. There we go. Add another loop cut. Okay, now I'm going to delete. I'm going to use a mirror modifier on this thing, just like I did on the other one. So, it shouldn't be too difficult. Let's get rid of that other layer so we can work on just the tongue. There we go, that's nice. Okay, so, right, so let's go to front view, out of perspective. Let's get rid of this. So let's make sure we can select everything here. Woo, we selected too much. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, add a mirror modifier. There we go. Okay, now it's not very smooth like a tongue should be, so let's make it smoother. We're going to add a loop cut here. We're going to size... Woo, what happened there? Oh, we need uh, clipping turned on. Okay, so we're going to add a loop cut here. Size this. Actually, we're going to select both those. Oh, come on. Um, let's see here. Select these two. That's right, okay. So now when we do circle select, it should select both of those. Okay, we're going to move that inwards. Let's see, how does a tongue usually look? Uh, I think it looks like that. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> you need to add more so we can expand it in different areas. And it gets wider at the back, so we're going to expand the back, from what I remember. That's weird. We don't want to do that. And I think it gets thicker in the back, too. So we'll go ahead and, uh... And we need to rotate those guys. Well, that's perfect for the, for the, uh, the top portion of the tongue. Okay, guys, so what I want you to do, if you're working on this, is do that. Rotate inwards. Perfect tongue. <laughs> That's genius. That is brilliant. Okay, now grab this vert right here, and you can move this inward, and you can grab this vert. Uh, one of these verts. Oh, come on, which vert? Turn off clipping. There we go. And you can do that. And that's pretty good tongue right there, I would say. It's a little flat under here, so let's give it some volume. And let's round this off a little bit more down here. Move this down a bit. Who would have thought working on tongues would be so fun? Cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I'm not sure if that's perfect, but that's getting there. We can add another loop cut for more, you know, to play around with it some more. Maybe not. Keep it simple, stupid, kind of like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle select these, move these back. Uh, move this back with it. Do -do -do. 
maybe add another loop cut to it. There we go. Give it some more depth there. Have it come more in towards the back. Not sure if this is... Okay, some of this stuff you don't want to mess with. You don't want to screw up your thing here. That's nice. Okay, now let's go back to our other thing here. Let's go into the mouth. See what we've done. Wow, cool. Okay, so all we need to do is size this along the Y axis. And there you go, instant dolphin tongue. Well, maybe not perfect, but we're getting there. So we need to make it continue. Ah. First of all, I'm going to save this because I put a lot of work into this so far. Okay, so now we're going to finish the tongue. Uh, let's see here. We're going to select all these verts and just move them on back. Actually, let's go into this mode so we can see how far back we're moving them. This is easier, actually, because you can see what's going on better. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Move this back a little. Go back into this mode to see what's going on. And I'm not going to connect the tongue. I'm going to leave it as a separate object. Um, and just kind of fade it into... I'll fade it. Just going to push it into another object. Um, might connect it later, I'm not sure. But for now, this is what I want to do. want to put it there. Okay, I'm going to grab these. Move these out like this. Take these up. Yeah, that that'll work. Might be a bit too far down there, but that's okay. Take it up, move it out more. Perfect. Actually, I like it right there. That's nice. Okay, let's see here. Might want to move these out more. That's probably as good as we... best as we want it. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of move stuff down. Let's go to side view. Put the Z key. Use the Z key here. Definitely need another loop cut here, I can see already. I'm going to move that there. That looks 
good. Go back inside to double check my work. Come on, there we go. Circle select these. Uh, move them around here. So it's not hitting too many objects. And I know I'm kind of merging those two together, but that's okay. We can always merge the objects if we need to physically merge them later. We're just trying to get the shape right now, which is very good practice. Okay, so I'm going to move these down. Come on. tongue I think I'm gonna leave that there I could move that to the center though but then that becomes like a try I don't want that Okay, so not sure if this is completely good or what, but I'm going to try to move this so it's not impacting anything. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And now when we go to side, well, front view, we can see it's good. Side view looks good. Might actually want to move this up. Well, I think it's okay. I think I want to move this down. Right. And then maybe move this up just a tad. Then I might want to move this. That's like the side of the tongue. What would happen if I move this down? Yeah, I like it further down then all the way up there. So I'm going to keep that down there. This is looking great, actually. So I'm going to save this, because this is kind of a work of art here. Alright, let's go ahead and save it. Okay, so now that we're done with the tongue, basically, um, I was going to look at something else here. Oops. And that's, when you look at this in 3D mode, um, something looks wrong. So I think it's this vert just needs to be expanded a little. And this vert right here. And you can see this right there. There's the problem right there. So I'm going to select, actually I'm going to select both of these. Oops, come on. I'm going to select both of these verts. And then I'm going to move them out equally. How's that? That's looking better. I might want to move this in just a tad. like it out more like that I think 
Okay, yeah, so that's all I saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it again. Let's go into uh, side view. Okay, so now we're gonna attempt to make the eyes for this dolphin. So we're gonna go to a new screen here. Shift S, selection, uh, cursor to center, uh, add a, let's see, our mesh. Uh, I want to add a UV sphere, but I know it's easier to control a cube than it is a UV sphere. Um, kind of want to add a cube and turn it into a sphere. So let's get out of this mode. Oop, we're in the perspective mode. Okay, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Let's turn on smooth shading. Um, put that up a little bit. There we go. Now I got a sphere kind of thing. And then let's um, go to object, transform, uh, origin to 3D cursor. Actually, you know what? We got to move this away. And then we got to go to object transform origin to 3D cursor. Okay, so now that we've offset the object's origin, we can add a mirror modifier, and there you go. Now we can actually um, play with that, and it's away from the center. Um, but the object origin is in the center of the um, 3D world. Okay, so now got to move that whole thing over to where the eyes would go. And we're basically going to set these eyes into this thing here, this object, just by doing that. Move it back a little. Um, Actually, let's move them in. Oops. I'm going to do it this way. There we go. Okay, that's a good start. Um, definitely have the eyes looking forward that way. I'm going to rotate this on the Z axis so it's in alignment with that. So the box is like that. Oh, we got this thing kind of backwards actually because I guess it's okay. But our mirror is on the other side for the eyes. Interesting. Usually I like to work on one side. I uh, wonder if I can fix that. Oh, it's the way I initially started it. <coughs> so you know how to fix that, right? You just go to uh, do, do, do. first of all, you do the opposite. There we go. And we can just rotate it. There we go. Now those are kind of beady eyes for the dolphin that I was wanting to make. So I think, let's see here, are those eyes okay or are they too, oh that's kind of off there isn't it? Let's see here, let's see if I, let's see if I can align this. Got to select multiple objects. Object. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay. So that's all you have to do should be lined up now. 
think that's perfect. Um, we just have to edit these and move them in. And uh, move them up, actually. A little bit higher. There we go, a little bit in there. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, right, so I'm going to save this. So far, so good. Alright, so I was looking at something else here, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the eyes. So I'm going to go to this layer, and I'm going to go ahead and go into sculpt mode. And you can see up here, there's like a little bump right there that I'm going to go ahead and correct. So, um, right now we're in brush. I'm going to go ahead and go to, um, pop, uh, smooth. And you can see that does make a huge effect on that. So I'm going to find the area that I need to fix here. I think it's that area. you got to be very careful when you're working with these tools, especially in sculpt mode. Actually that did. I think that did it. Yeah, what I did just there did it, so that was perfect. Better than it was looking, because it was looking like that. Now it's looking more like that. See, before and after. So I definitely like bef after than before. So I'm going to save this. I think we're done with that. It's better than it was. Okay, yeah, we're done so far. All right. Okay, so now let's go ahead and fix the eye sockets so they look a little bit more uh, roundish. So let's go ahead and add a uh, loop cut here and a loop cut here and then let's go ahead and select actually let's select these four uh, these eight areas here and let's just size this up so we get a nice smooth look that's good okay so now let's go ahead and oops let's select the outer loop and actually let's select the whole thing let's size it down okay now let's select the outer loop and we're just going to hit V for vertice rip and you're probably wondering why well it's because we want to uh, rotate this so let's see here. So this is kind of where it gets hard. A little difficult here. But I think we got it. Yeah, we got it. Good. Okay, so now all we have to do is rotate this like so. Then basically just merge these. Try that one again here. Actually, let's do this one. And when you click at last, um, it merges the last thing you clicked. So the last thing I selected was that vertice, the outer vertice right there. So it'll move the vertice to the um, the correct vertice that we want that way. Now things like this is hard to tell. Oh, this I, this is easy. That's that one, obviously. This one's kind of hard to tell, so I don't really know. I guess I'm just going to have to use circle select and merge at last. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, great. Okay, so now we've definitely got a more uh, humanistic feel, I think, to this eye socket. Okay, and it's going to be better when you're animating it, I found out, if you do it this way. Anyway. Okay, so what do we do now with it? Well, let's go to the front and let's size it down to where we think it looks appropriate. I think that looks pretty good. That's perfect. Okay, I am going to save this. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate these eyes down so they look more realistic. And don't worry about this because we can just move this to the front some more. And that should take care of that texture problem there. If we go to wireframe, we can see these are kind of messed up here. So why don't we just go ahead and rotate that. Let's see here. Rotate it on the z-axis. There we go. Rotate that on the z-axis too. It's looking better already. Perfect. Okay, so, and of course if we turn this thing off, it's going to look like crazy. But that's a lot better than it was looking before, I think. I like those eyes, because um, it gives it more of a uh, curved look rather than just a round look. So I'm going to go ahead and save this one more time. 32, 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the eyes now for this character. So all we have to do is go to our eyes uh, layer and then um, select the eyeballs and right click to select those and hit apply on your subsurf modifier. Now you're left with these um, nicely um, made eyeballs. So let's go ahead and select, let's turn this guy off here. Okay, let's select um, a path, an area where we're going to cut this out for texturing. So we want to uh, basically select this uh, loop cut right here, uh, multiple loop cuts here, one, two, three, four, and then we want to control E and click mark seam. And we want to do this for all the um, areas around the ball. So here's another area. Oops. Control E, mark seam. Okay, and as we rotate the right mouse button, we can get the other areas too. Okay, control E, mark seam. And then you can see this is where um, the other seam was. Mark seam. Okay, so now we're going to do the top and the bottom. And the bottom. Come on, bottom. All right. Mark seam. Okay. Now let's switch to the UV editor, which is up here. Um, and we're just gonna let's go back to where this is. We're gonna double tap the A key so we can select everything, and then hit the U key twice so we can unwrap it. Should have six uh, uh, faces here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do. Right. Okay. We're gonna click new. Uh, label this I, change it to white, take alpha off, click OK. Okay, so you need this um, uh, back here, you know, we need to uh, make a new image uh, to be able to um, texture it, um, to texture the, um, the seams that we made here. So um, that's the purpose of doing that. So you can see this little asterisk right here next to image. Well, basically that means nothing's been saved. So I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. But make sure that you don't have that asterisk. Um, asterisk. Excuse me. <laughs> make sure you don't have that asterisk um, before you save it because you will lose any of your texture data. So that's not fun at all. <laughs> so let's go back to the default view here. And uh, let's go right into texture painting this thing. 
Okay. So I got both of these layers selected uh, using the shift key and left clicking. And uh, let's, why not, we'll add the tongue in there too. Okay, we're going to select this, select this guy. Okay, go to texture paint. Actually, before we do that, we need to add an object. So let's go ahead and, or an image, sorry. Let's go ahead and go over here and add an image. Um, change it to image, open, iris. Now I made this iris. Um, I can post the um, tutorial I've, I followed to make the iris in the description if you guys want at a later time. Um, so that was fun, making that iris, definitely. Um, okay, so we're going to texture, and we're going to change tiled under brush mapping to stencil. And then when you move your cursor out here, you can see this, um, your image right out here. Now if you right-click it, you can uh, drag it around the screen. And holding shift and right-clicking, you can resize. And then holding control and right-clicking, you can rotate. So that's how the stencil feature works. We don't want to rotate it, though. So I just fixed that, basically. But if you if you resize and you goof up, uh, well, there's no way that you can really get back the, the last size that you had not that I know of anyway here. There might be a way that I haven't discovered yet, but that's, you know, next time in Blender discovering things, you know, I don't really need that function, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. You know, at the moment, I don't need it. Okay, so I'm going to come back out here, and I'm just going to... Oh. Oh. Right, I got my stencil there. That that almost looked real. Huh. I think that might be a good uh, place. Let's see. No, those are too big. I'm gonna try this size right here because that looks real. Looks realistic. Does it work? I'm pretty sure that'll work if I rotate the object. So let me, I'm gonna try and rotate this guy. That is working pretty well, I'm thinking. So. Oops. Just rotate it down a little bit. Okay, let's get out of this texture paint mode because we don't want to paint something else. Can't really because we just have the eyeball selected, but eh. It's a good thing, I guess. Okay, I'm going to change my viewport shading to texture so I can see everything. Add some more lighting in here. Control D. There we go, some nice lighting there. Change this guy to like a blue color. Blue. There we go. Change the tongue color to just a, oops, it's like a pink. There we go. Okay, so now Let's go ahead and uh, look at the eyes some more. Right, so I'm thinking to go out and then back is really good. There we go. That's looking realistic right there. And that's in the eye socket, at least. It needs to be further in the eye socket. Okay, so that's good. That's definitely looking really good, actually. And uh, let's see here. 
I saw a little problem there. I think that fixes that. And, um, yeah, because that, that way it looks more roundish. Perfect. Okay, now we might want to move this out some more. I'm not sure. Oops. If we move it out, now let's keep it in like that. Move this in, maybe. Not sure on that one. Actually, that's fine. Now, the way my um, thing was, it was it look like that, I think. But I think that's going to look... It's definitely looking good there. We can also rotate these if we want. That looks better rotated. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one rotated, definitely. Might even rotate him further. There is a limit, you know, you don't want to go past the limit. Um, sorry guys, texture. Now I'm just curious if I do that, what does it do? If I raise that up, does that look better or worse? I like it down. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for that. Okay, so now we want to pack our texture in before we forget, of course. So let's go ahead and um, go back to the UV editing before we forget. And see this image thing with this asterisk right there? Click that. Click Pack as PNG. Now there's no asterisk there, and the next time you open up your um, Blender file, you won't be missing an eye, <laughs> which is kind of bad if you if you do miss an eye. So yeah, so 35, save this thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach the tongue to the rest of the head now, um, because it's going to be easier in the long run if we do that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, we are going to first of all go to the tongue layer and we're going to raise it up and we're going to move it over we're not going to worry about exact positions really um, then we're going to see here go to this layer and make sure we see everything see through everything we're just going to start hiding stuff until we get just the bottom beak and uh, the um, the throat where we need to work. Okay, that's that's looking good. And if there's like one vert, you can hide it. Doesn't really matter. There we go. I like to make it so I can see everything. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and. Uh, select that other layer, go back into side view, select, shift select the uh, head layer, select the tongue, go into wireframe, shift right click the uh, the head, and then just uh, we're just going to do a control J to join the two, and then we're going to hit tab, you can clearly see the two are separated now, so that's good. So we're going to select the tongue, and um, first of all, we're going to go, we're going to make a, a vertex group for this. So we're just going to hit uh, plus here, and we're just going to name it tongue. And we're going to hit assign, and we can deselect it and select it now. So perfect. So now we have complete control over if we lose the tongue, we can always have it selected. And then uh, we'll fix it later so we can animate with it. 
So, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move these together. We got a little hole there. So, we need to fix that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move this back. Actually, let's move this. Oops, let's move this forward. Okay, so now I'm going to connect this vert definitely with this vert. Alt M merge at last. Okay, now we're going to move this vert down. And we're going to connect this vert with our did we forget to add a oh let's add a loop cut here. There we go. Okay, so now we can connect that vert to something. Merge at last. And you can see the tongue connects with the throat very easily and everything's still quad. So it's perfect, perfect connection we did there. Now let's go ahead and uh, da -da -da, select the whole tongue. And if we try and move it down now, we're having problems back there because the throat's selected. So we want to unselect that throat vert and unselect any of those two throat verts right there. Now we just move it down. And um, move it back. And now it's up to you how much you want it move this vert in. This is not that's not good, I don't think. Actually that's not looking too good, so Oh no, that's that's right. Hold on guys, let's go ahead and uh we've got to do something here. We're gonna move this back up. Now we got to merge some other verts here. So we're going to merge this one with this one. And we're just going to hit Alt M, merge at last. This one with this one, I think. There we go. I hope that's OK. I think that's, that's a good merge right there. OK. So now we're just going to select everything and deselect the verts that are connected to the throat. Oh, come on, I know you're connected. Deconnect, disconnect. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to move the whole tongue down and maybe size it down a bit. Yeah, I'll leave it the same size. Okay, I'll move it back. And then I'm going to go ahead and just play around with this. So I'm going to move this in and move it up like a regular tongue would look in that area. And see if I can move this so it looks better. I might want to Alt M merge this at last two. Actually, I think it was there. Alt M, merge at last. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, so merge those two. That'll be good. And the question is, do we have those merged down there, too? I think we do. Sorry, guys, I just got to double check something. Oh, good. Okay, I think we do. Because if we do that, it comes up. Good. Okay, so... Um, this is... I'm going to add another vertex group. I'm going to name this uh, Tongue Animate... or Tongue... I'll just put uh, Tongue 2. That's what good. Okay, so this is going to be... Uh, just the tongue, and then this is the uh, 
the tongue with the throat connection there. Oh, I forgot to add it to vertex, assign the vertex group. Okay, so... No, that's not the... So the reason I'm doing this is so that um, if I go to animate the tongue uh, or change, move the tongue at all, I can select just the areas I want. Okay, so I'm going to hit assign. And then this is select that, select that, or deselect, select. Huh. Let's try this again here. Okay, tongue to... Okay, hit assign, deselect, select. Good. Okay. Select, select. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, great. Okay, so now we got the tongue done. And I'm pretty sure everything else is looking good. Actually, it's not. I wonder why that moved. Oh, I know why that moved. Okay, when we added a loop cut, it uh, modified our, our thing here. So you can see we have pieces of the the lower loop cut thing here going out crazy. So we can can we select that loop cut and move it up? Okay, I'm gonna hit this uh, hide that. There we go. And then I can just select this and grab it and move it and rotate it anywhere. And that's good. Okay, that should be good. So I'm going to Alt H. It's going to unhide everything. And let's see if we can make that a little better. I guess it's going to have to look like that. That's good. That's pretty good. That's good enough. Okay, so... It's pretty good in wireframe mode. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to touch that too much. Okay, I might move this... Okay, and I think, pretty sure I'm good, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move the eyes to layer 2, and then go back to texture mode, and give this a save. Okay, so now let's move on to making the eyelids. So to do that, we're going to select the face and uh, make a loop cut here. And actually, let's get rid of this. Okay, here we go. And we're going to come out enough, just enough, so where the it covers the eye, but not too much um, to distort any texturing that we might do later. So I think that's a good um, start there might need a little bit more um, let's see here well that's okay I can always move it out like that or I could yeah I could just move it out like that and that's good okay that should be okay alright so you can see there's enough room around the eye um, so it should cover the eye. So if you take this up 
and you drag it up, it's definitely covering the eye. And if you take this vert, whoops, not that vert. If you take these verts, you drag them down, that's covering the eye too. So we're good. Okay, so that, uh, let's see here, I'm going to move these verts around a bit just so they're more the shape we want. So it's more like an eye and it's not so much um, different. Okay, so let's see that. Yeah, we want those up, definitely. I think we want that one up too. Before and after. Oops. Okay, so there's what it looked like before and there's what it looks like now. So definitely an improvement, I think. Um, of course, I don't know. I actually kind of like it just like that. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. Oh look, I can see the difference here. Do I like it closer or further? I like it like that. Okay, so now all we have to do is make a shape key. So we're going to go to this um, under here, uh, shape keys. We're just going to hit tab and, um, oh, before we do any shape keys, um, let's go ahead and add the teeth. So let's let's do that right now, actually. So I'm going to save this. There's seven. Okay, hello everyone. Now we're going to work on the teeth. So let's go ahead and start with a tooth. We're going to um, go to the layer three here. We're going to add a oops, add a um, cube. We're going to turn off this textured mode. Go into solid mode. And then we're just going to add a uh, modifier subdivision surface. Bring that up to 2. Add a uh, loop cut. Oops. Get into this here. Edit mode. Add loop cut. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and smooth this out. And let's turn this guy off. Okay. Add a loop cut here. Maybe do something like that. That's cool. That gives us that effect. There, you guys can see better now. And I don't think there's much more that is needed, really. I think if we just sort of rotate this guy maybe bring this down there we go okay now we want to bring these in there we go there we go that's looking good and it's it is actually wide until it gets to the tip of the tooth so I think this is perfect because if we squeeze this down it's just it's not gonna look like a like a tooth anymore I don't think I don't know, what do you think? Does that look better or does that look better? I gotta see for myself here. What kind of teeth are better? Do, 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 do. Yeah, I like this actually better. Believe it or not, I like the other one better. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna stick with that. And I believe that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add another cube. And actually, we forgot to label this one. Let's label it tooth. And let's go ahead and click this thing and change that to tooth. And there we go. And we got a copy of our tooth subdivision surface. We'll add another turn on our tool panel smooth it out there we go perfect P 
Okay, so I'm gonna save this. 38. Okay, people, so now we're gonna put the teeth in the mouth. Okay, so first of all, let's hide this tooth. We don't need to work with that. We're going to um, create a beezer curve for this tooth right here. Just to go ahead and fit in the jaw. But before we do that, um, we're going to create our uh, uh, jawline so we can uh, just see the, uh, the jawline. Okay, so we need to select this object, tab into edit mode, and just deselect everything with the A key. And then we need to go into circle select with the C key. And let's go into wireframe with the Z key. And let's select these verts. Select these verts. Uh, select these verts. This vert here. This vert here and this vert here. That way we don't get any problems up in here or down here where we don't want things to move around. Okay, so now that we've got our jawline selected, um, let's see, all we have to do is go to this triangle up here, which is the, uh, that is the active data, object data, I guess. Um, yeah, that's the object data window. Okay, so or tab, I should say. So we're just gonna click the plus key here, type in jaw, oop, jaw, <coughs> excuse me, uh, click assign. Okay, and then, um, then we can go ahead and hit A, and if we hit select, it selects just that. Okay, so let's tab back into object mode and then add a mask modifier and let's change this to vertex group change it to jaw and there you go so now you only see your jaw and of course don't worry you know things are still there you know you can hit the eye I don't think you guys can see that but you can hit this eye thing um, to show or hide the mask Masks are good because it allows you to work on one thing. It's kind of like transparency in Photoshop. Just think of it like that. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Only you're completely hiding or showing um, a layer. Or not a layer, but um, certain, um, a vertex group, a selection. Okay, that's why vertex groups are nice, because you can save your selections, basically. So yeah, just think of it like that, a way to show or hide um, selections. So yeah, it's kind of like Photoshop layers in the sense where you can show or hide the layer, but this is with individual selections. Okay, so, um, all right, so we want to make sure we can only see the jaw um, and the tongue, of course. So we're going to go to top view, we're going to go to layer three and then we're gonna add a curve beezer and we're gonna rotate this curve ninety degrees and size it maybe actually you know what now we'll leave it alone okay we're going to rotate the tooth ninety degrees and then we're gonna go into object mode and just rotate this one at eighty I want it to end up uh, going, looking that way. And then all you have to do, we're going to hide this, all you have to do now is just basically, actually, you know what, let me show you guys. I'm going to unhide everything. Uh, all you have to do now is you just uh, click the tooth, click add modifier, select array, to resize that a bit. And then, um, add modifier curve and just select your Beezer curve and you can see it aligns it to the curve perfect huh and then as you're adding teeth it comes down instead of going the opposite way which is kind of a pain in the neck if you want to align make sure everything's aligned okay so that's nice so now we've got it um, going down okay so now we're gonna just straighten everything up here 
and you can see if if I add uh, I should have like a whole bunch of teeth here I should have 23 teeth actually we'll just use six teeth for now okay so if you do this you can see the teeth align with your visa curve okay but I just want to make sure it's straight oh it looks perfect actually okay so right so now let's go ahead and get rid of that tooth um, let's go to both layers here and size this down actually just to um, to make a, a copy of this on the other side of the mouth what we need to do is uh, first of all we need to center this center both of these actually so we just select the mouth and we just uh, shift s uh, cursor to selected and then we shift s well actually we have to select both objects and then shift s and selection to cursor okay so now we can actually mirror stuff but before we do that we're going to move this uh, Beezer curve out in object editing mode have to be in object editing mode to do that so that changes the the object um, from its center of origin okay so now um, what we want to do is add a modifier Let's see here, we want to add a modifier on the Beezer curve, which is a mirror modifier. And make sure it's on the right axis. You should be able to see it on the other side right there. And as you can see now, it's perfectly centered with the jaw. So that's perfect. Now we just select the teeth and then add a mirror modifier onto the teeth. And make sure it's on the right axis. And there you go. Now you've got two sets of lower jaw teeth uh, and when you move stuff around you might want to move them together <laughs> make sure you have everything selected okay so now I'm just going to select the teeth and I'm going to change the spacing to 1.4 because I think that's a pretty good spacing and then uh, we can tab in object mode or edit mode with the uh, visa curve Let's see here, select the Beezer curve, select all, and then we can align it. Um, yeah, if you're in um, object or edit mode with the Beezer curve, you can actually move it around wherever you want. It's really handy, actually. So I'm going to move it here, and then I'm just going to start moving these things around. only going to work on one side which is nice oops what happened there oh yeah don't hit the H key that'll hide your stuff you don't want that oh, I did it again okay you can use the R key to rotate and G to grab and you can kind of move everything so it looks nice Like, for instance, I want that out there so I can actually grab it. Okay. And all you're doing is you're basically filling this groove here with the line. So you don't even need the, uh, the teeth, really, but they help. Okay, so now I'm going to extrude here. And don't worry if things get scrunched up because they'll remain proportional, actually. Believe it or not. They should, anyway, from what I understand. So yeah, you could even do that, and then do that. Should be able to. Okay. And now that should... That should be all that we need to do okay so everything looks good <coughs> so let's see here what we need to do here is ah, what do we need to do okay I'm gonna do that that looks better looks 
better. It looks really good, actually, guys. Okay, so now let's add more teeth. We need uh, 23. There we go. 23 teeth. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to lower this. Actually, move it down. Yeah, you can do that, too. You, this is fun here. Alright. Okay, perfect. Perfect! Okay, so now I'm going to use box select. I'm just going to move them down. Z. Right, so now we need to edit this on the other axis. So the way I'm going to do that is just select this whole thing. And what I'm going to do is just move these teeth up so they just touch the uh, surface of that mouth, you can see that there. Okay. Whoops. Whoopsies. Okay, we might have too much there. Okay, there, that's good. Uh. And you really just have to play with this kind of stuff, you know, you can't expect a result as much as you know because it's all sort of dynamic, you know, as it happens. Whoops. So first it's probably a good idea to get everything more or less on the level. You know what I mean. Okay, right. So we can see we need to move these up. And this needs to be moved up. And where's the center? Where's the center? That's what I don't like about that last one, is the center is really far out there, but that's okay. Whoa. Yeah, it's good to have it all sort of, um... Uh, straight, you know. There we go. That makes it easier to... You know, if your line is straight it's much easier, in my opinion, to deal with. Because if it's all curvy and wanky, then it's stupid. Okay, what am I doing here? Moving this. Rotate that. Move that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, it's nice to have it decent enough to where it's like, wow, that's amazing. It's a good thing to, there, okay. So yeah, definitely put effort into your work. No matter what people tell you, definitely work on things for the better. Because that's what makes the whole thing good. Okay, that is awesome. Okay, so... Gosh. I want to actually... What do I want to do there? I think I want to rotate that guy and then move this up with the rotation. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I love it. <laughs> I love this so much. I'm going to save this. Alright. Save. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take a look at this and see where we're at. Okay, so it looks like we need to raise everything up. So we're going to go ahead and just do that. 
I'm going to select everything and just lift it up and take a look again okay it looks like we've got some problems here and um, the teeth aren't in the correct place so uh, first of all I think the teeth are too uh, they're not tall enough so I'm gonna change that right now I'm gonna go in here and hit S and then uh, Z and just make them tall perfect okay so now let's uh, go back to here raise this up again okay that's looking a lot better okay but I'd like to have this uh, I'd like to have this one in further Actually, I'll just grab this and drag it out. Huh, didn't help. Okay, so maybe we need more spacing. Or you know, maybe, I think the teeth need to be larger in general. larger and we'll move them in come on there we go okay so now let's see here let's go ahead and make it so we can basically just barely see the teeth on this um, side view so we're looking all right up here over here I'm thinking might want to come out a little bit. Yeah, this one. There we go. Come down with that. Just trying to make it look proportional, that's all. Okay, so. Move this up. Maybe rotate in. Move this up, rotate this way. Actually, because it's coming down. No, that's right. That's right. That should be good. let's see them now if we go to um, 3d view we can go under the the uh, jawline and um, or the gum line if you want and uh, we can actually see heck's going on here cool huh okay so that I think does it only thing I would change is probably move this uh, move this inward move this eh. so hard to figure sometimes where to move stuff yeah that's good Okay, now I'm going to save this again. Okay, one thing I did forget to mention is dolphin teeth are a little bit slanted inward toward the back of the throat. So right now they're just basically pointing directly at the tongue. So we need to slant them a little bit. 
So, I don't know, that's the wrong way. That's better. Need a little bit more slanting. It's too much. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah, I think that looks good. Perfect. There might be a little bit too much spacing there going on. Maybe. We can always add more teeth too if we need to. Or we could just move. Where'd you go? This one. Move it to the end. I think that's really good actually. I like it better further away from that jaw thing than closer to it. In my opinion, that's that's great. Okay, because we got an we got an equal amount of space here, the front and the back, so that's that's perfect, I think. And we got that um, rotation. Don't we have that rotation going there? Yeah, we got the rotation there. Sweet. Okay, I'm just gonna hit save. All right, so you guys are probably gonna laugh at how easy it is to make the upper set of teeth. Um, wouldn't you know there's duplicate function in Blender and you can rotate objects, right? So all you gotta do, <laughs> it's literally quite this simple. You just uh, shift D, select both of those objects, shift D, and then Z to duplicate on the Z axis. And then you just go into this these teeth, these duplicates of the teeth, and you just rotate them 180 degrees, and whammo bammo, you got your opposite set of teeth. So now you can actually just move the whole unit together, I would recommend, because that's going to be better. Uh, it'll be easier to do it that way. And you can see we've got some problems right up here. So just go ahead and position where they're most comfortable with being positioned. And if you got some problems, you can move the teeth using these button thingies. Uh, do -do -do. Come on. So now you're basically just realigning your teeth the way they look the best. And I think that looks great. Okay, so now, 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 now all you gotta do to see this is um, turn off your mask. So we just go here and let's see, where's the mask? Okay, so we turn that off. Okay, so now we can actually see. So now we're going to go inside the head with the 3D view. And we're going to see what needs to be fixed here. Right, so you can see we've got to move the whole thing, in my opinion, up. Okay. And then this one, we gotta move this way. Uh, maybe, let's see here, this way. There we go, that works. That's looking good. Looking good, looking good, looking really good. I'll just move them back a little. 
Okay, so now, now let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so we made the teeth now, and now all we have to do is close the mouth. In order to do that, we have to get out of perspective mode and go into right orthographic view, and just select layer one, and select the head, and then um, go in here and start hiding these verts right there. And then just select these um, edge loops, and basically we're just going to move them up until we can see they match up. And don't worry if there's like a gap, a little bit of a gap, or a whole lot of gap. Well, you don't want a whole lot of gap, but don't worry if there's a little bit of a gap, because it's better if there's a little bit of a gap than not, because you don't want, the last thing you want is it to look weird. Um, it's going to look off if you have uh, your uh, lower jaw morphing into the upper jaw, you know, some in some way. So uh, you do not want that. So just go in here, and make sure we don't have any overlapping segments, which I don't see any. All right, so I'm going to save this. Actually, let's unhide this, and then let's go ahead and save over what we got because it's perfect. Okay, so now we're going to move our teeth up, so let's go to layer 3 and select these teeth with the uh, uh, Beezer Curve. Move them all up here and then just center them. And that should theoretically be good. But you might want to play around with the adjustment you know, if it's all not looking, you know, if it's all not fitting together, then definitely adjust as needed. Just be careful when you adjust things. Uh, you can mess up stuff really easily. So, yeah. yeah. Be very careful adjusting like this kind of a crazy adjustment there. Okay, and personally, I would give this a little bit more space, so I might move this. Actually, this needs to be rotated. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, so now on this guy, all I gotta do is move him. There we go. Okay, and you want to kind of keep an even spacing. You don't. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but um, you don't want the teeth touching each other. And you know what? I think. Wow. I think I'm done here, actually, because um, everything looks good. Wow. 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 Okay. So I guess on my first try with this thing here. I did it pretty good. Um, I'm sure there's better ways to do that, so I'm just gonna uh, let's see here. Let's go inside the mouth actually. Take a look at our handiwork. Everything is looking pretty much good in my opinion. I mean, I, I might be missing some teeth at the front. Let's see, am I? Uh, no, not really. It's just that the teeth on the dolphin that I see goes down. Um, but let's go ahead and save this for now. Okay, guys, so I just got to let you know to be careful about saving over files because you want to make sure that you're not saving over something that you might need, you know, to change later. Um, so, yeah, be careful of that. So, this tooth right here not too satisfied with because it's not uh, lining up 
with that other tooth. There we go. Now to go into top view and just make sure they're all sort of cascading like that. The back teeth are kind of not cascading too much. You can make them a little better. Come on. There we go. And just sort of array them like that. So, whoa. Let's go ahead and go into the mouth and check it out. Nice, very nice. Go into side view. Ortho. Maybe that kind of messed up the front there. So let's go ahead and fix the front here. And actually, we got to move that down because the front is actually different on a dolphin. Their teeth are not actually completely um, what do you call it? They're not completely um, all the way down, you know. Okay, so let's go back to here with this view, that layer. Okay. Okay, so looks like we need to move that tooth some more. So let's go to top view and whoops. Yeah, let's make sure we get that tooth moved in there. Just like that. Okay. Looking good, looking good. I think I think we got it. Now let's double check. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. Oh, come on. I hate this. Sometimes it's so hard to control this zoom with the scroll wheel. Not to mention my mouse is kind of broken here. So, it sucks. Alright. Sorry for making you dizzy, guys, if I'm making you dizzy. <laughs> Woo, it's crazy, man. Just trying to get a bearing on things. All right, all right, all right. So, move this down. And find the other, this one right here. And, oops, move him up. Okay. And actually, want to rotate that guy. Yeah, because at the front, at the uh, front of the dolphin's mouth, the teeth are not. Um, too visible. Okay, so this is good. That's good. I'm just thinking I want to put these closer together, but I don't want to put them too close because I don't want it to look fake. Okay. Oh, that's 
moving the whole thing there. We can't do that. Yeah, whenever you want to move stuff, make sure you grab that Beezer curve. Because if you don't, it's going to move the whole darn thing. And that's got to be good enough. I mean, the only thing I can see to do is to um, maybe I'll select this thing again here. Oops. Make sure you get both layers selected too. But um, I was going to say the only thing I can see that I would want to do is maybe just move this up just a teensy bit. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so they do kind of attempt to, to lock in the teeth there. So it looks almost realistic. Uh, realistic enough, I guess. Okay, so is that looking good enough is the question. I think so. I mean, I've got the curve going on with the teeth. And um, there's plenty enough teeth in there for sure. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Doesn't have to be perfect, I suppose. I suppose. And it's going to look different when you go into per perspective or side view as well. Anyways. Like right here, it looks like the teeth are touching themselves, but they're not. I just don't know if I like the the um, the amount of spacing I've left with those teeth should be closer together. So I'm gonna maybe attempt to put them a little bit closer together. Oops. like that and then uh, come back over and go inside and then take a new look here oops okay so how do we we gotta move this back out now wrong beezer curve this one is the one I want right this beezer curve it's not a beezer curve where'd my beezer curve go if you ever lose your beezer curve just go to your layer 3. You can find it. Now that's moving the whole... Oh no, that's just moving that. Good. Okay, those teeth were not in their sockets. <laughs> it's not good. Teeth are not perfect anyway in nature. So it doesn't really matter. Woo. I want to rotate this on... The, oh, that's a duplicate, I think. There we go. Rotate it on the Z-axis. Then come back. And take a look. Oh, I'm 
in 3D view. I'm like, what? What is going on here? Obviously, you need to have the um, the three D view. You can't be doing this without the three D view um, because I mean you can, but it's just you don't see everything that you need to be able to see. You know when you're doing what you're doing, you don't know what changes your are taking place. You know. You do not know. But 3D view makes it harder too, in the sense where it's harder to control sometimes. Okay, that's looking better. But in the end, you know what you're ending up with, you know, because you're basically doing the whole thing in real time. Okay, so I'm going to like that. I'm, I think I'm going to like that. And then I'm going to end up uh, going back here. And sorry, guys, this is taking forever, but I mean, it is a masterpiece here. Okay, so let's see here. Oopsies, do those go there? Yes. Actually, I might be happy just with that. I mean, I feel like I can fiddle with this forever. See what else? Go like that or that? That's going to give me what I need right there. There we go. And none of the teeth are hitting the you know, the roof of the thing, the mouth, so that's good. I might just lower the whole thing. But actually, you can lower segments of it too. All you gotta do is select this and then select the segment you wanna lower. You gotta get to the middle of that curve though. The axis. You want to call it an axis. That's what what you got to do, and that's why it's nice to have uh, a 3D view because without a 3D view, you cannot see what is going on. So yeah, I definitely recommend anybody use 3D view, and also go underneath, you know, so you can definitely see for a fact that you've got it or you don't got it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so these I've got, these I've got, these I've got. If that's the last tooth, which it is, I think I've got it all. And then you can do the upper portion as well. But I think we've already got that done. Okay, 
so I'm going to call this a success, total success here, because, uh, I mean, the only thing, huh, I like to come up with things all the time here, but, I mean, if I could raise that up a tad, what would that look like? Would that look better? Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking that better. That's that's the best. Okay. Yeah, make sure you can see what you're working on, otherwise it becomes hard to work because you're just guessing and um for things like teeth and like a, a jaw line, you know, where you're putting the actual you know, like a gum line or whatever you want to call it, where you're actually putting the teeth in, it's very complicated, um work you know it's not a simple task so you want to make sure you have that capability to go inside and, and position everything every you know exactly as you want it once you've got this set up you know if you've got it centered and everything you know which we did earlier okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go out of this 3d mode and I'm just gonna go to the side view check out my lovely work Let's go ahead and save it. Okay, I just noticed something is not really smooth here. At the back of the head, we need to move some verts around so we can smooth some stuff up here. There we go, that's better. That's nice. Nothing too crazy. Just need to smooth the thing. Okay. There we go. That looks good. Yeah, just moving verts around when you see something like that helps a whole lot. And I might want to do that with the front of the uh, the melon here. I'm not sure. Looks fine to me though. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Okay, guys. So now we're gonna go ahead and um, simplify the teeth. So we're just gonna go to our teeth layer here, and we are going to apply the modifiers um, let me show you the modifiers we got here subsurf and then apply okay we can't apply this subsurf modifier so let's go ahead and hit the U key and make a single user this um, both object and data so just select that after you hit the U key and then go ahead and hit apply and this one I think we just can hit apply on yeah because that's a copy that's duplicate so it's easier okay so we're just going to go back to this, these lower teeth and we're going to hit the tab key to edit those and we're just going to start um, changing things around but let's make this less confusing let's turn off our mirror modifier uh, for now okay so now we can see what we're working with Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this guy off so we can see just the, the thing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and select these faces. If you get some, you can deselect them later. Not a big deal. Okay, so, yep, we got some more s we need to deselect here. Oops. Oh, man. Okay, there we go. Let's get into 
this mode, this 3D perspective mode, it's easier. Okay, where's my tooth? Need to find my tooth. There he is. Okay, so let's go ahead and just pan around, make sure we don't have anything selected that shouldn't be. Okay, now we're going to hit the delete key and put in dissolve faces. Actually, wait, I'm going to hit dissolve, I'm going to hit uh, edge, uh, let's see, dissolve faces. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and delete every other, uh, dissolve every other, well before we do that, let's do the same thing to the other teeth, so that way it's, we can keep up to date with what we're doing. Don't want to get too confused, do we? I like to just go in this mode and, there we go kind of easier when you can see everything. You select everything first. Okay. Top down view rocks. Rocks your socks. Okay. Whoops. Select that. Whoop. Oh, select that. Okay, so now I'm going to hit delete uh, and dissolve faces and okay, now we can go ahead and start doing what we want to do. Okay, so now the next step is I'm going to delete every other um, edge loop. So this is the next ed edge loop. So there we go, dissolve that edge loop, dissolve that edge loop. Dissolve that edge loop, dissolve that edge loop, dissolve that edge loop, dissolve that edge loop, and I think that's about as much as we can do here. Okay, so now I'm going to tab out of that, tab into this one, and do the same thing. I'm going to dissolve that edge loop, I'm going to dissolve that edge loop, dissolve that edge loop, Oops, dissolve that edge loop, dissolve that, oops, I want to dissolve the edge loop, okay, and come on, dissolve that edge loop, okay, now we have 153 faces, 153, okay, we have yeah, 153 verts, I mean, yeah, okay, so we got the exact same amount on both now, and everything is should still be perfectly aligned and uh, we can verify that make sure the teeth are at the end there which I do see they are hooray okay now we can go ahead and put back our mirror modifier on both of these there we go. So now we can see everything's good. Come back into here and take a look. Take a look, see. Looking good, looking good. And of course it's going to be the same on the other side. So we should be good. Uh, I hate my mouse scroll. My scroll wheel. Yep, yep, everything looks good. And all the teeth are still in their sockets, so that's good. And actually, you're not going to see this up here anyway, so we could even remove the, um, this guy right here. Delete edge loop. So let's go ahead and do that to the other, um, set. Let's delete this guy down here. Delete edge loop. Technically, you don't even see this bottom portion here, so we can even delete this um, uh, face. 
down here too. We could if we wanted to. But I'm going to leave that face on there just in case. I don't know why. Okay, so maybe we can... Actually, we could do an edge collapse. And that would give us one point. So maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah. Because uh, it'll help us connect to our geometry later. I'm thinking. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do edge collapse there. And those teeth look good. above where they need to be and these teeth should be the same if not very close close enough I'm saying because yeah if you go under here and you kind of surf around under here you can see all the teeth. It's like we're on a tooth tour. It's hilarious. Okay, so... These two don't look it could be a little bit lowered a little bit more I'm thinking so I'm just gonna edit this and just move the thing down oops or up there we go that's better anyways Actually, you know what? This is controlled by this one. So yeah, I'm just going to lower it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. sure what mode I'm in here. Oh right, okay so let's go ahead and go back to here and then let's do that. Okay so does that look good? wonder if I should have a little bit more teeth there. Hmm. Let's see if I added another couple teeth in there. I could do that. Add some more. I think that's too many. Okay, so I'm going to do 24 teeth. That's good. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this thing. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and um, work on the teeth some more here. We're going to actually simplify them even more. So let's go ahead and we don't need these. Um, so we'll hide those. That was the uh, Beezer Curves I just hid. Now I'm going to select the bottom row and add a Decimate uh, modifier. 
and we're going to go, we're going to use unsubdivide, we're just going to change that to 2, and we're going to do that again for the top, row of teeth, decimate, unsubdivide 2, and that does it across the whole thing, so that's beautiful. So, let's see here, I'm just going to go ahead and save over my last copy. Okay, now we're going to apply the teeth to the jaw, and um, before we do that, we're going to go to layer 3, and we're going to go ahead and apply our modifiers. So go ahead and apply all those modifiers, and let's click on these teeth, select them together, and then um, I was going to move them along the y-axis, so just gy, and then put in something like 7, or negative 7, and then uh, select layer 1, and as you can see it's way off here, and then select the head and control J, and now when you edit these you can get access to just the teeth and move them back uh, 7, but what I want to do for this is the reason why I did it this way is so I can add a new vertex group and call it teeth and assign them to that group. So now, um, and you know what, maybe I will make this group head and assign that so we can select or deselect the head if we need to. It's a great idea. So I can deselect the head and select the teeth, for example. Okay, so now we're going to move it uh, 7, so it goes right back there. And uh, I believe I hit 7. Yeah, that's 7. Okay, good. Okay, so now we're basically done. And we can deselect the teeth. And get out of this mode. Go inside here and double check everything. Okay, yeah, the teeth need to be recolored. So I'm going to go ahead and do that after I save it again. Okay, now to assign the teeth a color, all we have to do is click the teeth vertex group, hit select, go to the materials um, tab, and then um, click the plus, uh, hit the new button, and it should be assigned. No, it's not. Okay, we got to assign. Okay, now we've got. Uh, Type this. Uh, type in here like uh, teeth, and then this would be tongue, and this would be head. Okay, so now we know what we're working with here. So I'm wondering if you deselect everything, can you still change the color? Oh yeah, you can. Look at that. Alright, so we want this to be completely white, and then we'll just make it a little bit more like gray. And we can add textures later when we need to. So that's perfect. Alright, so I'm just going to save over that. I'll save. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to go here and uh, the jaw, um, when we select that and we actually move it, you can see the teeth don't follow. So we actually have to assign the lower portion of the teeth to the jaw. So let's go ahead and use our circle select tool to do that. There we go. I'm just going to get the, the bottom area because that will be very quick. We can go around that real quick. and then we'll catch up with everything else later. Whoop, don't want that. 
and I think we're missing that. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do some more detailed work. Selection work. And if you see some problems, you should deselect those problem areas. And I'm just going to try to get these in here while I'm here. And don't worry, we can demo the thing before we actually um, assign the teeth or the selection to the jaw. So we make sure we what we selected is correct. So yeah, before you assign anything, make sure it's correct. Whoops. There's always the control Z function if you get a problem. And you know you can just undo it. Whoops. Okay, so we're almost done. Hang in there, people. It's kind of fun here, but it's a little tedious. So who said work fun work wasn't tedious, you know? <laughs> now this is kind of tricky right here because I can see that doesn't need to be selected. Okay. Anyway, like I say, we will demonstrate it before actually assigning it. Okay, so is that going to give me a problem there? No. Alright. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, take that. Okay, we can see there's a problem right there. So what we need to do is zoom in here and use the C, circle select, and just deselect all that. Now, go back and try it again. Hooray! So that gave you a demonstration of how that, how you do that visually. Okay, so now we just hit uh, Assign, and we can deselect it, and we can select it, and you can see now we have complete control over the lower jaw. Okay, and we don't need to make a vertex group for the upper jaw because a dolphin's upper jaw doesn't move. So we are set. So let's go ahead and save a new one. OK, guys, I hate to admit it, but I made a mistake. And that is the mirror modifier. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. Um, so we're going to unselect everything here. We're going to turn off the mirror modifier. And you can see there's this suspicious looking thing right here. So we want to basically get rid of that because that's just making tons and tons of verts that we don't need. So now everything's fine. So let's go ahead and uh, save over that. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and Photoshop this. Um, in order to do that, we're going to first of all uh, save a copy of our work and we're going to label it 45. Dot Photoshop dot blend so whatever your uh, file name is and then dot Photoshop dot blend so you can just save a copy of your work because you do not want to damage your original data so yeah if you if you um, if you mess up you always have something to go back on so I recommend everybody do that before they um, go and try this uh, so basically it's easy to do. We just apply the mirror modifier and uh, turn this subdivisions down to one because that's all as much as I need anyways. It's as much as I'm going to use. So just apply that um, and then go into the UV image editor. First of all, let's go into right orthographic view here. Back up a bit and then let's pull this little, there's a little tab on the b bottom left. You just drag it over and then you change this box to UV image editor and then uh, click the little plus there and then uh, change this to Photoshop 
and then uncheck alpha, click UV grid, click OK, and then uh, hit tab, change your selection to face selection, uh, use circle select, so that's the key C on your keyboard there. Then just go ahead and uh, um, select this, and then uh, we're basically just selecting half the side of the face. You can zoom in if you need to make sure you got everything selected because it doesn't really want to select everything all the time. So just make sure you have all your um, faces selected. You can go in as close as you like. And if you make a mistake, you know, always unselect it with the middle mouse button. And then uh, when that's done, you just um, hit your numpad 3 and then hit U and project from view. Scroll back, resize it as you like and center it wherever you want. And then uh, go ahead and uh, you can pack this as PNG. You can save it because you're in your Photoshop file. And then you can go ahead and go to UVs, export UV layout and just uh, label it head side view and now we can go into Photoshop and start uh, texturing this okay now we're gonna go in Photoshop and I'm gonna load up this texture I made and I took a picture of a regular dolphin uh, the face area and I uh, basically recolored it and um, put it in a program called Texture Maker to make it seamless and I used the uh, shift and blend function and so that way it, it'll tile very easily so now you could also do the same thing in Photoshop I just don't remember exactly how so I decided to use another program to do that so now um, now that we have that we're going to go into uh, control, we're going to press control A and then we're going to go to edit and define pattern should be here there we go, define pattern and then we're going to call this dolphin skin texture okay now we're gonna go, go ahead and open our um, blender PNG head side view there we go okay and now all we gotta do is make a new layer and make sure this is black and get our paintbrush there it is and then double click on this layer here and then go to pattern overlay and click this and select our dolphin skin pattern and then uh, just click OK and then go ahead and start painting and actually I'm gonna get a bigger brush change the size to like a hundred something and I'm gonna make it a sharp brush that way I can get the whole thing and our opacity is good too okay good okay I'm just gonna outline this like that there we go Okay, and we can move this up here so we can see over what we're doing, which is what we want to do. Okay, that's better. So that way we can get every single little nook and cranny here. Okay, and we're just basically just going to paint this thing on here. Like so. There we go. Okay, now, now that we got that, um, 
now we're going to add little streaks and stuff into this. Okay, so before we change anything, actually, I missed a few spots in here, so I'm just going to cover those areas that I missed. And I could, you can tell from this area right here, um, if I turn off the effects, you can see, you know, what got missed. So you can actually fix those areas. So you can go ahead and fix that if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and turn the effects back on. Turn that back on. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it's wanting me to p make a PSD out of it, so that's fine. I'm just going to hit uh, save. Uh, click OK. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a picture of a dolphin here. Um, and you can see they've got lots of streaks in their um, skin. Some are darker, some are lighter, and definitely lighter under the beak and uh, down to where the belly is and the rest of the, um, the stomach and stuff. So that's what I want as uh, something lighter under the, the, on the underside of the beak. So I'm going to start with that. And then we're going to move on to making the rest of it, I think. So let's just start with making the underside um, lighter. So how we're going to do that is we're going to add a new layer. We're going to change this to, uh, let's see here, soft light. And um, we're, we've changed our brush actually to the softer brush right up here. And so we had the hard brush, now we're changing to a softer brush. And uh, so now we're just basically going to paint the bottom of the beak. Here, let me undo all this stuff. There we go. Okay, we're just going to start with where it's going to end up, I think. Um, we're going to end up right here, I'm thinking. And then uh, this, let's see here. This uh, picture I've got here shows that it comes up and just sort of comes down. So I'm going to do that. And just to give them some character, I'll leave that tip of the beak not too light. And we can um, keep playing around with it. Okay, now we can. Uh, let's see here. Where's the? Uh, should be a tool to soften things. There it is. I think that's it. Let's change the size of this thing here. Okay, this will kind of smooth that out so it'll blend in nicely. There we go. And we can go here and smooth it in here. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to save again. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're just going to go to this brush again, change the mode to color, dodge, and um, we got two different types of color dodging. We can do additive or just color dodge. I'm just going to use color dodge. And I'm going to actually lighten this up even more because I like to have it light down there. So we'll do that. Um, let's see, maybe that's too light. There we go. There we go. And we can actually go along there with more finer brush. Actually, 
I'm in a large brush. There we go. There we go. Should be pretty good. Um, and we can use the harder brush to erase uh, if we zoom in here. Let's see here, we can use the harder brush. To go along here and just erase where we don't want it. Okay. Awesome. Then we can blur or fade that area right there where it was kind of messed up. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and then we can also kind of blur this to if we need to. Okay. Now I guess we're going to make some streaks here, but before we do that I'm going to save it again. Alrighty guys, I'm back. So I have just loaded in this thing called um, NKS5, Natural Media Toolkit for Photoshop CS5. It's a free download um, and it's got a lot of cool stuff in here. I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to show you we can darken up these areas. Um, let's go ahead and grab the color. Where's the color grabber? There we go. Let's grab a darker color. There we go. Then we can just darken it up here um, like that. And then we can grab this guy here and we can just start painting. Well, it should be darkening it up. Oh, it turned to gray. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now it's working. Okay, so we want to grab this color and, um, hmm, doesn't seem to save it when you use that tool. So I guess there's a disadvantage to using that. So what you want to do is you want to copy this code. We can add it to your swatches. Let's do that. Um, dolphin skin color. There we go. And well, let's just copy this code here, and then let's go ahead and select that tool, come back here, and then paste that code right in. That'll work. Okay, now we can uh, kind of darken it. I think. Good deal. Okay, and let's go ahead and darken this a bit. There we go. And we'll go ahead and make some darker areas right in here. Um, maybe around the eye area. Make some dark streaks in there. Let's zoom in here. Oh, we got that stupid color again. dark. There we go, that's good. Put a little bit of um, K 
character into the eye there. Put some shading up there. A little bit around the blowhole too. Maybe put it around the back here. That's too... It's not good. Okay, so... Let's see here. Take down our hardness. There was our problem. Oh no, wait, we had it. We had it fine. Oh, okay, there we go. We'll go with a soft brush. See, a soft brush is going to be better. There we go. Okay, and now we can basically paint where we want areas to be darker or lighter, or whatever. And you want this, I guess, to be half, so it can still, you can still make something happen here. There we go, that's good. Alright, and I don't know if we can do anything different here. see here. Maybe that's better like that. Yeah, I like it like that, actually. Okay, and I'm just sort of just making areas here. Okay, darker. Like this area I'm going to make darker. I can make this kind of darker here too. And basically, you're just putting streaks in the um, in the texture this way, as well as darkening it up. Yeah, so, there we go. Now we might want to lighten up a little bit here. So I'm just going to save as do to. Okay, so I'm going to try just experimenting here. I'm going to go to a new layer. Whenever you experiment, definitely make a new layer. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try to darken this up. So I'm just going to use black. You can see that. And I'm going to go to color burn. No. Color dodge. And maybe why does that keep changing that? I have no idea what that does. Some of these are kind of interesting tools here that I wouldn't want. Don't know what that does. Oh, weird. Oh, that's.
that's an interesting tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, black and white. Oh, that's kind of cool too. Okay, but what I want is just like a brush. Kind of like what I had before. Now if I just kept doing this. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that layer, make a new layer. That's why I like to have extra layers. Um, let's see, we're going to use this thing, that brush tool, and I think, I'm not sure if we can change this, but if we can, we might be able to make streaks. Yeah, there we go. I think I'll use that. That'll be a nice tool to use. I'm going to make some streaks here. And we don't want to put it at 50%. Let's put it at like 26%. There we go. Okay, so where do we want our streaks? Well, let's make a streak here. Sort of further define this. Actually, let's go back. very careful when you do this. You don't want to ruin anything. Okay, let's see here. Sometimes it's better if you just do something like that. That's nice. Okay, and then I'm going to put some more characteristics into the eye. Maybe darken that up a bit. Maybe make a streak around the uh, melon there. Maybe not. I don't know. Ooh, definitely we need a streak here. Yeah, definitely. There we go. That's looking good. Give that some nice definition there. Um, what else? Where else would a good streak be? I guess these are kind of like shadows more than streaks. Streaks would be more like um, making a color. So we'll leave that as is. I'm going to save that actually. Okay, so now we're going to add streaks here. So I'm just going to move this. And actually I'm going to get a new layer. And I'm going to... Oh, I already had a new layer actually. Okay, so I made a new layer, and um, I'm going to change the size to like 20 pixels. Or you know what, let's do 25. Okay. Okay, and then let's make like a streak around the front of the beak there. And let's actually change this from multiply to overlay. There we go. Alright. Okay. And I'm just gonna sort of uh, kind of watch it as I do this because I don't want to get too crazy. I might actually want to lighten that up, so let me switch these. I'm not sure if I want to lighten or darken. Well, right here I want to lighten, I'm pretty sure. So we'll lighten this up here. Actually, need to darken that, lighten this. And we can put some lighter streaks in there too. You know, so we got some light streaks going around here. Don't want to get too crazy. Uh, 
Alright, so lighter streaks. Hmm. I'm going to change this to like a blue. Dif get different colors going in here. There we go. That's good. Ooh, that's nice and colorful. I like that. I like that a lot. And we'll just sort of keep coloring along here. As you can see, I'm just sort of adding random, well, not necessarily random, but um, looking at as it as I go and um, just sort of critiquing it to what I think looks best. Okay. Now the back of the head I'm not too concerned about, but I would like to see some stuff coming around towards... Um, it doesn't have to be going one way or the other, I suppose. So I can use streaks going whichever way. Whichever way. So maybe I won't go too crazy with that. Let's see here. Dum -dum 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 -dum. That doesn't look good. It's so hard to tell what looks good sometimes, you know? Just a basic um, design is usually what wins out in the end, you know. So I might just, let's see here, swap these, change this to a white, actually let's change it to a light blue, there you go. And let's uh, let's make a new layer. I'm layer crazy right now, guys. I'm going layer crazy. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. I don't like that. So I'm delete it. Okay. Let's go. Maybe purple. There we go, that's good. I don't want to get purple in there, what am I doing? I want to stick with my color, so let's make sure we got the same color, and then I just want to darken it. So let's go ahead and darken it, or lighten it actually. Yeah, yeah, lighten it. Oh shoot, do that again. Uh oh. Oh man. Okay, so where was I? I was going to select the color and lighten it. There you go. Okay, and then back to this. Okay, before we do that, let's copy this and let's select this and paste. There we go. Alright, good deal. I'm not going to mess with that too much back there. I am, however, going to mess with this eye. There we go. So we get some light in there as well. It's not all dark. There we go. That's nice. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, that would look good. Okay. Where else can we make a streak? Wraps up there. It's nice. Oh, this should come out fantastic. 
Now, if I, I think we're done actually, because if I double click on this, okay, maybe that doesn't work in Photoshop anymore. It's been, I'm sorry guys, it's been so long since I've used Photoshop, it's crazy. Um, do I like that? Do I like that? It's a little bit textured, but that's okay because it's supposed to be. And the bottom needs a little bit more definition. Um, but I don't want to go too crazy on the bottom because I kind of want to keep that one color. But if we did some stuff to the bottom, uh, where is it? If we kind of just grade it out a little bit. Might help. Making it look more real. There. And then, um... Oops. Forward. Yeah, I want that on the, uh, on the rostrum there. Mm, didn't really... do is make a streak there. So I'm gonna like darken this. Yeah, there we go. Make some nice streaks. And change our brush type to sort of a streaky brush. I got all these dolphin brushes. Thought they were gonna help me. Okay, let's go back here. Oh, look at that. You can make little streaks. Oh, great. Okay, so I'm going to do this then. This is great. Definitely giving it more of a realistic feel might not be perfect, but it's better than nothing. And I think I did it wrong there. Okay, I definitely like that. Maybe I don't like any of that. Hum. Change the size. Change the opacity. Um, get some bigger size here. And there you go. got some streaks in your dolphin now. And you can continue this for as l much as you want to. You know, make your skin very streaked out here. Okay, sorry guys, I had somebody come in here, so let's go ahead and zoom back out. 
zoom back out and I believe I would be done here I think I'm just gonna call this done here because I don't know what else to do with it I really want to add streaks but you know you can always add stuff later and you don't have to go too crazy with it because then you gotta go around the whole thing anyways so yeah let's just make a basic texture I'm gonna save this and um, and we're gonna go ahead and put this back into um, Blender okay I'm sorry guys we gotta actually export this as a PNG so what we're gonna do is we're gonna export it um, I'm gonna actually flatten my layers there we go flatten image and then um, right just go to file um, save as uh, PNG and actually before we do that um, we can't save it like that. We actually have to take the thing off of it. So where'd that thing go? Gotta find our grid. Okay, so that's our grid or whatever you want to call that. Um, so what I like to do before we do this here, uh, let's see here. Let's use the selection tool. Where's that selection tool? <laughs> okay, here it is. It's up here. You call it, it's called the magic wand tool. So um, I'm just gonna click, and then I'm gonna go uh, select, uh, and then inverse, and then I'm going to uh, let's see here. Disable this layer, and then let's see. I can flatten the image. Flatten image and then I can basically uh, inverse the selection and then just delete with a uh, well let's see here so I want to make that invisible so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna undo what I just did here Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to inverse, or actually I'm going to go, I'm going to grow, I'm going to make it grow a little bit, and basically what that does is it expands your area, your selection area a little bit. Now I'm going to uh, basically just start deleting on these layers, oops, the inverse. So all you got to do is um, go to select inverse and then hit delete and just go through your layers and delete the inverse of everything. Kind of a hard complex way to do things I guess but I mean if you don't remember exactly everything on Photoshop it's the easiest <laughs> way out you know. Okay so I do remember how to do th little things. Okay, so that's good. That'll give us that. And then you can see it's within the grid lines there. Um, should be. Yeah, it's a little bit over anyways. So that's what I was hoping for, actually. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save this sucker. I'm going to actually make a third because we did all that um, deleting and everything. And I don't, I don't know if I want to... I want to. We want to save things in there, preserve them as much as we can. Okay, so we are going to instead of flatten the layer, we're just going to remove this uh, grid here. We're just going to sort of um, delete this, and then I'm going to save this as a. Here we go. Let's go ahead and. Uh, make a new sort of a background layer just call background and then I'm gonna go ahead and merge all these layers merge layers okay and I got my invisible background and I'm just gonna save as a PNG file and I'll just call it head side view dot, well head side view finished PNG click OK and there we go now we're ready for Blender
Alrighty guys, so now we're back in Blender and I'm gonna go ahead and open up my 45.blend and um, I see some problem on the topology. I'm just gonna quickly retopologize this. Um, so what I'm gonna do here actually is I'm going to do like a vertice rip here and add a loop cut here and that way I can connect those two together and then I'm going to do a rip right here and a rip right here and basically bring everything up okay and I think I still need to bring that up one more so I'm just going to rip this, rip this, connect this here, and then I uh, think I'm just going to dissolve this edge loop. That'll work. Okay, and then where'd my other vert go? There it is. Okay, then I'm going to merge that at last and merge this one somewhere in here hmm okay I think we need a loop cut here so I'm gonna rip this let's see let's go back here and let's rip it. Oops. Huh. Guess we can't rip it there. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna merge these two at last. Okay, and then I'm going to take, uh, make a new loop cut here. And I want to be able to let's see if I fill that. Oops. Okay, right. So that's good. So I want to go ahead and make that connect up through there. Hmm. But not like that. I'm going to delete this edge here and this will help fill that and that's good one two three four fill that there we go then this should be able to perfect Okay, that's what I wanted. That's the better topology that I was looking for. And that's a nice smooth transition to the top of the eye there. Um, and we can actually move it up to be a bit more smoother there. You gotta be careful when you're moving stuff around that you don't mess stuff up. So I might just leave that as is up there. Okay, so I'm gonna save this 46. Okay, I just noticed something else about my topology here, um, or actually the way it looks. Um, when you go into front view, it looks a little bit pointy right there, so I'm going to try to remove that pointiness. Um, let's see here. Maybe box select these. Move these up about, well, actually keep those about where they are at. And then uh, see if we can move these guys. 
should help. That's good. It's looking better. Just move the whole thing up a little bit. There we go. That's nice. And you might we might want to bring these out a little. Or maybe not. those staying kind of where they're at actually so let's see here I think that'll work it's so one other thing we could do is move these out like that Oops. I'm going to grab those and move them like there. That's nice. Yeah, I like that better. As long as the other topology is good, which it looks like it is. Alright. And that does not look good back there. I have to fix that. So this will be moved up. That will be moved up. This will be moved up. Okay, and that should do it. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna save it right there like that. Definitely. Okay. Okay, so I see some more problems here. If we go down to subdivisions 1, which is what we're going to be at anyways, um, we can see what's going on, how it looks actually. It's a little sharp here, and then it goes up here, and there's like a bump here. So we don't want that. We want to take that bump out, number 1. So let's go ahead and uh, remove that bump by just sort of moving the verts around every little bit until we see a th nice smooth arch kind of looking thing maybe move this like that that's nice that's really nice actually wow <laughs> amazing except for I do see a problem right here I don't know if that's just me or it's so subtle though. Oh, that's what that is. It's got to be moved inwards. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, because now it looks smoother. Oh, we got a problem right here. This is too um, concentrated there. There we go. Now that should look better. Better, better. Might want to move them out like so. Alright, and you can
you can tell by the reflections too. If the reflections are smooth or if they're bumpy, then you know you got a problem. And you can also tell by rotating the model, you know, by eyeballing it. Okay. I believe we are pretty good here, except for I might want to, uh, I can't really do much about that. Might be able to do that. Hmm. Don't want it to look like a bump there. It's kind of a hard area to work with. I guess you gotta kind of figure out the tickle spot. And I think that's going to be a good spot. Better than everything else. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much equal area on all those. So, only other thing I could think of is just do like that. I think I'm gonna... Well, I could try that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, no. Come out a little bit further. That smooths it out there. Don't want to come in too much or go out too much. What is the problem here? Oh, it's not curved enough. I think that fixed it. I think that fixed it. Yeah, that did. That must have. Yeah, yeah, because everything's going down anyway. Perfect. Might not be perfect, but it's close enough to being perfect. So I'm going to say I'm done with this here. Except the back here needs a little work. Whoops. Grab this here. Make that smooth, nice and smooth there. Okay. Okay, so we are looking good here. Save it. Alrighty, now that we uh, sort of fixed our uh, shape so it's a little bit more looking better there um, and smoother, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this masking modifier. I don't think we need that. Um, we can always re-add it if we need to anyways. Uh, I'm going to hit the eye on this mirror modifier. That's going to allow us to see inside half of the object. And now we're going to make our seams. So what we're going to do is basically cut the object in half. Uh, because uh, wherever you mark a seam, the object will unfold from. So we want to unfold it in half. So um, I'm going to basically select all the... Uh, edge loops that are that make up half of the uh, the object. So I'm gonna let's see here. Mark these seams. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna hold down Control E and do Mark Seam. All right. Okay, and then we want to get this lip here. So I think. Let's see here. And actually, we should get rid of these teeth, so let's go ahead and uh, hide the teeth. So let's select the teeth, and just hit H for hide. Okay, and then as for the lip thing... Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in here and select this outer area for the lips. As you can see, it runs along the whole lips, the inside of the lips. So we're going to unfold it from the lips as well. So we're going to do uh, control E and mark seam there as well. And then we're going to do the eye next. Okay, so to do that we're going to go select the eye and uh, edge loop and mark seam there. Okay, and then uh, 
I think we're done with the seams there. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, actually I forgot to do the blowhole, so we're going to do that now. Um, I'm just going to mark it right there. Mark seam. And then we're going to uh, mark this up here like this. Because we have to unfold it from there too, some way. And actually mark seam. There we go. Okay, great. And yeah, that should do it. Awesome. Okay, so now if we go, uh, let's go ahead and paint this. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, put the eye back on the mirror modifier, and then I'm going to save this one more time. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and texture this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit A to select everything. And then we're going to grab this tab at the bottom left. You can see my cursor over it. And just drag it to the right. And then we get like a new window area here. And just click this box and change it to the UV image editor. And then we're going to go to image, open image. And select our head side view finished. Open that. And if you see this thing here with like a, whatever that um, geometry is with the, like a line through the middle of it. Just hit control Z. That'll get rid of that. And now uh, we're going to go to right orthographic view, do U, project from view, and then hit S as we drag our mouse over to this window, the new one we made, to scale it up. And we need to be in texture mode over here, so we'll change that real quickly. Okay, there we go. Now you can see when you drag it around, you can see it um, changing over there. So actually we need more lighting here so let's see here let's get a little bit a few more lights in here just, uh, shift D duplicate those lights move them around okay now you can see what's going on here and you can see I've got too much blue on the under beak there and it's perfect on the top and that is looking good too and the eyebrows are basically kind of where I want them, just just about where I want them. Maybe not perfect. I wonder if we could change those eyebrows. That's kind of a tricky thing to do. But yeah, we can definitely move stuff around. Move around verts. Wherever we like. And we can kind of fix things if we need to by doing that. You will kind of warp your texture, so beware of doing that, by the way. I'll probably paint over that to fix it later, because that's too much of an eyebrow out there. Okay, but anyways, getting back to the mouth, what we want to do is we want to... Uh, we want to select these guys here and basically just rotate them down and then move it up like that. Okay, so that's the same thing we're doing there. Basically moving this. Ah. There we go. So you might have to come down further if you need to. And you can just tab out of uh, edit mode and to take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to do that to this one now as well. Next. Whatever. Oops. And um, let's see here. Rotate this. Uh, 
rotate that. Move that down. Okay, now we got this noise. Oops. Well, that was actually pretty good, so... Might mess with that. Instead... Well, that's not what I want. And it's just hit and miss, pretty much. Just keep selecting and moving until you see what you're moving, and then when you know what you're moving, you can move it to the place you want to move it to. Now there's a little bit of light stuff over here on this upper beak, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's just so subtle, you know, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, okay, so now you want to select your outer... Actually, no, you want to individually select these guys. So you don't want anything outside of the bounds of the image, so you just want to move these inside where the image is. Because if there's no image data, there's going to be a problem. Um, so you want to give everything image data. So all the verts or faces or whatever you want to call them need image data. Especially all the faces, because that's, that's your main object there. The verts connect the faces. To the main, uh, to make up the main object, you might as well say. Okay, we're gonna move this. Whoops, we need to select that guy. Okay, we're gonna move this whole thing upwards, and I'm just gonna do. Oh, GZ. Oh, you can't do that. Huh? Thought you could. We used to be able to, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really been working with Blender that long, but. Um. You'd think you could do that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move this down. Okay, and these are fine where they're at because it's not a big deal. This is not. Okay. This is needs to go in. Kind of like follow the form of the out the outline of the image, I guess. Okay. So that is that. And now you want to make sure you pack your image. And now what? Okay, so now we're going to save this. And we don't have any other thing yet. Okay, good. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and right click on this thing here and join area. And then let's move it back here. So just click on the, where the arrow is going to the left so we can move the area back there and I'm gonna fix these teeth real quick because I think we've got too many vertices going on here so um, first of all we got the teeth hidden so let's alt H unhide okie dokie and now I'm gonna select the uh, end verts that I don't need so let's go up top here so we can see through this thing here Okay, and we really don't need these verts, so I'm just going to delete them. Because they're just going to wind up taking more space. And they just go through the jaw anyway. Alrighty. And since this is mirrored, we don't have to do this for the other side because it already repeats whatever we do to one side to the other side alright so we'll just delete those verts and that should take care of that and then we'll go to the underside here try to zoom in there or maybe not Let me try this again There we are. Okay, and just start selecting these bottom teeth verts that we don't really need. Yeah, 
that. It's always good to save verts because then you can save money when you're uploading um, stuff. Okay. So now we're going to sort of take a tour here. And we're going to see what's looking good, what's not. Okay, so these are okay. That looks okay. Actually, that... Hmm. Maybe not. There we go. Now we can actually see it. Okay, so some of these need to be further in. So I'm just going to raise up the whole thing for those that need to be further in. There we go. Just a slight bit. There we go. Okay, those look good. That looks good. It's kind of borderline. Maybe I'll raise it up a little. Raise this up a little. Maybe raise that one up. Come on. Raise this one. Yeah, raise all these up. Oh, especially this one. That definitely needs it. Whoops. So, just that one. Maybe this one a little bit. Okay, so all these should be good. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to do the bottom set. Okay, so we'll do this one a little bit, that one a little bit. That one definitely. Definitely need that one. This one. Why not do this one? This one. And these teeth are just sort of free floating in here, which is okay. Because. Um, we kind of want them separate anyways, so we can uh, fix them later. Because um, we're going to decimate them, which basically removes vert vertices, simplifies the teeth. Because right now it's going to be a lot of prims on these teeth here, so... Don't want to do that. Okay, I think we're good. Um, yeah. Yeah, if we sort of scroll through them all, we can see that we got it. Good deal. And it's the same for one side as it is for the other, so if you got it on one side, you got it on the other. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so now let's move this back up here. And I'm going to save. Okay, so now we're going to put some more lights on this. We're going to take a look at the texture. We need some more lights here. So actually, we got plenty of lights. Okay, well I just added one more light. There we go. And now we're going to go into texture paint and bring up our tools with the T key. And then uh, do the smear, bring the strength up to like 50 something, or 49, whatever. And let's give it a more sleek look. So we're basically just going to stroke it in the areas that we want it to look more sleek in. So we want it to look more like a dolphin, so we need the sort of uh, sleek feel to it. And right there where the shadow is, we got to be careful so we don't mess that up. Okay, 
so we're just basically making this more sleek looking using the smear tool. There we are. And for the front, we can come to the front there and actually there's a problem, so let's turn off our mirror. We can fix the problem, turn it back on, there we go. Yeah, whenever you have a problem like that, just turn off your mirror and it you should be able to fix it. No problem. I want to give it sort of a rounded look, but not too rounded. At the top there. And I'll have to work on the inside there as well, because I don't want that to be too oops, crazy. As far as the back, I think I'm going to come down to the center like I did with the front. There we go. Whoops. Kind of want to keep that that way. Uh-oh. That didn't look good. Whatever that was did not look good. Okay, that's looking pretty awesome, actually. So... Let's see, we're gonna turn down our radius and just maybe, uh... How are we going to do that? Hmm. Oh, that's how. I'm just going to have to sort of play with that until it's smoothed out. go. Good deal there. And now, um, yeah, looks good. It looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I would probably do this some more here. Or maybe not so much. Yeah, that looks good. But yeah, this has got to be more white right here. I can already tell. Okay, that's good. Nice. Oops. It's okay if there's some streaks in it. That's okay. That's what we want to see anyways. That looks nice. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. Mm -hmm. Sort of trying to round it off some more here. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Oh yeah, so now I said I was going to go inside here. Make sure we have all that turned on, which we do good. And, well actually we can't do that, because we got to um, do that next, actually. So, now, what we're going to do is, let's see here, we're going to go to the UV image editor. There we go. And we're going to go to the side view 
and see this asterisk right here next to image? That means basically that you need to save it. So we're going to click image and go to pack as PNG and that will save the image that we just modified there. Great. Okay, so and I don't think we have anything else we've really modified. Yeah, no. Okay, so now we can right click and join area and then just basically save this Okay, so now I'm going to fix something here before we move along. Just this eyebrow is a little bit too far out there. Fix that. Okay. There we go. Oops. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so I'm going to... I think I'm going to add another loop cut right there, actually. So we can control the eyebrow later. And make sure... Looks good. Looks alright to me. I'm just going to kind of move these in so it looks a, bit, a little bit more rounded there. Okay, and then I'm going to resave this. Pack as PNG and then save as 53. There we go. Alright, so once you're happy with your texturing you've done here, you can go ahead and tab back into object mode, click apply to apply the mirror modifier, and that will apply the mirrored texture as well. And actually now we need to make a new texture, so we're going to go to the object data properties, which is this little triangle up here, and we're going to scroll down to UV maps, click on the plus button, title it head, and then uh, in the UV image editor, we're going to make a new image, title it head, 2048 by 2048, uncheck alpha, oops, click uh, blank, change it to UV grid, click OK, um, hit A twice on this window, and then unwrap, and actually let's go over to, let's select our new image here and unwrap it over there, there we go, okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and actually let's right now we've got a bunch of stuff selected so let's make sure we only have the teeth selected so let's unselect everything and then select the teeth okay and then we can move these down so we just select them in here Make sure you get all the verts selected there. And then uh, basically, or you know what? We can move those over there. So I'm going to do it this way actually. Rotate this 90 degrees and move it over here. There we go. That works. Okay. And then you can separate these because they're a little bit close there. So, actually, let's separate them. Okay, so I'm just going to select the ones I want to move over and move them over. There we go.
Actually, I'm moving up here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now um, we can select everything again and deselect. Actually, you know what? We need to move these over in that corner there. So let's select the teeth and grab them and move them to the corner there. Then we can see now we got everything out of the way here. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and select everything except for the teeth and size it all down a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to start moving stuff around here, so let's just move this thing, for starters. It looks like I de deselected some stuff in there, so I'm going to reselect it. There we go. And then I'm going to move it down here and over there. And select this one. There we go. Deselect that, vert. Deselect that, vert. Okay, so now I've only got that selected. Move it out of the way here. And it's important to have all your stuff spaced up far apart enough so it's not going to bleed over to the next object. Like these are way too close right here. So that has to be moved, and that's okay there, so we'll move that with that. Okay, I think that's actually the tongue. And actually, I'm going to move this down just to be safe. There we go. Better safe than sorry, as they always say. Okay. And now these are the eyes, so I'm going to move the eyes up here. Whoops, got something selected down there. Move the eyes up here. And it looks like they're sort of sharing vertices, which isn't good. Okay, move them apart there, that's better. Okay, now just hit A twice to look at what you got now. Okay, it looks like we got to move this thing, so we'll move this, whatever that is, move that over there. Okay, and then this thing move right uh, right around there. That's fine. Okay. And then this thing, I don't know what that is. But I'm pretty sure it's different. Yep, it's different than that thing right next to it. So I'm going to move it apart from that thing. Select this thing. And move this thing down here conveniently. Okay. Grab that. Move that over there kind of move this in the center there. Oh yeah, and this is a separate object too, it looks like. So I think that goes with the tongue. Whoops. Got something selected there. So the back of the tongue, right? So I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Actually, 180. Okay, there we go. Move it over here somewhere by the tongue and the eyes. There we go. Okay, and then I'll just move this down a little bit more. Oh, I can't really move that down. Well, that's okay. Not uh, too bad. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and um, join area back there again. And let's go right into texture paint mode. Uh, let's turn all this occlude cold normal off. Um, scroll up here to clone. Change your strength to 1, radius to 200. Scroll back down here, click clone from UV map, and then make sure you have UV map selected. And now with the ma wave of a magic cursor, brush, stroke, whatever you want to call it, you got your head textured. And it's textured all throughout everything, so it's awesome. And so can actually turn off the eye on this mirror modifier and do it again to make sure you get out all the
problems and then turn on this eye again and then go over it again okay and that should give us all of our problems fixed should fix everything in fact we could bleed maybe a couple bleed to four on this thing there we go that should do it okay perfect so now if you go back into the UV image editor and you go back to your head image you can actually see everything's transferred over just fine and bleeding worked we might want to do a little bit more bleeding here so I'm gonna go all the way up to 8 that way we're sure to get it all so now if we do this again should be able to see it bleed over more yeah there we go see that so now all the verts should have image data on them no doubt okay so now that we've done that I think successfully we should be able to well you know what that's kind of it's not right there let's move these guys apart from each other okay I'm gonna move this over some more and we can ignore that now so we should be able to go back to texture paint and repaint over it and it'll move it over there we go, it moved it over, good. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, so, yeah, just make sure all your objects are separate and everything should go smoothly. And as far as the teeth, um, we'll have to texture those separately later. But for now, there's an asterisk on this image thing, so that means there's unsaved data. So just click on Image, Pack as PNG, and then uh, I'm going to rejoin this area and I'm going to get out of this texture paint, go back to object mode take a look Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and save it alrighty so let's go ahead and texture that tongue now and we're going to add a masking modifier to do this we're going to select the tongue to vertex group that'll show up the tongue and now let's go into our texture paint mode turn off the clone from UV map and go up to the brush and select uh, just regular brush and then turn up our strength to one uh, turn down our radius a bit and let's click under texture click new name it tongue change brush mapping from tiled to stencil and go into our textures panel change type from clouds to image open up our tongue texture and you can use the um, shift key and the right mouse button to go ahead and size it down to wherever you like go ahead and um, start texturing the tongue now I'm texturing the top and the bottom and the back ain't much to the back though I think I got the front I'm gonna texture that again though just in case texture the side the right side Okay, and then I'm going to texture the left side. There we go. Okay, so now it looks like it's all textured. So I'm going to go back into object mode. And I'm going to go into my UV image editor again. Go to the head texture map, UV map thing. And I'm going to go ahead and save, or pack the image again. And then I'm going to join the area back and uh, let's see here we're gonna go ahead and save this okay I saw something I didn't really get here so I'm gonna change the vertex group to tongue and you can see you know some problem areas here so I'm gonna go back to texture paint so we can fix those areas and we're just gonna paint over the areas that are causing the issues
actually we're gonna get that from the bottom. There we go. Perfect. Okay, much nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and save my image and my UV image editor. There we are. Pack as PNG. And you can see it transferred all that color data right over there. But we got some we need to smudge in there, so probably gonna take care of that. Um, so now I'm just gonna save this. Okay, so now that we've textured the tongue, we're gonna texture the uh, inside of the mouth, so we're gonna join this area back to here. And we're gonna go to object mode. Actually, we're gonna move a light under this because it's not lit up enough here. But let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this lamp and move it underneath here so we can illuminate the bottom of this because that's where we need it. That's good enough right there. And then we'll probably need one back here too, so I'm gonna you know, we need that one right there. It's hard to know which light to grab. Okay, that light seemed to help. There we go. You know what? Leave that there. Move that light up there. Right about there. Right about there. That's good. Okay, that's that's good enough. Okay, so let's go back and actually do. These lights are never perfect. Alright, so maybe I'll move that one there. And that one back there. Or, whoops. There we go. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, so we're all lit up here now, good. Okay, so now we're gonna go into texture paint, but before we do that, we're gonna go to our object data, which is this uh, triangle there. We're gonna select the jaw, use uh, wireframe so we can see everything, see through everything, uh, deselect the teeth, we don't need those. And then we're gonna go into the head and we're going to do like a face select mode so we can select what we want to texture like whatever faces we want to texture okay I'm just gonna sort of zoom in and try to select what I need. There we go. Okay, so now um, we don't need this tongue, so get rid of that. Deselect. Oh, you know what? We need to uh, deselect tongue too. That's what we need to do. Okay, so we're going to invert our selection with Control I and then hit H to hide it. Now that's basically what we're going to be texturing. So. Let's go back into, let's go into texture paint mode now. And then click this little thing here, it's called face selection masking for painting. If you click that, then you can see everything. And you don't have to use the masking tool, so that's really awesome. And you gotta hit the A key so you can actually use it. But other than that, it's pretty cool. Um, okay, so let's use a brush. 
Take our strength down to about half, radius to about 43 or 45. Um, let's close this texture. We don't, we're not using a texture. Turn on occlude colon normal because we don't want to paint through the thing. Um, then we're going to select a color off here somewhere. There we go. Okay, then we're just going to start painting the middle of this guy here. There we go. Still need a bit of light, I think, so we can go back into object mode and do texture. I don't know if we reached our maximum lights. Yeah, we didn't. Good. Okay, so. Oh, wait, maybe we did. No, we didn't. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That'll be good. Bring these lights down a bit. Closer in. Right to where we need them. Good. Okay, so now if you go back into your uh, texture paint, you should see more light. Perfect. See, now that's the way you want to texture is with a lot of light. You don't want to be texturing with a little bit of light. You know, you want all your light when you're texturing. So I made that mistake before. I'm not going to make that mistake again. All right. So now we can see. See now we can really see what we're doing. Awesome. Okay. So we're just going to add color. Okay. Now we're going to go into the smear brush and just smear it up like that. Whoops, don't want to go beyond that because that's actually the color data for the next part of it. So yeah, try not to get too close to that edge because you could mess up color data that you're not wanting to touch. Okay, it's, it's okay to get close but just don't get too close. Okay, and then this is for the tongue, so we can fix that there. Do do do. Hmm. Hmm 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 hmm. Hmm 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 hmm. That's not good. Okay, so let's try to zoom out and do this. Okay, that is not good. Let's use a pink brush to try to get that. Hmm. Strange. Oh, well, maybe we can get that in another mode here. But yeah, it should uh what happened there? We should be able to get that the way we're doing it. That is really weird. See that's working. Oh there we go. Of course we get it from an angle. <laughs> Silly thing. Okay, and we'll use uh, the smear DD bopper to get the rest of this. All right, there we go. Yeah, so you just have to work with it until it works, until you get it to work. If it doesn't work one way, try it another. 
Okay, and this is for the underside of the tongue, so we don't need to go too crazy with it. Whoops. I guess you don't want to go too crazy with it, otherwise you'd be crazy. You'd be crazy. Okay, and then we want to smear, smudge, or whatever you want to call it, that. Okay, and I'm going to do this for the whole throat down here. Let's make this pink. There we go. We can come up a little bit. There we go. A little bit more. Give it a little artistic uh, few strokes there, rush strokes. There we go, that looks nice. <laughs> Maybe not so much on that side. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then we'll smooth that in too. There we go. Don't want to go too far because we can't really see the rest of the texture up there. Okay. Now we'll do this side here. We're just basically going to stroke it up. Give it a few streaks. One direction or the other. Make it look authentic. Like a real dolphin's beak. Mm -hmm. There we go. Try to make the color uniform as well. It's not so easy. Not so easily done. So this is fun, this is like Photoshop and Blender, you know? <laughs> it's like... Pretty cool. Okay, so I think we're getting close to being finished here. With this... Stuff. Don't want to blur it too much. I don't want to keep the character characteristic uh, pink there. Too much pink. Too much pink. Okay. Alrighty, and I'm gonna fix that. Whoops. Uh oh. Careful getting to the close to the edge there, because you can mess the edge up. You don't want to do that. So yeah, as long as I didn't mess that edge up, which it looks like I did a little bit, it's okay. 
even if you mess the edge up you can still do that you know just like that there you go hooray and I think that was from the image itself I don't think that was from me painting over something because I turned off all those options so okay so yeah once you're done yeah, once you're done <laughs> um, hopefully I'm done here okay that's not good okay that needs to be white uh oh Okay, there's two ways you can mess stuff up. <laughs> okay. So you don't want to be stroking through like I just did there. That's one way you can mess stuff up. The other way is in the initial making the texture, you uh, do it wrong. Okay, so that looks okay to me. So I am going to go ahead and save this. So we just go back here, look, take a look at it if we want to, and then image package PNG and file save as 57. Okay guys, so I'm going to work on the tongue a little bit now again, and I'm just going to go back to edit mode and unhide everything and unselect everything select tongue and then uh, invert my selection and hide everything again and then go back into texture paint and just um, select everything and start smearing it around so it's more of a nicer texture that way not so rough of a texture. There we go. It's looking better. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so as soon as you are satisfied with everything, you can go ahead and uh, Looks like it's good. Okay, yeah, I'll say that's good. Oh, there's a little part right there I don't really like. Okay, in the back. There we go, that's nice. Okay, so when we're done here, um, let's just go ahead and go out of that mode. So unhide everything with Alt-H. And then you can... Uh, look inside to see your handiwork yeah, select everything here and we can move this out of the way here actually let's just join that area back there, there we go and there we go so we can kinda work with this some more in this way Maybe I'll leave that like that. Do do do. That's good. Don't come up too much with it all. Yeah, maybe that's good. It's all up to you how you wanna make it look. Yeah, that had a better, softer look to it. Mm. 
that's nice. Okay, so... As soon as you're done with that, um, let's fix that, whoops, fix this one. Okay, right, so as soon as you're done with all that, then you can move on here. Sorry guys, we're just working here, trying to make this look better. And you can spend all day on this, you know, we're making it look how you want. But we're not going to spend too long here. That looks good enough, I think. Yeah, that's good. Okay. It could be up a little bit more there. And this could be a little bit more pink here. In certain areas. Okay, so we'll call that good. Alright, so that's good, um, yeah. Okay. Mm Oh cool, that looks great. Okay. So we got some uniqueness going back there too. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and uh, save it. So actually before we do that, we're going to do the other side here. You know what, I think this is okay. Yeah, I think the upper side of the beak is okay. You're not really going to see it that much anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But you can touch that up if you need to anyways. If you want to touch that up, you can always do that. Um, okay, so now we're going to texture some other stuff here. So I'm going to uh, save this. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go here and do the UV image editor. Save my PNG there one more time. And now I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, guys, now I'm going to work on the teeth. So in order to do that, I'm going to join the area here. And I'm going to go into object mode and go inside of this mouth here and then uh, select just the teeth and uh, hit the P key on the keyboard separate selection that'll turn it into its own object 
hide everything else and then we have just the teeth now um, I'd like to get rid of this um, the modifier, the subsurf modifier, we don't need that and I'd actually like to add a mirror modifier so it's easier so I'm gonna delete actually I'm gonna there we go, I'm gonna delete these uh, left side of the teeth I guess and uh, add on a mirror modifier and then actually before I do that I'm gonna add a decimate modifier and that'll um, basically change the teeth into their lowest um, face count. Right now the we got a lot of faces on here so we're gonna take the teeth down to like 12 degrees and a planar and you can see that different functions do different things here unsubdivide, that unsubdivides the teeth but I like uh, 12 on planar however you say that, that's a good one so um, I don't like all boundaries, I'm going to leave that off um, now I'm going to apply that and I am going to add a mirror modifier okay and we've got to add um, what do you call it, seams on here so I'm just going to mark some seams here So I'm just going to cut the teeth in half to do that. Control E mark seam. Mark seam. Mark seam. Oops. Mark seam. Mark seam. Mark seam. Mark seam. Mark seam. Okay, and make sure you get all your verts. I missed one there. So we can go over them again when we're done. So don't worry about that. Um, it might be easier to do the top teeth. That's what I'm going to do. Just do the top teeth. And then switch over and do the bottom teeth going to go a lot faster that way. Because you can see it easier. So that's the way to do it. The best, easiest way. Do it from the top view. Okay, there we go. Looks like we're missing that one there. that one might as well do these two on here okay and whatever way you decide to do it it needs to get done so just basically finish doing it as best you can, mark seam. Okay, we're almost done here. Mark seam. 
Mark seam. A lot of seams to mark on the teeth, that's for sure. Mark seam. Okay, now I'm going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to mark the seams for the top teeth. Or the bottom teeth, whatever you want to call it. Opposite end here, mark seam. Okay, mark this one as well. That's good. Mark seam. Mark seam. Oh, we need to mark that one. I think that one's good too. Uh, we didn't do that one. Okay. <laughs> this is what takes the time. Okay, so, yeah, I think we got it all. Uh, we can double check by doing like a side view or whatever. There we go. Go like to 3D view, do wireframe. Didn't do that one. Mark seam. Okay, that's done. That's not. Mark seam. Dun dun dun. Da dun dun dun. Hmm. Kind of curious if that's. What is that? Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay, and where it's highlighted orange like that, that means there's a seam there, but there's no highlight there, so I'm going to mark that. There we go, now there's a highlight. So that's how you can tell if there's a seam there or not, if it's orange, red. If it's just orange, you know, there's no seam, but if it's orange, red, then there's a seam. So yeah, make sure it's all orange, red line all your lines where you're wanting to go with your seams are kind of outlined in a reddish come on color to them and this one is not done yet okay that's all good That looks good. That looks good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Whoops, that's not good. Mark that one. And I think we're done. And now it'll mirror it over, so you don't need to worry about doing it twice. You don't have to do it again. So just hit apply on your mirror modifier, and you can see it's all mirrored over there nicely. And now, um,. All you have to do is pretty much just texture it. Oh yeah, we got to unwrap it. So select everything, go to your UV image editor, and then go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and uh, hit U and hit unwrap, and then your margin make that 0 0.01, so that'll give you a bigger margin there, and then just hit A and uh, size it all down and then move it in somewhere in the corner there might want to
to scale it in a little bit more. There you go. Okay, and then just uh, join the area back. And then uh, go to right orthographic view. Go into texture paint mode. And do the brush. Make sure everything's white. Make sure you're in texture mode here. Otherwise you won't be able to see what you're doing. And make sure you have everything selected. Turn all this stuff off. And you can go ahead and paint and everything right there. Make sure you have your um, strength up to one. There you go. So now everything will get painted over. You can come out and just paint just like that. Okay. Go back to right orthographic view. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change our color to a little bit grayer because teeth aren't naturally all white. And then we're just going to um, stroke a little bit over them. Just over the very bottom area where those teeth are. And then um, you should be good. So just go ahead and go back to your UV image editor, wherever that. Let's turn these things back on. Let's go to the UV and let's go to that head. And let's see what we got here. Okay, good. Everything looks okay. And you got enough space in between each tooth, which is good. That's what you want. Go to image, pack as PNG, and we're done with the teeth, so we can save it. Alright, so now we're going to assign our materials, so I'm just going to get rid of this window here, join area, there we go. And go back into object mode, unhide everything, and then let's go ahead and open the mouth. So let's just temporarily make a shape key do that. We'll say mouth open. Okay, we'll give it a value of 1 so we can edit it and that, turn that thing on. And then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's select the jaw and rotate. Make sure we got everything selected in there. Yeah, we do good. Okay, and then let's rotate it on that uh, active element right there. So we're going to change our pivot center to active element and hold down the shift key and double click on where we want it to rotate from. Okay, we're going to open it as much as we want to. We'll say that's good enough. And uh, of course the teeth are not going to follow, but that's okay. We're going to worry about, we're going to do the teeth later actually, because um, they're their own object. So actually let me hide the teeth for now. Okay, so we're just concerned about the jaw right now and how it opens and closes. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's not the perfect animation, so it's better to assign a bone group to that object. But for now, we're just concerned about adding materials. So we're going to add materials, and we're going to look to see what moves and what doesn't move. Obviously, um, we're going to want to select whatever moves and add that to our selection. Uh, trying to get in the face select mode. There we go. Okay, and then we even want to select what doesn't move so we can uh, include that as well. So for the jaw, I'm going to come all the way up to the eye here even though I don't need to. It's going to look nice when you cut it right around there, I learned. So I've already tested this and I know what looks good. So I'm going to go for that right where the eyes are. Okay, and then I'm going to just keep selecting these guys. Let's go inside the mouth, otherwise you can't see anything. Keep selecting here. 
and I'm going to select these faces. And as you can see, you know, that's where it stops moving right there. Actually, it moves up there too. So technically, we should be selecting. I'm going to do that. You got to select all this. Anything that moves has to be selected. Of course, you could probably get a... Well, no, you can't really do that. So, yeah, you have to select anything that's selected. Or, you have to select anything that moves, excuse me. So, even this moves down here. So, really, I should be making this whole thing its own object, too. I mean, a part of this object as well. So, I might do that... that's going to be its own object anyways, right? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to circle select these guys. Select the whole thing down there. There we go. And then even uh, these right here too. Okay, good. And unselect those things. We don't need those selected. Okay, so now we're going to make that its own group. So, let's see here. Or, sorry, not group, but uh, material. So, we're going to hit the plus thing and then assign it um, jaw or mouth. Or, no, jaw. Okay, so that's basically the whole jaw. Or we could say lower mouth or whatever. Lower mouth. Okay, and then just hit uh, assign. And we're missing some. So let's go ahead. Oops. Let's go ahead and select the what we're missing and then assign it to the lower mouth vertex group. And I'm thinking we're going to need those two. Let's play that um, thing again here. Okay, so we're going to need these as well. No big surprise there. And I don't know why that's still a sign. Oh, there we go. Okay, so everything that is not moving, um, everything that is moving up to what is not moving is now selected. Except for this little thing here in the corner. As you can see, that kind of moves up and down. So I'm not too sure about what to do with that. We're probably going to isolate that anyways, I'm guessing. So, yeah. We could probably figure that out. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that is the mouth, basically. And now I'm going to make the eyes. So I'm going to circle select the eyes, there we go, do the other eye, create a new material for the eyes, eyes, assign, you can change them to whatever color you want, and then the uh, eyebrows are going to be up here of course, so we'll just start selecting up here, There we go. Deselect that. We don't need that. And we do need this. We do need that. There we go. Okay. 
And that looks a little out of place there, so I'm just going to go ahead and fix that one vert. Oh, as soon as I do that, it look what it does. Okay, so we're going to assign this before we change that. Um, eyebrows. And you can make them purple. Or whatever color you want. Dark blue, I don't care. Assign. Okay. And I can see some texture pro or not texture problems, but uh, some slight problems right there. Oh, we don't have topology mirror on. Next mirror. There we go. Now we got it on. So yeah, double. Make sure you check out what you're doing so you don't mess stuff up. Okay, there we go. That looks better. And I'm going to make this come out a little bit more naturally there. Okay, spread that out more evenly. I don't think there's a better way to do that one. Um, but yeah, that's looking better. From what I can tell, anyways. Looking more rounder there. Good. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Um, oh, did we didn't get the blowhole yet, so we got to do that. So as far as the blowhole, I'm going to basically assign the whole thing this one thing up here. So let's do that. Make a new material, call it blowhole, and just make it a green color, I suppose. And then just select all those faces in there. There we go. Good deal. Okay, and then just assign that to the blowhole. So that'll be a separate object as well. Okay, so I think we're good. Should be good. Uh, and as far as the teeth, that's another object thing. So we got to unhide the teeth. And then um, we can select the lower teeth here. Should be a way to select the lower teeth. Select teeth. Uh, deselect. Select. No, we can't really select the lower teeth then, can we? Oh, darn it. Okay, well let's fix that up, I suppose. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is assign the teeth to the right teeth to the right groups. So to do that we're going to have to select each tooth individually. And it is tedious. Oops. But yeah, then we just assign it to that material and we should have it good. There's a lot of teeth on a dolphin, and that's where your uh, prim count or whatever you want to call it is going to go. You know, all your um, uh, resing stuff. Okay, well we're almost done here. We'll just sort of cheat a little, go to the end. Okay, then we only have these. 
this to do. Okay, deselect that, deselect that, and I think we're good to go. Now if we grab these, we got the lower teeth, good. Okay, so let's assign the teeth to their own little say lower teeth and we'll make them like a blue or purple or whatever okay and then the inverse selection would be upper teeth assign make those a uh, light uh, what do you call it? Aquamarine. Great. Okay, so now we got the teeth separated, which is good. Um, so we can select the lower or the upper teeth. Unhide everything. Okay, and now um, let's go ahead and close that mouth. Where's the shape key? There we go. Whoops. Okay, this is why you don't want to edit on your shape key because you mess up your basis. So I'm going to fix, refix my basis again. Oh God. Um, <laughs> so 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 so. Let's get rid of all the shape keys entirely. You know, you know what I'm saying and just fix that again good thing I still have x mirror on okay we're saying that this is kinda out of whack right here that's kind of out of whack too. Okay, that's better. As long as it looks smooth, you know, it looks good. I might move that up a little. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this thing. And there's the eyeballs. And it's looking good. Okay. So I'm going to save it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and open the mouth again. So uh, to do that, we're going to add a cube. And we're going to make it uh, x-ray, turn on x-ray and change it to wire. And scale it up a bit. And actually, we'll scale it there too. Um, we're going to need to center it, so we're going to need to select our head and then Shift S, uh, cursor to select it, and then select the cube, and then selection to cursor. There we go. And then we're going to scale it on the x axis, like right there, and move it on down there. Scale it on the y axis some more and actually it would help if we went into solid mode that way we can see where we're putting it so that's about where we want to be I'm guessing maybe a little bit closer to that corner of that mouth there and right there right right on the thing as close as you can get to that I guess maybe a little bit closer there that's probably per yeah that's perfect okay so now uh, now what we want to do is basically create a um, couple loop cuts here one two three four and then just make one down the middle there and oops I need that thing turned on or off, whatever. And now we're basically going to encompass this 
the out, outer edges of um, what we're moving. Okay. And let's turn on wireframe so we can see the teeth there. Oh, come on. Grab. Okay, so we can do that. That's good. And... Oops. Gotta get with it here. I'm not hitting the right buttons, people. Here we go again. Okay. And we'll put the jaw um, where it opens up right about there. The hinge, you might as well call it the jaw hinge. Put that right there. And then all you got to do is sort of align these other things so they're right about where they should be. And there we go. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now everything should be set up, ready to go. And all we have to do is... Actually, I wanted to move this... Not that one. This one, a little bit like that. Okay. That's probably better. Okay, so now um, we're going to create some shape keys on this. Uh, we'll call it Jawbox instead of just cube.004 okay and then we'll add some shape keys and we'll call this uh, mouth open we'll give it a, a value of 1 turn that thing on uh, deselect the areas we do not want to be influenced which is those areas change this to active element make sure we're rotating around uh, hold shift down and double click on the element you want to rotate and uh, before we can do that, we have to add a mesh deform modifier and select our jaw box and our jaw vertex group and bind it. Okay, and then um, do the same for the teeth. So, should have the teeth right there. Add a mesh deform modifier. Uh, jaw box vertex group should be. Oh, it's not on there. Well, let's go ahead and make that vertex group. So, what we need to do is we need to select the lower teeth and create a vertex group. Call it lower teeth. Assign that. Okay. And then, um,. Go to the jaw box, select the lower teeth vertex group, click bind. Okay, and then we're going to unhide everything. And we should have our, yeah, we got that too, good. Okay, so now we should be able to go to our mouth open shape key and rotate that, and it'll open up just like that. Perfect. Okay. And it's probably not going to look right because it's not using a bone. Um, so I'm going to use a combination of bones and shape keys to do this, I'm thinking. So we got that done. And uh, now we're going to make the bone. So before we do that, I'm going to give it another save here. Alright, well I have a treat for you guys. You guys are probably really going to enjoy this. I just learned about this right now um, with uh, playing around with different ways I could do this. I found the most optimal way of doing this and it's hooray! <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so we're going to first of all click our mouse on the point where we want to rotate this jaw from, which is right there. 
And then we're just going to tab to object mode, shift A, add armature, single bone, turn on our x-ray. I thought that said death ray. <laughs> I guess it's a D. I <laughs> like death ray, no. Uh, okay, we're going to select this, uh, go into edit mode in this bone, select the top, because that's the, not the root bone, this is the root of the bone, this is the top of that. Actually, let's rename this bone here. Um, let's call it jawbone. Jawbone. Okay, then we're just going to grab that and move it out here. And that was the top we grabbed. This is the bottom. Um, the top is always the one at the peak of the hill. This is like the bottom, so um, over here. So that you don't want to uh, mess with that. That's where it rotates on. And this is where um, the end of the bone is. So that's the end right there. Okay, so then we are going to uh, hit Z, select our teeth and select our... Or actually, you know what, we're going to hide our head. We're going to select our, our teeth, our jaw box, and then our bone, and do control P and with empty groups. Okay, now we have, if you notice in, in your teeth, you've got an empty group called jaw bone, and you're going to assign those to the lower teeth, so you're going to go ahead and edit, go into edit mode, Select your lower teeth and assign those. Oops, assign those to jawbone. So now you can select the jawbone and it selects lower teeth. Okay, and then you're going to select your uh, jaw box, and you are going to go into edit mode, and you are going to assign. Oh, we should have gotten. A, oh yeah, we did get a jawbone. Good. We're going to assign these verts to jawbone. So we select, deselect, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to unhide everything with Alt H, and we are going to go ahead and rotate. Oops, you got to go into pose mode. There we go. And now, if you pose this thing, you should be able to. Whoa, there's the teeth. Teeth are going crazy. But yeah, it works for the uh, the mouth. As far as the teeth, I don't know so much if it works so well for the teeth or not. <coughs> Excuse me. You might need to do 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 do. As far as the teeth are concerned, you have this already on the vertex group. Uh, you have your mesh deform modifier. If you unbind that, yeah, look at that. Yeah, you can't, you just get rid of mesh deform modifier on the teeth anyway, because, uh, oops, They're, the teeth are going to follow anyway. All right, so that is the key, that's the secret right there, how to do that. You can combine a shape, or a, uh, what do you call it, uh, mesh deform with a bone, and that's how you do that. So I can open my mouth really wide or shut it really closed. And it looks normal down there where I need it to look normal, which is perfect. That's exactly how I wanted it to look. Okay, so I'm going to clear all my rotations. You can do that with Alt-R. Okay. And now I think I'm going to save this. It's great. Alrighty, so now we're going to add some uh, stuff here. So we're going to hide this. We don't need that. We're going to hide that. We don't need that. Um, we're going to edit this. Turn off that. And we need some eyelids. We don't have any eyelids. So we're going to add a loop cut here. And we got to do it on the other side because it doesn't really duplicate because uh, we, we don't have a mirror modifier on anymore. So whatever we do to one side, we got to do to the other and as far as the blowhole, um, opening and closing that is going to move a lot of verts, or a lot of, there's, there's going to be a huge line that's going to be moved here. So if we add another um, loop cut right there for the blowhole, and then we look at it, it looks a lot better. So that's what I'm doing. I'm adding another loop cut right there, right, that loop cut right, right there. I don't know if you can see that, but... Uh, uh, that one right there. Anyways, I added another loop cut for the blowhole, and I added a um, 
two loop cuts for the eye lids and then the eyebrows we got already figured out so we're good with that and um, now if we go to our UV image editor interesting thing about that is um, we can actually see where everything's located so if we go to our object data and uh, click on the different UV maps we can see where they're referencing their images from and we don't need UV map anymore so we'll just delete that all we're using is head now so we'll just leave that clean up our UV maps and uh, join the area back there again and I'm gonna get out of edit mode go back to object mode I'm gonna save this again 63 alright guys so we're gonna make a couple heads here for reference and one for the to keep as the original head um, so right now I'm going to fix something here I have a slight problem here it says verts changed from 2255 to 2351 that's because we added verts um, we added some loop cuts in there so yeah just ignore that unbind rebind and you should be fine and there's no errors as you can see and then we're going to alt H in object mode we're going to alt H we're going to select our armature up here and Alt H to unhide that. We're going to change it to object mode. That's important. And then um, that allows us to copy the bone and everything over to another object. So we're going to do Z and box select and just select everything. And then we're going to unselect these lights. We don't need to copy those. Okay, and then we're going to go top view, shift D uh, for duplicate, and then X to duplicate on the x-axis and then shift D X again duplicate again okay so now we should have three independent heads all ready to go so if we go into click this bone here and change the pose mode we should be able to well you know what it has to be bound again so we're gonna go ahead and rebind it to the jaw vertex group and I'm gonna do that for the other guys there jaw okay there we go that's bound okay so I guess when you copy stuff over it doesn't automatically rebind and there you go now you got three independent heads that you can uh, control if I can select this bone here it's gonna kill me there we go and you can, uh, whoops. Oh, I wonder why that's not working. Unbind and rebind. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that should be working. I don't know why it's not. Oh, duh, because we're not in pose mode. Okay, so that works. And we'll turn this to pose mode. And that works, and that works. So yay, you can do different uh, animations now if you want with the different heads. Um, okay, so I'm going to save this now. 64. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and um, make some shape keys here. So let's go ahead and get rid of these uh, extra faces. We don't really need them. So we're just going to box select these guys and hide them. And then we're going to zoom in on this guy here and make some shape keys. So we're going to add this one, call it eyebrows or sorry eyelids do the eyelids first and give it a value of one um, and then zoom in here and basically go into face select mode Oops. and we're going to start by moving this face down to about there Let's actually let's turn on the subsurf modifier a bit so we can see it a little bit better. Move this down. Okay, we'll move.
move this up, move this up. Oops. And we'll move this up. And rotate that a little bit. Move this down. And uh should be able just to move that down. Just like that. There we go. So it's close enough. Okay, so now if you go to, to there, you can see the eyelids working. Okay, now we got this issue under here where it's kind of curved up. So we're going to basically just uh, pull it in by using that inside edge and um, we can basically grab it and pull it from other angles too Oops. we might actually push it in no, we don't want to do that too much. Let's see if we can grab that inside thing. Oops. And just like pull it down. There we go. That's better. Now we don't really want to move too much on this other stuff. Oops. <coughs> Okay, so that looks good. And uh, looks like we still have to move this a little bit. There we go. Rotate that. There we go. Okay, so now that's looking pretty good. Um, Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and do something else here, and this is, uh, I don't know why that's clear the rotation on that thing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, make the eyebrows. So in order to do that, we're going to go into, first of all, let's hide this, don't need that. Let's go into texture mode and let's open the eyelids up and then let's uh, add a new shape key Oops, from the basis. Let's call it uh, eyebrows. Give it a value of 1 and select your vert select tool and just basically move the verts up to where you're liking them. Okay, like right about there. So now when you um, do the eyebrows, you can see them. There you go. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to do the blowhole. So we're going to add a, another shape key from the basis called blowhole. And do a top view. And then for that, we're going to select this vert right here, give this a value of 1, and basically just start moving the whole thing inward. Uh, go to top view there. See what we're doing better. There we go. Move that about to there, I'll say. And then we'll move these in. There we go. Pretty good. And we might want to move this back a bit, not make it too crazy. So it's covering it, it's just not... Um, it's just not too far in. I like that the best. 
And that leaves us right about there. Oops. Yeah, good. Okay, so that is good. I'm thinking, yeah, that's great. Because that's right where that is. And those should be right where, right about where the other ones are. Good. Okay, so now, 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 we should have the blowhole working. Good. And if we go into texture mode, we can see it better. Perfect. Okay, so we got the eyebrows, the eyelids. and the blowhole, everything good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, so now that we've got our reference here uh, with all our shape keys, we can actually apply these. So we're gonna max out the whole thing. There we go. So we got everything at max value now. And then, um, just click on uh, your first shape key and then hit this little arrow and click uh, new shape from mix and then go ahead and do that for all the other shape keys okay once you've done that go ahead and delete all the shape keys starting from the uh, top down from the very first shape key to the very last shape key and now you can see everything looks good um, it's all where we uh, left it at max value one so uh, go ahead and apply your subsurf modifier at uh, number one. So turn your subdivisions down to one and hit apply in your object mode. Now, um, now you've got some sort of a reference to go off of. So if you go in here, you can see how it changed all your verts around. So when you go to um, change your next head, you can uh, you can see visually where it's where you need to place your verts to be able to make it look very very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and save this thing as 66. Alright, so I opened this in another blender. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, and let's go ahead and unhide everything with Alt-H in object mode. There we go. And then I'm going to... Uh, let's see here. Let's get rid of all these lights here. I don't think we need all those lights. So yeah, I'm going to try to get rid of them. Oops. Fixture mode. Huh. Oh, there was one extra one here. There we go. Now as soon as you get rid of all the lights, you can actually see. It's kind of funny. So it lights up the whole thing. Um, okay, so that we're done with. So we can hide that guy. And then uh, this one we want to work on, and this one we're not really interested in working with at the moment. Okay, now this one we're going to clear the rotation with Alt-R. And then we can go in here and apply the subsurf and then we can add some shape keys on this guy here so we've got a basis which is our basic shape and key one which is going to be um, I lids key two which is going to be eyebrows and key three which is going to be blowhole Okay, and so we're going to work on the eyelids first. So we're going to max out that value, go into edit mode on the head, and then we're going to <coughs> excuse me, make it similar to the um, the shape key that we had before. So we're going to try to make it very similar. 
so we basically had something like this. From what I can see on my other screen, you just sort of have to follow your other screen there. And that'll make it easier to do. As long as you follow your screen. Okay, and that's not affecting that, so that's good. <coughs> okay, so now I think we gotta move this either down or up, I can't remember. Hmm. Okay, well we'll move this up. Um, let's go back to texture mode so we can actually see what's going on here. Let's move these guys up. There we go. Now those don't go up as much as the other ones did. And now we can actually play this. Should look okay. Oh. It's not as good as it's not as much as I wanted it to be. Because on my other screen I think it's looking a lot better. Okay, so we're gonna have to move these up now too. No doubt. So we're just gonna move them all up. you know, until we get a nice good um, curve going there and we'll move these up because those have to get moved up as well go back into texture mode just kinda wanted to go back and see what I have to play with still alright so it looks like this is nice Okay. And you want to take your time on this, you know, you don't want to rush through it. So that'll put more quality into your work. You know, if you're just rushing through stuff, it's not going to be very quality. Versus if you're not, you know, you're going to be more, have more quality into your work. Okay, I think that's looking better. Yeah, that looks good enough, I think. Because look at that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's not too bad. Alright, so that's done, we could say. And now we're going to do the next shape key, which is the eyebrows. Oh, whoop. that was the eyebrows, I'm sorry. Let's name them, let's rename them here eyelids eyebrows okay and then we'll rename this eyelids there we go okay so next we're gonna do the eyelids and so now we got the eyebrows now we're gonna do eyelids so I'm gonna save this okay so now we're gonna do the eyelids and to do that I'm gonna go off my reference here on my other computer and let's see here <coughs> excuse me so um looks like my reference is telling me that I've got these guys moved down or actually inward and these are moved all the way down so I'm gonna turn on proportional editing with O and just uh, make the value 1 first of all and then move these down there we go okay oh come on 
If you grab the wrong bird, it's okay. You can always grab another one. Okay. Alrighty, so we're just basically moving this, all these verts down. And I think I'm going to do that with these two. There we go. Alright, and then with these, we're going to move these up. Get a tighter influence on them. We're not going to move these up too far. nice. Oops. And something's telling me I need to turn off proportional editing, so I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to move this with the G key. Actually, I'll move all these with the G key. There we go. Okay, and this one needs to be moved as well. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, so... And I think we have verts behind that, or... Maybe those are the verts. Oh no, you know what? Those are the verts right there. This whole thing got moved down from what I can tell. So we'll move these down with it like that. Oops. Don't select the verts behind it. You don't want to do that. Okay, so we'll turn that off so we don't do that. And, um, yeah. Now we just have to basically... Let's turn back on proportional editing. Basically, all we have to do now is um, make it so that they go close enough to where it looks like they're touching. Okay, I'm kind of curious now what's going on over here. That does not look right. Does not look right. Okay, we probably want to move these up. And move this down. Um, move these up here. There we go. That's got to be good. Better looking at least. Okay, and then um, let's turn this off. And we'll just sort of play with these verts a little bit. There we go. Till they look right. Or about right. And then you can come in here and see now what you've got remaining. Sort of like... Okay, so all these, oops, all these have to be moved down, so they got to be squeezed. So we've got to go into, let's see, let's select the I, where is it? Okay, well, maybe we don't have an eye vert group. Oh, we do have uh, eyes there. Okay, so let's select that. Invert our selection, hide that. There we go. And then, um, yeah, let's get rid of this. Let's hide that. Let's hide everything we don't need. So we don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need that. Let's go back to here. And let's look at the... Uh, 
thing we got going here. Okay, so this needs to be moved down. All these need to be moved down, pretty much. So I'm just going to individually move them down to start moving them. Okay, so it's going to end up looking a lot nicer and a lot more like what we had before. Okay, when you start seeing the, the light come on the shadow like that, that's when you know it's at the same level. So that's a good thing, definitely a good thing. Okay, see that? That's awesome. Okay, now we want to do the same thing to the bottom portion. Let's do that to this as well. Okay, so these bottom ones will do that too. Pretty simple, you just move them up, you know. What could be simpler than that? Okay, now we're getting pretty close here to what we want, actually, which is hooray, that's awesome. It's a very good thing. Okay, so now we're going to move these in there. And what do we got going here? Oh, I think... Wait a second. I gotta move this one out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that whole thing needs to come in more. So I am going to... Or actually, maybe it needs to come out. I don't know. I think it needs to go in, though. Because if we Alt-H and we look at the... Whoa. I just wanted the eyes just wanted to see the eyes actually. So if we unhide the eyes, uh, we can see they're right there. So we definitely need to get closer to those eyes. So let's do that. Let's turn proportional editing mode on. And let's just basically grab and pull them. And let's influ turn our influence up. Hope we don't get anything underneath. Oh, we might. Silly things. Alright, well, we'll turn our influence down a bit then. Rotate, grab, rotate. Okay. Ooh, and that makes me want to grab that vert there and tell it to behave. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not looking good. Okay. Don't want to do that. Actually, just want to grab this turnout proportional editing, turn that off. Rotate. There we go. Now we're talking. And all we got to do is move it in. Move it in. Rotate it. Uh, move it in. Rotate it. Ooh. Rotate it, of course. And move it in. Rotate. Move in. With G. G is very nice. You can grab stuff with G. Okay, so... That's a bit too much. So I'm going to move it up. I mean, you can see it's too much. There, that's good. I don't know if that's too much or not. That might need to have some rotating done to it. I don't know. I think that's good, actually, now. Um, if we go look underneath, there's nothing, no holes. There's a little hole right there. I mean, but that's a simple rotation right there. And that's done, you know. <laughs> done. Oh, shoot. 
Well, you can't please everyone, can you? There. That took care of that. <laughs> okay. So now, um, yeah. If you open and close your eyelids, it looks pretty nice. I'm guessing. Good deal. Okay, now if we go into texture mode, let's take a look. Okay, that's beautiful. I really like that. Okay, so now we're going to do the blowhole, and then we're going to be done here. So let's uh, do the blowhole, put that to one, and uh, before I do this, I'm going to save my work. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the blowhole, and I'm going to go back into edit mode, whoops, go back into edit mode and unhide everything, and then I'm going to hide everything except the head, and then uh, deselect everything with A, and then select the blowhole, and invert my selection with control I, and then hide it with H. And then I'm going to, there we go, get out of wireframe so I can actually see. Okay, so now I'm going to select this vert right here, where are you, right there. Or actually I could select the outer verts right there. And I'm going to use G, Y, and actually I'm going to turn on proportional editing, so I'm going to hit O, G, Y, G, Y. GY, 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 it's funny. Okay, I'll go for that. That's okay. It's good enough. <laughs> okay, so now let's go inside here and let's see what we didn't select. Kind of hard to tell, actually. You know what? I think I found it. There it is right there. Okay, so I'm going to GY, GY, there we go. Oops, don't know what that was. GY, typo, <laughs> take off proportional editing, don't need that. GY, 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 let's go to orthographic. And actually, that needs to be moved in. GY. 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 There we go. Okay, now um, let's go inside this thing here. And let's select the middle vert right there. And go back to the top view. And GY. And we're going to move it all the way to the end. Okay, and then we're going to go back inside. Come on, go back inside. And we're going to select the next thing here. And we're going to do uh, orthographic GY. There we go. Okay, and we're going to keep doing this for all the verts that need to be moved out further. Come on. There we go. Okay. GY. So I'm basically replicating what I have on my other screen. 
um, in the higher resolution model. Or, sorry, in the lower... Well, they're both high resolution models, actually. Okay. Now this needs to be moved, obviously, so we can select that. It's a dead giveaway right there. GY. Okay. Now, I think it looks good except for this little thing right here in the corner. What is causing that? Okay, I think we just need to move that up. And that should fix itself. Yeah, that looks good. Or maybe it doesn't. Uh, we don't want it looking bad like that. There. That looks even better. That looks pretty good, in my opinion. I'm just going to continue to play with it. Don't mind me. Okay, and that looks the best. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 um, I'm going to get a opposite view on this thing so I can kind of see what's going on here with it. Um, okay, so it looks like those are, those have gone out a little bit further, so... I am going to move it out further. That would be where... That's good. Okay, that's the right one right there. Okay, so this needs to be moved out, like about there. That needs to go out there. That needs to go out there, and that's about right. Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to move that there. Okay, so now we should have it looking really good. So if we go to our shape key and open and close the blowhole, it looks really good. Okay, now if we go to texture mode, then we can see it looks great there too. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is give all my things a value of 1, shape keys, and I'm going to save it. 69. So now we're going to unhide everything with Alt H and we're going to hide what we don't need. And let's see here, let's get rid of all that. Okay. Now it uh, looks like we're missing a bone here. So I think when we were in pose mode we actually hid that bone. So uh, when you work with bones, make sure you don't hide them while you're in pose mode. That's very important. So now we got to go through and find the bone. Luckily I know where it is. It's right here. And as soon as you click on it, it should come up if you've got everything unhidden. Um, see you have it in edit mode right now. So we just uh, go to pose mode and you can see it's hidden. So you just go to, you just uh, do Alt H and it unhides it. Now when you go back to object mode, it shows up again. So woohoo, <laughs> we fixed that problem. So I'm just going to box select everything and move it to another layer so it's individual from everything else. So now we can basically, we're free to do, you know, we can unhide everything here, you know, on any layer. We basically unhide all the layers and then this is a separate layer so we don't have to worry about, you know, any confusion there. So let me go ahead and save this again. And now we're going to attach the teeth, so let's go ahead and hide everything except the teeth. Oopsies. Try that again. Okay, alright, now we get to zoom in here. And we're going to go into solid mode so we can see what's going on here. And I can already see there's a mistake we got right there. So let's see if we can fix that. Looks like everything's selected. All the bottom teeth are still selected. So we should be able to fix that by just assigning it to the uh, correct, uh, let's see, your lower teeth. There we go. And then we can invert our selection with uh, control.
control I and then assign all that to upper teeth and um, it should take care of the problem all right now that we got the teeth figured out um, we can unhide everything get out of this nope, actually go into this mode here and then come into the mouth here select our teeth uh, select you know hold down the shift key and right click the uh, the head and then control P or sorry not control P control J and then now if you tab into edit mode uh, you'll see there's a lot of stuff that's still hidden so just uh, alt H to unhide all that and then uh, hit the A key to deselect everything and then we're going to select the lower teeth and we're going to assign it to the lower mouth actually before I do that I'm gonna save it just so I have a file in case something happens alright now I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to the lower mouth and then I'm going to hit the A key to deselect everything and go to upper teeth here select those and then uh, select the head or click on the head uh, what do you call it uh, material and click assign and then that'll assign the upper teeth to the head and the lower teeth to the um, the lower mouth so that way um, you can have everything correct okay so that way there's no problems with separate um, materials they're all they'll, they'll all be exported as the same object uh, with those objects okay so now we're gonna animate this thing so I'm just gonna save it Alright guys, so now let's go ahead and apply our textures to our materials. So the way we do that is very simple. All we have to do is first of all go to um, our UV image editor. So the way we do that, if I haven't already told you, it's down here to the left with this uh, tab looking thing right by the view menu. So just move your cursor down here and uh, when your cursor changes into like a cross eye looking thing just uh, click and drag it to the right uh, and then you want to change your viewport so that's this little icon right here so click that and then change it to the UV image editor so select that and then down here you'll select your texture you want to work with so let's go ahead and click that icon let's select the head texture alright there it is okay so now we're just gonna go to image save as image and just go ahead and save it and then do that for all the textures that you are going to be using. Okay, so in this case I'm only using the eye and the head texture. Okay, so now to get out of that, uh, there's like this middle area between the two windows. You want to make sure your cursor is like those double arrows before you right click. Okay, go ahead and right click and then click join area. And then uh, you want the arrow pointing this way. So that means it'll try it'll bring the left arrow or window to the or the right window to the left of the screen. Sorry. But if you do it the other way, it'll bring the left window to the right of the screen, which you don't want. So make sure you have the arrow pointing to the left. Okay, so go ahead and click, uh left click. Alright, so now we've saved our images for our textures on our hard drive. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and throw away any um, materials we're not using so I'm not using the lower teeth I'm gonna get rid of those upper teeth not using that okay so these are the materials I'm now using so we've cleaned that up and now what we want to do is we want to go change our viewport mode to rendered so to do that we click on this little circle down here and go ahead and go to rendered okay now you'll see there's no lighting here so that's why the face is black so to add lights we don't really need to add lights we can just do a little trick I like to do uh, just click on this little world thing up here 
and then select environment lighting and that'll make everything visible so you don't have to add any lights or anything okay now what we want to do is we want to assign each one of these materials that's a different color uh, the same texture basically so that way when we export it we get the same um, texture on all the different parts so to do that it's very simple just click on your materials first of all go to your head material or whatever material you'd like to work on and then uh, go to your textures um, icon up here click that okay and then we've got this text material already named here so you can change the name of that to head or whatever you want or you can just delete it it's probably better to do that but I'll just I won't delete it for now I'll just change it okay we're gonna change type to image or movie and then we're gonna scroll down here under image we're gonna click this um, little icon looks like a picture hold the mouse button down and select the one you want so I, in this case I want the head texture and there it is that's looking kinda of funky because uh, it's not got a UV map assigned to it yet so it's okay don't worry about that the main point is we've got the file name right here which is required for the exporter so that's what we that's why we want to save the textures uh, as an image you know as a file so it can actually reference that and then use it later so let's go ahead and scroll down till we see uh, mapping and then under mapping we're gonna change coordinates from generated to UV okay now you're gonna see it change to like a gray and that's alright that's because there's no map that's been assigned yet so let's go ahead and click on this little ball thing and change it to the correct UV map okay once we've done that you can see it changes to the correct um, image and now let's go ahead and do that for the rest of them so we'll go back to our materials and let's go to eyebrows for instance okay now it's a little bit easier now because all you have to do you don't have to keep making new materials just click on this little icon right here select the material that you've are or the texture that you've already made and all you have to do now is go down and select your UV map voila <laughs> very simple right so let's go ahead and do that for the rest of them and that's only if you have you're working on the same object if you change objects and go work on another object you're gonna have all sorts of different um, materials and textures and things so so it only works one one object at a time this way alright so once we've done that uh, once we're finished with that let's go ahead and do that to the eyes as well so we're gonna hide the head and I'm just gonna right click on the eyes and let's see we have no materials so I'm gonna looks like we do have materials well I'm just gonna make a new material anyways call it eyes and then I'm gonna go to my texture uh, tab here and then I'm going to see let's make a new texture let's call it eyes okay let's change it to the eye texture and let's make sure we have the UV map on that too good okay so now we know everything's correct okay so now let's go ahead and unhide everything with alt oh, sorry uh, yeah alt H okay now let's go ahead and uh, save it alrighty guys now we're ready to animate hooray <laughs> so in order to animate um, I'm gonna have to first of all introduce you to the timeline and the timeline is right down here you'll see like all these numbers and what those numbers represent are basically frame numbers and right now we've got 250 frames in our timeline and we only want to have eight frames because uh, Second Life is limited to eight um, faces per object. So uh, in order to prevent glitching and all that stuff, 
or at least reduce it significantly, we want only 8 frames. So we're going to change 250 to 8. Okay, now you see that uh, brought that down this little gray area. Now if you do use your scroll mouse you can uh, zoom in and zoom out. There's all sorts of things you can do if you just play around with Blender. It's really fun. So first frame, see right now we're on frame number one and right here it shows you we're on frame number one as well. Um, okay so what we want to do is first of all go out of uh, this rendered mode because that's kind of taxing on what we're looking at. So we'll go into solid mode and then let's go to a side view here. Okay, let's move that so we're centered so we can see what we're doing. And then let's go into our modifiers panel and okay so now we've got a problem. Uh, if we click on our head we see that the verts have changed from 2351 to 4713. That's alright. All you have to do is click unbind and click bind again. And the reason that came up was because we added something to the head, which was the teeth. <laughs> so don't worry if you have changed your shape or whatever, uh, you can always unbind and rebind. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is we want to insert some frames, right? So before we can do that, we have to make sure this, this little box here is locked because if we move to separate frame, it's going to move that box, which we don't want. So in order to prevent that from moving up and down like that, all we have to do is go to this object tab, uh, icon up here, click that, and then where it says transform locks, just click the arrow to bring that down, and then just uh, click these little locks next to X, Y, and Z. Okay, now that will lock its location. Um, sorry, under location, uh, click the little locks. Make sure they're uh, clicked. Okay, so now if you, we go to these other frames, it doesn't move. Hooray! <laughs> That's just what we wanted. Okay, so now we won't have any movement issues with that box. We want th this is like a bounding box. You don't want it to to move, uh, you know, because it's going to um, define where you're, what you're, you know, animating in that area. In this case, it's this bone. So we only want the influence around this area for this bone. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to insert a keyframe. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, let's see. I, I just like to hit this little record button here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll click on the bone and we'll change from object mode to pose mode. And let's go to frame 8. And then let's go to whatever, uh, however much you want the mouth to open. I think that would be sufficient. And now let's go ahead and go back to frame one. And now you can just basically do clear transform all and you're good to go. Now if you go through from frame one to frame eight, you've got that animation and you can take off your record button now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to frame one and we're going to uh, select the head and we're going to go to our modifiers panel. Um, sorry, not our modifiers panel, our um, data object data panel to get to our shape keys and we're going to insert keyframes. So I'm not going to worry about the eyebrows because I don't see those anyway. People don't see those anyway. So I'm just going to do the eyelids and the blowhole. So I'm going to put those at zero right now at frame number one. Make sure I'm fr at frame one first. Scroll back over here. I can see that it's frame one, right? Okay, so I'm going to insert these shape keys as keyframes. So to do that, you just hold your cursor over these zeros and you just hit your I key. And when it turns yellow like that, it inserts it as a keyframe on your timeline. So there's a keyframe right there now for that uh, shape key. And then just do that for the other shape keys you want to um, insert keyframes for. And now let's go to the last frame here. And then we'll change these values to their maximum values. And then we'll do the same hit I over each one of those to insert those as sh uh, keyframes as well. Now I'm going to rotate the view and you'll see if we go 
uh, back and forth with the animation, it uh, goes from zero value on the keyframes to one on those you know keyframes that we've inserted into the timeline. Okay, so now that's great, and we've got we should have our texture here too. Yes, we do, and the tongue looks good. Great, everything looks wonderful. Okay, so now we're ready to export. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let's go back to solid mode. And then I'm going to save it. Alrighty, so now before we export it, we just want to give it another quick look. And I see there's a problem going down the middle of the head. And as I'm zooming out, I can see it's more pronounced. Yeah, we don't want that line there, so let's go ahead and take care of that now. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go into texture mode and go into uh, make sure we have this object selected, edit this, go into edit mode, and then turn this thing off so we can see what we're doing here. Go to the face select, uh, and then hold down the alt key, select this loop, uh, face loop, select this face loop with uh, shift alt, and then I'm going to select these and I'm going to go inside the head Oops. trying to select these there we go there we go that's what I wanted to do okay so now that I got all the uh, center face loop selected or middle face loop selected, um, I'm going to want to get into my UV image editor. So let's go ahead and go over here to the left and drag this screen over and go right to our UV image editor. And now instantly we can see, here let's get rid of this, we don't need this. Now we can automatically see where, we're, uh, where our edges are. So obviously they're right around here and right, whoops, they're all over here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix those and then we're going to go ahead and um, and we'll be back. So let's go ahead and fix those right now. So I'm going to go to uh, paint and I'm going to go to my clone tool or wait a minute, my smear tool and I'm going to change the radius down to like 30 30 and then turn the strength all the way up to 1 and let's go ahead and start in here and we'll start smudging these just like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video and uh, basically just do this for the whole for all your edges. And you can swap between back and forth between view and um, paint to make sure you're on the right track. You know, right there. All right, so here we go.
Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and save it. So I'm going to go back to, uh, let's see here, over here where it says image, and you see this asterisk next to that. Um, that means that there have been changes made and you haven't saved them yet. So I'm just going to hit uh, save. Where's the save as? Save as. Oh, actually, that means that. Um, I think that means that you haven't packed it yet. So I can go ahead and do pack as PNG. And then uh, save as image. And I'll just save it in the same file that I saved it before. So that way I'll update that file. Okay, so now we can, uh, yeah, save image. There we go. Image, save image. Okay, great. So it says up here that we've saved the image. Great. Okay, yeah, make sure you save the images, however that, however you do that. <laughs> so, okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and recombine this area. So I'm going to right-click on that edge, join area, do that again. Now if I go into rendered mode, I won't see that seam thinking, looking thing. Alright, so perfect. And now if I open the mouth, I don't see anything there. Whereas before you might have seen something on the tongue. But yeah, there's nothing, no seam. No problems. Okay, so let's go back to object mode, solid mode, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, Save it. All right, so now let's go ahead and check to see if there's any errors in the animation. And it looks like the animation's fine. Uh, the only thing I do see is that there are two separate colors here. Uh, and the only time you want to have separate colors is when you have parts that are uh, animated you want that are separate. And I don't want to have these parts being separate if they're not uh, being animated. So I'm going to make them all one part. So uh, to do that, I'm just going to go into edit mode and uh, deselect everything. Go into my materials editor uh, and then select the eyebrows material uh, and then assign it to the head material or assign the head material to that selection rather. And then I'll just go out of that uh, edit mode with the tab key and now that'll be one part instead of having two parts because I'm not uh, going to do the eyebrows anymore I figure uh, nobody really sees them on Second Life anyway so it's just kind of a waste of uh, extra frames there extra objects okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and export this but before I do I'm going to give it another save here Okay, so we should be able to export this now. And uh, to do that, let's go ahead and go into wireframe mode with the Z key. And it looks like we need to select the eyes as well. So we're, we'll go ahead and select those eyes first and then hold down our shift key and right click on the head. So now you can see you have two objects selected ready to export. Okay, so let's go ahead and export them. So we're gonna go to file, export, wavefront OBJ. Okay, and I'm going to create a new directory, call it export. And then I'm going to scroll down, I'll show you my presets I use. Second Life Animation. And I just have these selected here. Selection only, animation, apply modifiers, include edges, include UVs, write materials, objects as OBJ groups, material groups, and keep vertex order. I don't usually mess around with any of this stuff because we can always change that later. Um, and I don't know what really this some of this stuff does, so I'd kind of leave it alone. Okay, so I just click uh, Export OBJ. And then go ahead and go to File, New. Okay, so once you've got your new file here, just go ahead and delete that cube. And uh, go ahead and import your first wavefront object. And then go to the next layer. Import your second wavefront object. and the next layer and keep on doing this for all the wavefront objects. You should have eight.
right, so once that's all done, uh, let's go ahead and go to the side view. And I'm going to go ahead and save this and call it export. Okay, so we're getting close to being done here. Um, now all we have to do is find out which objects do not move and move them to separate frames. So it looks to me like it's the head, uh, the lighter blue object, and the eyes, uh, those eyeballs in there. So let's go to wireframe and uh, let's move those eyes to another layer and the head to another layer doesn't matter what layer, just as long as they're outside of these top layers here. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the regular uh, viewport shading. And then uh, let's go to these other layers. And you can see they're still on those other layers. So we need to remove them off these layers now. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, there we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is combine uh, the purple beak object, the lower beak, as one object. Because right now they're all separate objects on different layers. So uh, it'll end up having multi one, it'll end up being one object in Second Life with multiple faces. So it'll be very efficient for animating. So to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the first object on the first layer and then go to the second layer, hold down the shift key, right click on it again and then keep doing that for each layer each time holding down the shift key before you right click Okay, and you should have all the objects selected, great Okay, so go ahead and make sure all layers are visible, all of those layers. And then uh, just do a Control J, and that'll join everything as one. And then uh, you can do that for the next other objects. And uh, let's actually move this to another layer down here, the second layer at the bottom. So that way we know it's done, it's out of our way. Let's go to the next object. Okay, so the next object we're going to do is this one. So the same idea really, just go to the first, second, third, fourth. Make sure you have them all selected in sequence. Okay, and I do want to stress if you don't go, if you don't start from the first layer and work your way down, it'll get messed up. You, you need to start from the first layer. I tried it from the last layer and go backwards, but it never ends up looking right. So Second Life is very picky, I guess, for that, as far as Blender goes. Okay, so start always starting from the first layer and going down to join your objects together. Okay, so let's go ahead and join this object. Okay, so that's joined. And I'm going to move that to that layer. Great. Okay, so now I'm going to do this object. Right click on the first object in of this one, this part in this layer. Go to the next layer, hold down shift right click, hold down shift right click, hold down shift right click, and just keep doing that in um, sequence. Okay. Now we're going to select all the layers, control J to join that. Okay. And then we're going to move this to uh, this layer. And now I think all we have here are the lights and the cameras, which we don't need. So we can get rid of those. And uh, we can pretty much move everything to one layer now. There we go. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save over this. Alright, now we're ready to export this to Second Life. 
So how we're going to do that is very simple. You just right click on uh, the one of the objects and then uh, hold down your shift key and right click on another object and another object and another object. And then you'll have them all uh, selected. Okay, great. So now we've got all the objects, should have all the objects selected. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see, we've got five objects. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we got them all selected. Okay, so let's go ahead and export them now. So just go to File, Export, and then go to Collada Default, DAE. And I'm just going to leave it as export.dae. And the presets I use is uh, SL Open Sim Rigged. And basically, you don't need to change anything here. Um, you want to uncheck copy, though, actually. So you do want to change, you do want to uncheck that. So you don't have to, it doesn't make multiple copies of your textures that way. And uh, everything else looks good. Great. Triangulate, that's fine. Okay. Apply modifier, selection only. Really, we don't need to include armatures because we don't have any armatures. Don't have any shape keys, children, no, nothing. All right, so we should be ready to export. Um, I'll just make a new operator preset, call it Second Life Animation. Okay, and export. Okay, so now we're going to add lights and double check our textures. So let's go ahead and add the lights. So we're just going to click on this world icon and then make sure we have environment lighting checked. And that way when we go into the rendered viewport shading we can actually see our textures. There they are. Okay, yeah, because if we didn't have this environment lighting on, it would turn like black and you wouldn't see any textures. So make sure you have that checked before you change your viewport to rendered shading. Okay, and if you see these little black um, little lines and glitches in here, don't worry about that. That's not going to show up in your upload. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about that. That's just things overlapping other things, and I think Blender doesn't know what to do with it, so it just puts the black stuff there. Probably. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but that's probably what's going on. Okay, now let's go over to this uh, scene icon, click on that. Uh, change this units from none to metric. And then the scale, I just leave it 1, uh, 1.000. I like this scale for most of my objects, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And uh, let's go ahead and change this back to solid. And uh, make sure we get everything selected here, so use the box select. All right, now that now we got everything selected, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, export it. So just go to File, Export, and use Colada. Okay, and then I'm going to scroll down and show you what my settings are. I have Apply Modifiers. Actually, I'm going to select my presets here. Okay, and we don't need these armature options. I'm going to uncheck that because we don't have any bones. So what I've got selected is Apply Modifiers, Selection Only, only active UV layer and include UV textures and then this I just have uh, triangulate sort by object name uh, transformation type I'll use a trans rot lock uh, that I guess that does something I forget exactly I think it looks better if you do that um, okay and then just click export Colada okay so now we're in second life and I'm gonna upload that uh, file to show you what it looks like, but uh, I just wanted to show you my original dolphin avatar. This was uh, way back when, when I started making uh, avatar type stuff in Second Life. Way, way old stuff. So it's not exactly perfect, but it, it definitely is original. I think I was like one of the original dolphins on Second Life, <laughs> honestly. Um, so yeah, I got the, a new tail for him, uh, but now he's going to get a whole new makeover. So let's go ahead and upload that file now. So we just go to Upload Mesh Model. Okay, now we're going to select our export.dae file, open that up, 
Okay, and then we're going to wait for it to load. Okay, there we go. And let's go to Upload Options, Include Textures. And you can display the textures over here and take a look at them. Looks good. All right, and then we're going to go to Level of Detail. And we're going to make sure High is Load from File. Medium, use Level of Detail above. Low, use Level of Detail above. And Lowest, uh, Generate and use arrow threshold. I'm going to use point zero 0.09 and click generate normals and if you want to see it you can see it here lowest so if uh, usually lowest is if you're zoomed way far away so you're not really going to see it um, if you're on lowest but it looks fine it looks pretty much okay if we bring it up if we keep bringing it up it's uh, Actually, you want to go the other way. So we might want to do 0 0.05. So yeah, I'm going to do 0 0.05 actually. See how much that costs. Okay, it looks like it's going to cost 1,031 lindens. I'm all right with that. I'm going to click upload. Okay, and it uploaded it successfully, and now we can go ahead and further mess with this, so... Okay guys, I kind of had to move to another location because that uh, sandbox had rules about high um, prim count uh, objects if you're going to res. So I'm just going to res it here. Okay, there we go. And then I've got this nice little click script that I made. And I'll just open that up to show you guys what that looks like. If you're interested, you can pause the video, you can read it, uh, copy it down, whatever. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now that we've res this head, um, we're going to right click on it and move it around a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to go into uh, the edit dialog and check edit linked. And then we're going to click on one of the parts, this part, for instance. And we're going to drag that click script to the inventory uh, of the uh, linked object. So that would be that one. Okay, and then we're going to click on the eye lid and uh, move that click script into that eyelid part. And what this script is going to allow us to do is uh, click through the different um, faces of the, the mesh object that we've made so we can verify that everything's working alright. Okay, so we're going to do that with this one and those are the only moving parts that I have so that's all I'm going to uh, use the script in. Okay, so now all we have to do is just click give it a couple clicks and you can see it animates and it says showing face zero right up there there we go so the eyelids work, the mouth works, and let's look at the blowhole. Great, that works too. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take the take the head, and then uh, now I'm going to go ahead and make the tail in uh, Blender and upload that and then I'll be back when all that's done. And we're back in Blender and the reason why I wanted to bring us back into Blender is because I wanted to show you guys uh, how you can animate your own body parts if you want to do something like that and uh, tell you a little bit about the history of how I got this body shape into Blender and everything. Okay so the body shape itself was made by Christina Velinov and I'll have more of her information at the end of this video if you'd like to um, look into getting a body shape that she made. And um, yeah, she was able to color it for me and everything, so it was really appreciative for her doing that for me. And then after that, I was able to put it into Blender using a program called Avastar. And if you want to search uh, that up, you can on the internet. Uh, it's called Avastar, A-V-A-S-T-A-R. So you just download that. It's a plugin you use for Blender. It goes into your uh, plugins, 
under user preferences and then uh, yeah that plugin allows you to import your second life shape into blender so from there you can actually detach you know you can edit the actual shape and detach like the hands the feet and put your own hands and feet on it and whatnot so that's uh, how I was able to do that and I got my own custom feet and hands on there and then I made a tail and a dorsal fin and yeah so we're gonna animate this thing right now and it's gonna be fun okay let's go ahead and animate this tail now so the first thing we want to do is make sure we're in pose mode and then we're gonna go to a side view here so there we go and then uh, let's go ahead and select the bones we'd like to animate so just go ahead and use your box select tool to do that there we go and then we're gonna go to object data over here and I'm gonna scroll on down and we'll see this thing called pose library and what the pose library does is basically it's just a library in Blender where you can store poses. You can load them, save them, whatever. <laughs> it's an awesome uh, addition to Blender. I love them for doing that. So uh, I've got poses in here I've already saved, obviously. You can have multiple libraries, by the way. It's really, really a lot of cool stuff there you can learn. Uh, I still don't know half the stuff it does, <laughs> honestly. Um, but uh, let's see now first of all we're gonna load in the first pose I want to load so I'm gonna load tail lowered so you just click a pose to load it and then click this little magnifier glass thing to load it and there you go it loads the pose okay so now I'm gonna insert that as a keyframe on frame number one with my I key whole character okay I'm gonna go to frame number two and I'm gonna go to pose clear transform all insert that as a keyframe. Okay, so now I got two keyframes, two frames. I'm gonna go to frame three, load in tail half raised, insert that. Frame four, tail fully raised, insert that. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four. Frame five, uh, let's see, tail wag. I wanna do a tail wag animation, so I'm gonna load tail wag up insert that as a keyframe one two three four five six seven uh, insert this one so load tail wag down insert as a keyframe so now we got seven frames for the tail wag up down animation one two three four five six seven right and then frame eight I want to do a tail wag left to right animation so I'm gonna go to my front view and I'm gonna create that animation since I don't or pose since I don't have it yet. Alright, so 37.22 pose here, just click the plus uh, button to do that. Double click it to rename it. Alright, there we go. And now we can rotate this to 37.22 and then I'm going to add that as a new pose call it tail wag middle 37.22 and then 37.22 tail wag right 37.22 it's good you uh, write down your degrees if you're rotating and you want to be consistent with your rotations. That way it uh, you know, looks even on both sides there. Okay, so I'm going to start with tail wag left. Load that pose in. Go back to select all my bones here. Insert this as a whole character. Uh, go to frame number one, two, three, four load in my tail wag middle pose, insert that as a keyframe one two three load the tail wag right pose, insert that as a keyframe so now I should have one two three four five six seven good alright so I've got uh, seven frames on each animation 
and there's eight faces to a cube in Second Life, so that's why I chose seven, because uh, it's a good number. Seven's nice because you have a middle frame. You have three on each side, and then you have one in the middle. Uh, with the eight frames, it's kind of uneven, so <laughs> you can't really make a middle frame like I did with eight frames like that. So that's why I chose uh, seven frames. Okay, so I'm going to end this at uh, 18 frames here. And I'm pretty much done with my tail animations. So I'm going to go ahead and save it and move on to the next thing. Okay, so now that we're finished with the tail animation, let's go ahead and work on the hand animation. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all uh, deselect everything in uh, pose mode. And we're going to select just the hands, and then I'm going to start with the default hand pose, load that in. Alright, insert that as a keyframe there. Go to uh, frame number two, load the second hand pose, insert that as a keyframe, and keep just doing the same thing with each hand pose. So that should be two, one, good. All right, zero. All right, middle finger. <laughs> Don't know if I'll ever have to use that uh, just for fun, really. Okay, thumbs up. There's another fun one. All right. I should have done thumbs down. Oh well. <laughs> Grab medium. Grab small. Relaxed. Typing. Okay, so that completes our poses now for our tail and our hands. And then if you had any other body parts like a dorsal fin you want to animate or whatever, you can just do the same thing on overlay those other, uh, what do you call it, frames, you know, insert, insert your uh, keyframes over your other keyframes like that. And uh, it shouldn't interfere as long as you don't have the same bones selected. Nothing should go horribly wrong. Okay, so now I'm ready to finish this. So I'm going to go back to frame number one. Let's just go ahead and save it. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and export these parts. So I'm going to select the parts that I want to export. And let's see here. Don't really want this this bone system here, so I'm gonna hide that. Don't need that. Okay, so all we need are the parts. So we're gonna select the hands, the dorsal fin, tail, and the feet, and the body. We don't need because we have that in the second life. Okay. So now, I'm just going to go to File, Export, Wavefront, and then I'm going to make a new directory, Export, okay, and I'm going to go down here, make sure I have my presets to the presets that I usually have good luck with here, so selection only, animation, apply modifiers, include edges, include UVs, write materials, objects as OBJ groups, material groups, keep vertex order, and I usually don't touch this stuff. Okay, just hit uh, export uh, OBJ. Okay, as soon as it's uh, all exported then, you can go ahead and make a new Blender file, and then delete your cube here. 
and then just go ahead and import your wavefront and make sure you go to your directory you want and then just start importing them okay so first we're going to import the uh, zero zero you know the first one here first obj okay there we go and you can switch to a right orthographic view if you like and go to uh, texture to make sure you have your textures or material probably better but it's so dark it's hard to see without any light here so let's see if we can pull up some lighting Let's get rid of that light. Go to a solid texture. There we go. Alright, now you can see the textures are on it. Got some environment lighting. Without that, oh, we don't need that actually. We're good. Alright, so let's go ahead and do the number two. So, second frame, import, wave front. There we go third layer, import, third frame, Alright, and once we've got to our last frame here, um, we can go ahead and verify we got what we want. Go ahead and go through your layers. Let's go to a side view for those. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Export one. Alright, so now we want to get rid of what we don't need here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're needing and not needing here. So it uh, looks like we've got uh, the feet and the dorsal fin that are not really changing so we just want to have one of those objects so I'm going to delete those objects on all those layers okay delete the feet on all those layers delete the dorsal fin on all those layers except layer one so now we just have one instance of the dorsal fin and the feet 
and with these feet we do need to uh, connect the uh, toenails to the toe so I'm just going to use uh, control J to do that let's make sure we don't have anything left over nope great alright and now start with the hands so join the fingernails to the hands and I think we have some leftover stuff here I don't know where that come from so I'm just going to delete that okay go to the next frame join the fingernails to the hands again delete the stuff we don't need alright next frame or layer actually alright join the fingernails to the hand delete whatever that is delete that don't need that alright next layer I think I got the right. Yep. All right. Okay, and I'm just going to keep doing this for the rest of the hands here. And if you need to, you can rotate this so you can see it better. Okay, I think that's pretty much the same hand pose there, so I'm just going to delete those. Alright, we'll do that for the other hand as well.
and then it's just a matter of repeating that process for the other hand. Okay, so now everything should be good here. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and join these objects together. So I'm going to join the first couple of tails together. So I'm going to select the first tail on layer 1, and then I'm going to select the uh, second tail on layer 2 while I hold the shift key down, and the third tail on layer 3 while I hold the shift key down, and the fourth layer on layer 4 while I hold the shift key down. Then I'm going to hold the shift key down and uh, select all my layers so I can see them. And then I'm going to control J to join the objects together and then that is going to be our first uh, tail animation you might as well say so I'm going to move that to layer 1 that object and then I'm going to do the same for the rest of the tail animations here so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then as you can see it goes to another pose so that's the end of that animation so I'm going to make sure I can see all those. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Okay, I'm going to control J to join them. Okay. Then I'm going to move that to the first layer. And I'm going to do the next uh, tail animation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And just do Control J to join those. Okay, and then move that to layer one as well. Okay, let's get rid of this camera. We don't need it. And now I think we just have the hands left to do. So for the hands, I'm just going to leave them as is. All right. All right. So I think we're ready to export everything. So let's go ahead and do a box select to box, or actually before we do that, let's make sure we have all our layers activated, selected. Now we can see everything. So let's go ahead and use the box select tool, select everything. Go to File, Export, Collada. Okay, and then just go down here, make sure you're on the right preset. Uh, don't choose the copy option because it'll charge you more lindens, you'll have more textures than you need. Uh, that's what happened for me sometimes anyways. And then just hit uh, Export Collada. Alright, so we're back in Second Life. And I'm going to go ahead and upload that DAE file now. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, and there it is. Make sure we can display the textures. Looks good. Okay, make sure you include the textures with your uploads. And then I'm going to use level of detail above for these two and generate a error threshold at 0 0.09 okay, click generate normals no physics options and we should be good Alright, so it looks like I'm going to go ahead and upload that. Okay, so once that's been uploaded, we're just going to res it out here. So just go ahead and select it and drag it over to the world. That reses it out. Okay, and then just right click on it, go to edit, and then just click on link. That'll separate all the parts into different objects. Uh, different parts, and then I'm going to link my hands together since they're different parts. I want to make them just one part. All right, and when that's done, I'm going to link my tails together. All right, and now I'm going to start renaming things. So I'm going to start with the tail, name it tail, and I'll move on to the dorsal fin, name it dorsal fin. There we go. Name this, and uh, this would be the right hand, so I'm going to name it R space hand. And then this is the, get rid of this thing, this is the left hand, so I'm going to name it L hand. And then this is the left foot, so I'm going to name it L foot. And this would be the right foot, so I'm going to name it R foot. Okay, here we got the dorsal fin. Great. Okay, so we're ready for the next step. So uh, we just basically take these items. All right, and they'll end up in your inventory now. And then uh, I'm going to show you what to do next. All right, so we just moved to another sandbox here. Uh, couldn't rest so much out on the other one, so. We're going to first of all res a res the head here. Okay. And then we're going to resize this head. Okay, so we're just going to size it down to however small we need it. Okay, and then we're just going to take it. And we're going to rename that to head. 
Okay, and now we're going to res a post stand. And you can res uh, whatever kind of post stand you like. I like uh, the TMT Professional post stand. It's a pretty neat one. Lots of different poses on it. Alright, so we're just going to sit on that post stand. And it's going to put our avatar into a position to where we can basically align things. And it's really nice the way it does that. Uh, okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to close that edit dialog. And uh, we're going to... Actually, first of all, let's take off everything. Detach all. Okay, it may take a moment for it to actually do that. There we go. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is apply the skin that lady gave me. And the body shape. Alright, and then I'm going to wear this uh, no hands and no feet uh, and no head. It's a uh, alpha mask. You can make your own. Pretty easy to make. But uh, she actually made this for me, so it worked out really well. And uh, let's see here. Okay, so now, now I'm going to attach the head. And I'm going to attach that to the skull. Okay, why am I not seeing the skull here? Oh, actually, let's see here. Let's do this down here. There it is, it's up there. Alright, okay, now it's going to look way out of proportion. So let's go ahead and rotate this however much we want to rotate it. 85, 88 is good, I guess. Okay, then we're just going to move it. And we are going to stretch it, size it down. Alright. Okay, just move it around here. Alright, that's a good, I think that's a pretty good size. I don't know, maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger. Make it a little bit larger. Too large. That's good. Okay, so then when we're done with that, we are going to go to the next body part here, which is left hand, and I'm going to attach that. First of all, I'm going to change my pose. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to attach that to the left forearm. Okay, and there it comes up. All right, we're going to rotate that. and move it and then just sort of align it till we get it looking right okay that looks decent enough you can uh, refine it if you like but uh, generally speaking that looks good Alright, we're going to do the same with the right hand. 
attach that to the R forearm. Okay. There we go. And the rotation on that one was, let's see here, 100 on the X axis. So we're going to do 100 on that X axis right there. And then it's just a matter of uh, aligning it up like we did with the other one. And you can get really detailed with that lining up process. You can resize your hands if you need to as well. It's all up to you what you want to do with that. So I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to work on that. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is the feet, so we're going to change our pose here. That's a good pose. Okay, do our left foot, attach that to left lower leg. And the right foot will attach that to the right lower leg. Okay, and then these we're going to rotate about about the same, 100 degrees. Let's go down one. There we go. There we go. Okay, and then we're just going to move them down, just like we did with the hands, until it pretty much looks accurate. I'm trying to make it look as close as possible. Now we might need some more rotation, obviously, so we're going to do that. That looks decent enough. Let's go to the other leg. That was uh, 90 degrees. So we'll uh, take that down to about 90 degrees as well. And then uh, reposition it here. Let's go ahead and switch the view here, or the pose. Let's go to another pose here. That's a good pose. Alright, so we want these feet to pretty much line up, so... That's a good height, I believe. That'll do it. All right, so we want to copy the uh, the blue. Let's see here, the Z axis to the other foot, so they'll line up. There we go. And then you can copy also the red X axis. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I think you can. Yep, yeah, you can. Okay, and then getting it right from there is just pretty much positioning it. on the last axis. Okay, great. Oh, there's a little bit of stuff there. There we go. Oh. Can't be perfect, I guess. Huh. Well, probably needs to go a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm going to raise the other one up. So, let's see, that was the blue, that's the z-axis. Okay, there we go. Alright, that's as close. Oh. Okay, let's see if we can copy our axis over here, the y-axis, no, that's not going to help. Alright, okay. Sometimes if you just keep playing around with it, you'll get it. See, look at there. I got it. Hooray! <laughs> okay. So, let's copy the x-axis, or sorry, the z-axis to this one. Okay, should be alright on this one. Great! Alright, so that does the feet. And then uh, we get the hands. Actually, the hands need to be pretty much... Uh, scripted there, but I'm going to script them later. Okay, so... Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to basically make all the hands invisible. Transparent. Except for that one hand right there. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to do the same for this one. There we go. Great. Okay, so we got the hands attached, we got the feet attached now, and uh, yeah, now all we have to do is script it. Oh, you know what? I actually forgot some stuff here, so I um, actually had to fix one of the hands there. Uh, I was getting, I had the wrong hand. Uh, so I forgot my tail and my dorsal fin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the tail. And I'm going to attach that to the stomach. Alright, and it's going to be all kind of rotated sideways here. So you just want to uh, select the tail and then rotate it. Oops. Make sure you don't have edit link checked. <laughs> That would help. Okay. I'm going to rotate the whole thing. Eh, about 90 degrees. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to move the tail. 
where it's supposed to go. Like, maybe right about there? I don't know. I don't know, guys. What do you think? <laughs> Is that looking right? I'd say that's about right. Okay. Yeah, that looks about right. Great. Okay, so the tail's good. Now we're going to do the dorsal fin. And actually for the tail, I'm just going to hide everything for now. Except for one of the tails here. Okay. Well, I guess I can only do... Oh, actually, I could select a face to show. Okay, we'll we'll show that tail. That's good enough for now. All right, so yeah, so now we got a dolphin-looking thing here with the tail and everything. We can better see the tail how it's connected, so we can kind of judge is that a good place to connect it. And yeah, I think so. All right, so now I'm going to add the dorsal fin. So we're going to attach that to the spine, I think. Alright, that's kind of all whacked out a portion here with the rotations. So we're going to rotate it. Let's see here. 190, 180, 90 degrees, 180. Okay. Okay, so we need to go this way. Sometimes it's easier just using those little uh, rotation things than anything else. There we go. That's perfect. Looks perfect. Looks good enough. Alright, so now let's go ahead and put it on there. Let's put it higher. Okay, I think that looks pretty decent. Yep, looks good enough. Alright, make sure we get it in there. And now now we just script it. Okay, so now that everything's scripted, um, I'm going to show you here. I detached the eyes and I made them their own object. And you can add them to the same location. Just choose Add, and that'll add them to the skull. As you can see now, I've got eyes. And if you want to really make them like the original Second Life eyes, you can actually rig your eyes. Um, but I'm not going to do that in this video, but I, I can show on another video how to do that if you guys are interested. Just let me know. And, uh, yeah, I've got a HUD here that I uh, had a friend make for me. And he did some of the scripting. I did a lot of the art. And, uh, yeah, he got my head uh, scripted for me. And if you like some of his stuff, I'm going to have more information about his stuff at the end of this video. So, let's see here. What he did for me is he made this nice HUD, and I did the art, and he got the buttons for me. He did, uh, he got me some of the art for it. And then, um, yeah, he got me my basic head script, and then from that, 
I made a tail script and uh, I haven't made my hand script yet but I'm going to do a different thing for that. Oh and on the hands um, I wanted to show you guys if you wanted to do change your nails color you just uh, choose select face and then select that uh, should be able to select the face of the nails and then just change the color to whatever you want say white or if you want them to match your toenails, see what color they are. Okay, it looks like they're, uh, let's copy the hex code for that. It's more like a gray, light gray. But you could make them blue, whatever color you want. I'm actually going to have a, a nail HUD so where I can change my nail colors and uh, like a hand HUD, I guess, I don't know addition to my current HUD. Okay. Come on. It's kind of hard to get this thing to move sometimes. Okay. There we go. Change those colors. Alright, now... Okay, now... Yeah, I wanted to show you guys exactly what I've done here. So, yeah, if I stand up, I'll show you what I got. So, I can do tail modes, lowered oh there my post stand goes away <laughs> alright so my tail modes work yeah, I'm gonna close this out so that is lowered normal raised raised high and then if I do a tail wag left to right it does that and then up and down There we go. Uh, there we go. Alright, so you can see it. It's working there. And I got it sort of like ra at a random interval, it'll wag. Okay, and then these dials here will control like uh, the jaw, the mouth, you know, open or close, the. Uh, I think that's the blowhole. Right, so I can close the blowhole. Or I can open it. And then the eyelids have sort of a control. You can close them, make them kind of sleepy. <laughs> or all fully awake. And then, uh, yeah, you can shut off the blink, the jaw talk, the breathing. And breathing and jaw talk, uh, basically, breathing is an automatic uh, animation it plays there. Just plays those different faces, cycles through the faces. You know, show hide, with like show hide uh, scripting. And then uh, jaw talk is like if you're typing, you can see it uh, opens the mouth and closes the mouth the same way, you know, with uh, showing those faces and hiding the faces. Alright, so that's pretty much all I had for this video. Um, other than that, I might add on to it uh, to show you guys uh, my friends and uh, uh, just pretty much say thank you. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed.